And we're live. Wow, this is, when was the last time we went live with just me and you on an EFAP thing? Uh, has that ever been the case? I don't know. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I feel like there was a time where I streamed loads of Bloodborne and we, we did, but it wasn't EFAP, I guess. So I don't know. Yeah, it's been a while. Who knows what's going to happen? This is crazy. People are be like, where the fuck's Rags? What happened to Rags? Like, he's having fun. He's doing fun human things. Yeah, he's off on an adventure in the real world, not like yeah. us cave goblins. Stay here wondering what life is truly like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it like a few minutes so that people can jump in, and I guess I'll slowly explain what we're doing here. As we were working on Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and Unbridled Misery, me and Fringy would exchange some quirks about the things we were making, or how certain things couldn't work the way we wanted them to and ended up a different way, or how, you know, uh, the, the script ballooned and the video ballooned and stuff, and we were just like, all this stuff is probably stuff people wouldn't mind listening to, but we'll never ever be able to know about. Like, maybe, maybe there's a way to subvert that. Maybe there's a way to make a thing where they, we can talk about it while checking it out. And so I figure, yeah, this is, a, this is a small, quick, super different special idea. We'll see how it goes. If you guys like it, we could do it for each of the huge projects. If, uh, if you mostly find it to be something you figured anyway and don't find it that interesting, then we can just, you know, not do it again. You know, it's pretty straightforward. The plan. Yeah. Used to essentially play the video and then pause and talk about why it was made the way it was made. It's, uh... Yeah, so it's like a commentary or making of just general discussion about the process behind Pretty the video. Pretty much. Especially because a lot of people are like, why aren't you working? And then when it comes out, they're like, good, he worked for a week. Now he's gone back to not working. How good you? Uh... EFAP in your own videos? Technically, yes. A six-hour mini at least, then? I don't know how long this will be. We'll see. In fact... A six-hour mini for a six-hour video? With no talking, I guess? Pretty sure when there's it... a 20-hour mini out there, so we're not breaking any rules, okay? Yeah, like, at this point, EFAP mini is a misnomer. Yeah, it's just... That's the name we went with. Because the first mini, I think, was three minutes or something. Yeah, because that, uh, that was for the Aladdin trailer, right? Yeah, so... so it was really mini, but quite a mini, but... They're not so mini anymore. <laughs> no. It's a bull but, well, strategy. No, I was about to say, like, I guess uh, there's still mini relative to EFAP episodes, and then I realized, nah, not really. <laughs> like, they're not. This will be longer than plenty of EFAP episodes. Yes. Also, uh, first message just came as a molar I've been watching Buffy, and I finally saw the body, and man, the feels, didn't expect Anya to have that reaction, got me good. Rags isn't here, so we can actually mention Buffy. How's that? Uh, Great. Right, we can. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. Her reaction is the most uh, affected I get in that whole episode. Maybe drawing with Buffy's in the initial bit, because that's uh, just phenomenal. That acting. was pretty excellent performance. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's that episode is... It feels like we sort of run the gambit with every run the get fuck me run the gamut with every uh every reaction that we get from the characters. It's like we get distinct reactions to this event from every single person in the story. Yeah, which uh obviously feels very deliberate because everything about that episode feels deliberate. Um, so anyway, I guess we should get started, right? I get, I suppose yeah, sure. it's uh, a few minutes in. I'm sure there's some people here already. This will get re-uploaded on the old uh, Moolah channel anyway, so... Hello, future people. Future VOD watchers. Uh, this is the third installment in... Alright, calm down, video. Jeez. Time without my approval. Here it is. Oh, wait, I haven't sorted out chat yet. I, get, I bet you're all terrified of the fact that you're oh, on the screen. Right. Probably like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I'm sorry. Got so many things to set up. Okay. In fact, there's a chat cover on there, because it usually says disabled. I really oh, wish it wouldn't, just because it's not plugged in properly, it just says that, so... If we record offline, it just looks ugly as fuck, you know? Right, right. <laughs> but that's all good. Uh, there it is. And yeah, look at y'all. And so is that. Alright. Beautiful. 
All right. Well, I mean, it starts with this clip of Michael Douglas, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure I saw incredibly early in the process, like before I'd even started writing the script. And I saved this clip because I thought it was funny as fuck. I think this one was just going around. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, I was like, how could how could I not open the video with this? Um, yeah, which uh, this opening minute or so is you did this. Yes. Um, in the Because I was about to say, this kind of goes the same for most of my videos. I always want a clip to open that sort of just would this would be considered a cold open i guess i don't know <laughs> like it's it's just mm -hmm. a clip that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what i'm about to do but that uh sets a tone in quite a way and what what a hilarious comment to make in the same it's like funny if there was a marvels video to ever be made the clip i feel that has to be at the beginning is that one where she's asked if she's coming back as captain marvel and then she says does anyone want me to like that would yeah, have to be the beginning they're just these these quotes that just sort of open up with a a tone set of ooh man people don't people aren't really enjoying like doing this anymore are they yeah making these films it's become a joke to the point where like him saying as long as I could die it's like fucking hell yeah and uh, yeah just just a great way to which begin. um I mean something that was talked about in the video but it, Hank probably should have died in this film this would have been the one to do it yeah. Um, there's a lot of, it's, it, this film doesn't want to commit to anything, because, I mean, it, it's, we'll get to it at some point, but it was really, 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 really obvious that Scott was either going to die or get trapped in the quantum realm for some time. But they, they didn't want to, because <laughs> I guess they figured that it would be better to tell a story that is mostly without consequence. Well, even, like, Crash his little spaceship, and they have Janet being like, oh, no, Hank, and it's like, he's fine, he's yeah. just on the floor. No, nah, he's he's chill. He's all he's all good. I wonder if that was even Michael Douglas. Probably not, right? Probably a stunt double on the floor. Uh, <laughs> might have been. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they these these films are just like <clears throat> patched together. You sometimes wonder if they were even all on set, like at the same time for a lot of these scenes. Yeah. In the franchise, if they did a fourth, would you come back? As long as I could die. <laughs> all right. It's rewind time. Yeah, so <laughs> the idea with this was just going to be, I was like, what do I begin this video with? So I just jump right in. And I was like, I feel like since I skipped out on a lot of MCU projects in the course of Phase 4, um, that it, it feels like it's worth just doing a summary to remind everybody of what the fuck happened, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. what was that? And then, of course, there's just a sprinkling of Phase 5 stuff in there, like uh, Secret Invasion. But it's more so a big collection of just, Jesus. This is, and... You know, the bigger chunk goes to WandaVision, not just because it's the first one, but uh, because it, it's like the like the one time where it felt like we could be okay. The first few episodes is like, it could yeah. be alright. Yeah, yeah, but then... And it's just fun to play with the, the visuals, the editing. This really happened. Yeah, no, it's... Why would you think that? The and then, effect. and of course, uh, what I stole from it was, uh, is this really happening? And it's like, yeah, that's that's how I feel about yeah. it. the whole of the MCU as a as a thing. It's just crazy. Like, is this, is this really what happened? It's like, yeah, that's the timeline we ended up with. Visionary new age of television, and more to come with Faye. And that's of course me feigning a uh, I don't know some kind of American announcer, <laughs> announcer guy. Yeah. Or and talking about like to help you know settle in like the wonders to come of phase four there's been so much embarrassing multiverse shit i love that one as well the uh because i haven't even watched hawkeye but i've seen the scene where kingpin gets whatever the hell we're supposed to believe happened to him i guess killed but like that visual is a gunshot. It's just like a you know a landscape or whatever of, of or a cityscape, whatever the fuck you call it, a bunch of buildings. It's just funny that if you've seen it, you know. Except about which we Frank. <laughs> and now that one's the hardest to make out, but it's probably the most important. It's ta Taylor saying, uh, uh, "Don't rewrite history," <laughs> which is representative, I would say, of all of Phase Four. It's just a complete rewrite. And the flu bomb. <laughs> There's something. <laughs> it feels like just you go from an ass to a death. Like <laughs> the whole thing is just ass. And then ending on pathetic. Yep. 
Now, uh, did this last time with Multiverse of Madness. Um, it was just taking an, an exit for the end of the previous long video about the subject, just to see how it compares with where we are now, sort of thing. Yeah. The honeymoon phase people experience with these failures is getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. Critical thinking does eventually start up, especially when the returns for the lizard brain get less. And, and genuinely, it's not even like an insult. It's, it's that a lot of people are just, <laughs> to not to do the meme, but asking more questions with more things that come out. For example, with Rhodey, right? People are like, wait, but if Rhodey was that, then then that wasn't Rhodey in Endgame? That wasn't Rhodey with blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it's like, you don't need to ask those questions, but more and more people do with the more that you piss them off. Exactly. There's, I mean, it's it's kind of like a loss of confidence in... The, I, I feel like people can see stuff that is bizarre and questionable, but they will be able to go along with it so long as they, I guess, have faith in where it's going. Yeah. But when you have like 20 projects that are pretty bad... At some point, you start losing faith in, like, in the in that they have any idea what they're doing or they're building up to anything meaningful. That they're not just screwing around and ruining everything. And less effective over time, leading to less and less praise for these fuck ups as time seems to go on. This recent set of adventures has provided an extensive, pungent level of cancer for all of us. I mean, it's phase. Well, I think four. anybody would be forgiven for thinking it's like, so he's done a Love and Thunder video. It's like, no, actually, but <laughs> it's, it was very relevant to the uh, the last video because yeah, because that uh, the the Doctor Strange video came out after Thor by like a month or so. Yeah. Something the mouse must be reaching some level of awareness on. And it just seems are. as a trilogy almost, Quantum Mania, Love and Thunder, and uh, Multiverse of Madness are a great selection to show you just how fucking terrible everything is. They are the worst. Absolute goal. Could we look more incompetent? It's the worst day of my life. This clip is from the TV show about OJ on Netflix. Um, I feel what it's called, but it's the really good. OJ Simpson. Yeah. Uh, a lot of there's a great cast, uh, really well told in terms of uh, accuracy from what I gather, as well as just being an entertaining story. I recommend it. And when I heard him say, "If we would, if it was our absolute goal, could we look more incompetent?" I was like, "But God, it's Disney." <laughs> look at how but angry Mickey is. Yeah, <laughs> folks, folks, it'll only be a set of complete commercial failures that have Disney reevaluate their approach. So until then, we shall <laughs> totally um, yeah, that. It's... That came about real quick, didn't it? Yeah, Ant Man, and, and of course, uh, every, all eyes are on Marvels now to see if that flops. Um, yeah, because Ooh. I don't know that Guardians is useful as a metric no. uh, for like long term, and of course, with every DC film this year failing catastrophically, just the general, you know, superheroes. Hmm, how they doing right now? As a genre, is this live or a premiere? This is live. Hello. Though I could have just recorded myself reading <laughs> that out and saying that, who knows? Right. And then the Wasp Quantumania opens with a wonderful view of the quantum realm. Remember that and old Yeah, the, the way I always want to start these is to try and be a little bit somewhat happy and neutral. Just take the film for what it is. And mm. uh, you can see it with the Doctor Strange one as well. It's like even with the errors that start popping up even early on, it's like, eh, you know, it's all right. We're doing fine still. You know, it's, it's not that it's bad. It's presented as though you're realizing in real time how bad it is. Yeah, which I think is more fun. And it, like I said, it does give a sense of, you know, trying to take it for what it is. But there's just a limit. There's only so many things you can get wrong before it's like, oh, okay, this is fucked. Not. Yeah. Well, it's looking a little different than the many times we've seen it previously, and we're going to talk about that soon enough. For now, let's just appreciate having Catwoman for company. Here she is, drinking some quantum water? I guess that's their attempt at showing how she survived. And that, uh, right there, is an example of these are the visuals now, the vast majority of the visuals are going to see are all fringies. Um, uh, yeah, because I think they're exclusively mine for the, the next, like, three hours. <laughs> But the, uh, uh, just that one, for example, where it's like quantum water, you could just show the water, you could zoom into the water, but I was like, I, I think I'm going to want to overlay Fry doing his uh, suspicious face. Yeah. Just to really <laughs> push home exactly what I'm trying, I'm, I'm like, that doesn't, hmm. Vived here, but how would water at this size still be, you know, and, and what does she eat that's <laughs> non <laughs> Who doesn't appreciate I was, that? I, uh, I remember that when I put that in, I was asking, like, you reckon it'd be worthwhile to have like a Luke visual this early on in the uh, in the video? It, it always is, especially because like uh, it's funny that the first what the fuck is like 
almost sacred in, in any of these videos in some way for just yeah. in re reference to these videos. But that shot of him just doing that, I think, is disconnected enough, and it's just funny because it is funny. <laughs> gives you an implication of what we're asking as this thought there. Toxic, and how do particles? You know what? It doesn't matter. We can wait on talking about that one. Oh dear, there seems to be an unidentified falling object in the sky. It's time for Janet Van Dyne to spring into action, making sure to grab her ho holster. Wait, you have a gun? Why would you keep the gun there? Yep. Really odd. It looked like it was her bed or something. Yeah. I don't, like, why I mean, wouldn't the gun just be on the, the shelf with a holster, I guess? I don't know. It doesn't look like she... You already have to accept that I guess there is like manufactured equipment in the quantum realm. The one thought I had was maybe she repurposed her blaster on her arm into a gun, ah, but the thing it. is, she still that has them. Right. So yeah. And that's besides, right. that's that's some that is that is just why would you do it? Why would you why would you repurpose that instead of just having it the way that it is? You know. Um and yeah, uh, there's nobody. She she said that she never met anybody here. So why is she hiding the gun? Like making sure it's undercover. It's like who's what's what's the concern? I don't know. It, and it just seems like um, I don't know. That's that's what people do with guns. Sometimes they put it like places like that. And you're just like okay, and you might be like, well, it's a bit nitpicky. A bit. It's like oh, whatever. <laughs> We're early on. It's fine. We're gonna get to the biggest stuff eventually. No oh, time for yeah, that. Exactly. And on we go. She discovers the crash site, and suddenly this happens. <laughs> Oh my goodness! What a terrifying yeah, quantum that creature! Play. That's damn. Yeah. That's splitting into two now. Gosh, what an unlucky and wacky situation. Probably should have kept that camo on, eh? Instead of taking it off right in front of her. May have given you an edge, but that's fine. A fight ensues. Her first sci-fi blasts missing. And the way they portray this is, it seems like this is her first encounter with this of any kind ever. Like she, she's, she's not. Seems not sure about it and surprised. And it's just like, are these not common? I don't know. Both targets I guess because not. they go invisible before she hits them. But wait, if they're only going invisible, doesn't it still hit? Yeah, them? Yeah, I guess they can teleport. Yeah, that, that was. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there exactly. Oh, there goes number one. But the second one got the jump. Oh, on that's it. the first oh, Simpsons uh, reference. Happen? Yeah, it almost feels like we should have a counter. See how um, many there are exactly, but we we can try and I keep mean, it up. But you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could. I guess I could just pull up a a word document and like try to write them down as I go along. This one I'm definitely has down. the most Simpsons yeah. references of all the videos oh, I've absolutely. made. Absolutely, uh, there might be there might be over a hundred. Happen next. <laughs> Wow, lucky the gun fell right next to this guy, and he was coherent enough to aim and shoot that thing off you after crashing. Which Oof. I seriously think, by the way, is stretches of things nobody's thinking about. Most people are just gonna be like, whatever, it's opening thing, action scene, I don't know, he landed, he's fine. Just like, okay, not much work was done to make any of that work, but fine, Kang is here now. We've gone a whole yeah. bunch of different ways. Also, that's Kang. We know him from the hit television series, Loki. God, remember what Loki? are the absolute yes, and all that I take from it in future is just him getting nutted over and over and over again for some reason. Boot insane yeah. odds of him being here, you ask? Well, we'll find out later. What is this place? This is phase five, my friend. Many believe it will be better than phase four. Why don't we see if that's true? <laughs> It's so funny that arbitrary break between phases that some people were like, you know, they can they can take criticism from four and five will be much more strong. It's so arbitrary. Yeah. I mean, this was meant to be part of phase four. It doesn't even matter if you call it something different if the way that you make all of the projects is the same. It was funny. Uh, Stephen Richter said, "Lucky speaks English. Lucky's humanoid." It's like you could say that for basically everything at this point in this universe. Like, it's crazy that the quantum realm required the talky liquid because yeah. all of the aliens in this world seem to just speak english um, or i guess you just have to i don't know head canon that they've all got like some universal translator or something yeah um which i think was mentioned when they scan peter and guardians one there's a little uh, thing that yeah, says translator or something you know. 
I'm pretty, you know, I mean, if you want to get real nitpicky, everybody's lip syncing should be off. Well, and, and of course, <laughs> all the people in fucking Endgame talked to the Guardians, so. Like, That's right. I don't think right. everyone has translators. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, it's over. San Francisco. Not off to a good not start. Not as many <laughs> South Park references, but they're, they're in there. Still plenty. Still plenty. A good amount. The thing is, The Simpsons is just incredibly versatile. Um, it's not just because I love that show. It's partially because of that, but The Simpsons is just... Like, you could... It's, it's, it's useful in so many contexts with the number of episodes, how many things get, you know, what all of the visual gags and everything. It's super, super versatile. Yeah. You can you can find a Simpsons reference for more or less anything you can think Basically of. Basically everything. In any case, when christening the launch of this next era, you may think that every opening line and visual will be indicative of what's to come. Now, Kang has already I don't said, actually know how many creators think about things that way, but it was fascinating to have it be like, where am I? And then my life doesn't make any sense. It's just like, fuck me. Uh, yeah, b because... I mean, it's true, the opening, in, in particularly well-crafted films, even the opening shot, yeah. uh, there's something to be gleamed from it, but um, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the decisions here are not very, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you could say that many of them are very purposeful. <laughs> What is this? So we've got the perfect setup, despite bearing witness to the fecal capital of America. I'm waiting for some kind of signal as to what I'm in for with the glorious Phase 5. Welcome back. My life doesn't really make sense. Ah. You have the lyrics, welcome back, comboed with, my life doesn't really make sense. That border between phases is already looking pretty I'm, thin. Uh, I'm pretty How happy you, with that visual. The good one. The... The, the, I don't even know what that room is called, but it was a funny joke uh, in and of itself anyway. Circle. Yeah. Why are you time traveling with Captain America? That doesn't make sense. You're goddamn right that didn't make any sense. That entire s The thing is, you can tell they're appealing to just the, 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 you know, people with swords made of light, people traveling through space. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, oh. Yeah, which is like, yeah, cool, guys. Thanks, bro. Can you try harder? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Story is filled with things that make no sense, Scott. And I don't think it's going to be worthwhile yeah, for you to point I really that like out. That Scott, what about now? Here. What's next? Where does the ride take you? All right, this is feeling really meta at this point. Where does Scott Lang go next? And I actually think that the initial first early super drafts of this film, they probably were thinking that. What the hell do we do with Scott? What is, what? He's done. Which, um... He's not. No, but, he's not at know, all. <laughs> that's a conclusion. I mean, the film ends. I thought he was done, right? Or yeah, loads of people. Or... As we said, I think on that stream that um, Iron Man could be mistaken for being completely done, right? It's like he's if he survived the yeah. snaps. Like, what do you do with him then? It's like it's like a million stories we can tell. We don't have to. We don't have to end. And you know, Scott. Like, there's so many things to do with his daughter. Just, why would you? Why would you ruin it by making him shit? Why? Why'd you yeah, do that? I, also, by the way, I've noticed that uh, the video on the stream, it looks like it's like pretty low FPS. Uh, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then just, well, sucks for you guys then. All right, yeah, let's keep sorry. going. Sorry. <laughs> and where does the MCU go next? Maybe we'll be getting something a little bit different. Thank you, Spider-Man. The hey, that's, that's even in the movie. kind of funny. Not sure oh my how God. it works. Second reference. Yeah, that's number two. I'm pretty sure people in chat are keeping count, so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll rely on case. you guys, okay? When Ant-Man would be way more famous than Spider-Man in this universe, being the guy who jump-started saving trillions of lives yeah. from Thanos' snap, but Obviously Spider-Man okay. is more... It's just true. <laughs> uh, people have even pointed out as well, it's like the difference between New York and San Francisco. Surely that should matter too. This yeah. Ant-Man is San Francisco's hero. Uh, also, I'm pretty... Yeah, this is another one that I'm pretty happy with. Yeah. <laughs> so let's make Space time for the perfect. stuff that really matters. <laughs> like friends. Holy wow, they even paid off this line from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Did you want to grab dinner or something? I mean, because I'm free. Yeah, come on. See, by the way, I like it when they pay off stuff like that in movies. But well, also it, prefer that they pay off a lot more than that. <laughs> like, not just far. that. This one is just fascinating, though, isn't it? That yeah. You paid off, like, a really small throwaway line in Ant-Man and the Wasp, yet it seems that you don't even remember what happened in the first two movies that was of consequence. Absolutely nuts.
Because it, the only way it could happen is if they rewatched it or really just remembered that for some reason. They were like, "Yeah, I really want to get that dinner between those two at the opener. Got to do it." Seriously, guys, this could be the turnaround. Maybe they watched the previous films this time. Maybe they care to tell a story. Maybe they'll even have meta lines regarding the state of the MCU, combined with some level of an apology for the shoveled garbage. Who knows? Wouldn't be able to resist that if I had a script in like a newer MCU thing. I'd want one characters apologizing for shit to do with it. You yeah. like tried writing it around to be like, look, they look at the camera like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry. 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 I wonder what Hope's doing. She's using the PIM particle for global change. Reforestation, affordable housing, food production. Whoa, pump the brakes there, movie. Uh, what do you mean three. food production and... This is insane, by the way, as a development. And oh, just... that they're using the PIM particles, like, in a public sort of sense, in a but, way that uh, people can easily get their hands on it and figure out how it works. It's just so many other questions that won't be answered, and I think that any normal writer would have just been like, this makes sense, doesn't it, as a development? It's like, did you, do you remember the first one at all? Do you remember how resistant Hank was to anybody getting their hands on it? And then there's just the world building. If it's being used for global change, like reforestation and housing and everything, I mean, that solves a lot of problems, right? If you just build a miniature home, scale them up into massive homes, and yeah. like they somehow maintain their properties, so like that. I mean, we saw it in the in uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, right? They made a mini house, made it a big house, and it seems to be fine. Like it's it's sturdy, it stands. It's not like it's going to collapse or anything. And if that's the case, it's like wow, you you guys have single handedly solved like housing as just a thing. And oh, then, well. of course, when we can grow the the pizza, it's like wow, you guys have just solved world hunger. Reforest... how? Wait, but uh, hang on, wasn't the whole thing with the Pym Particle that we couldn't let it get out to the whole world? That other people like Cross yep. or Goliath or- And this is another thing about the structure of the video, right? It's like, this is presented as though I don't know fully in detail all of the arguments related to Hank. Of course I do, and that's more so safe for a section. This is like planting the seed, being like, eh, I could have I sworn this was not the way it should be, because I want it flagged up, but I also, this isn't going to be the time to talk about it, you know? There's way more no, references to collect. Put it in people's minds. Yeah. Well, the other scientist dude from the second movie couldn't be trusted, that they tried to replicate it and had horrifying results at times. Hank and Hope were almost taken down by the police in the second movie. They had to break out. Are Hank, Hope, and Janet all just public in their business now? Has Pym Tech- but The blip has just reset everything to the point where nobody even knows what to take forward from previous films anymore. It characters. seems that way. Um, it is really, really, really worth emphasizing how much damage Endgame did. Yeah. Like, that was a difficult thing to work with anyway. Um, but obviously, very, very lacking efforts have been made to try and incorporate the blip into uh, subsequent stories. At this point, it's basically been forgotten when it would be the most significant thing. Like, it's and ever that's another thing if humanity. they didn't bank on. We never got to hear what Hank had to say about what Stark did, considering he said, you know, Iron Man is like a cute toy and that he never wants technology going to the Starks because of what they would oh, do yeah, with it. Oh, yeah, because he doesn't like... The, he knew Howard personally. Uh, so, so it'd be so, interesting. Yeah, to, to have known... Him. Iron Man with the suit saved the whole universe. Like that's got to be worth a lot. And Hank, we never get to well, see him comment his on it. Whole family, you know, the whole universe, including him, his wife, and his daughter. Uh, yeah, there's, there's yeah, obviously a scene, and and that could again tie into that rewrite where he does die. That he was inspired by Tony as well. Uh, recognizes be, something and, about him. The the all these opportunities, like <laughs> all gone. They're right there been utilized across several industries? Has it comboed up with Stark, Wakandan, Asgardian, and, well, cosmic tech? Does Hank care? Does anyone care? It is incredibly nope. dangerous. Wasn't that the whole, uh, are we gonna get any accounting for any of this? None of this should have happened, but it did. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> that line is just... <laughs> Absolute curse on the film. <laughs> it shouldn't yeah. have happened, but it did. We talking about phase four here or the whole damn thing? Will I be there when the Avengers need me? Absolutely. I'd never turn my back on them. But right nah, Scott, you're uh, you're resting on your laurels, no, even though you will uh, accept the call to adventure whenever that comes up. You're a selfish jerk. Yep. Right now, the only job I want is being a dad. 
Well, hey, that's pretty cool. Sounds like there's a chance here that we'll finally get a paired down to the core character driven movie. It could have, again. honestly, it could have been a $10 million movie. Grab, like, Paul Dude, Rudd, it, Michael Douglas. It, you don't even need Hope or Janet. We talk about <laughs> this. We talk about this, but I don't think it's ever, ever been a thing that's been entertained at Marvel. H how about we make, like, a, a Marvel movie that doesn't have, like, a big bad guy that they gotta fight? Like, what if it was just a film that's set in the Marvel Universe, and it's just characters, you know, talking to each other, and, like, it's, it's, all, it's only about their dynamics, no superhero stuff, and they'd probably be like, what are you talking about? We're superhero movies. That's the only thing that you can do. It's, it's crazy, because uh, I think they'd be scared that the audience would feel betrayed, right, if you had a movie that's all about him dealing with the aftermath like, um, of saving the universe. It has no action scenes in it. Maybe they would. Maybe. They'd be like, what are the I'm audience going to do? They'll revolt. They go in, they, they're expecting something for Batman. It's like, yeah, but imagine, though, it were good. Imagine <laughs> like, you just did one movie. You just did one really and good And you advertise as such. Movie. You say, this is a very different kind of superhero film. This is about yeah. a superhero who's done his job. The fight is over. What happens next? And I mean, at this point, it, like, e even, if, even if they weren't interested in the creative merits of doing that, Maybe maybe they should consider not spending two hundred million dollars on every single film that they make. Maybe they should try going for smaller budget films that don't need to make as much money to succeed. Because even if you made that super pared back, no superhero action like Ant Man movie, you probably still would make like fifty hundred million dollars. I would that. think so. Yeah, if you paid just for him, Michael Douglas, maybe Michelle Pfeiffer, and you focus on the house uh, and like the town as a set. The city, rather, like a few few places. I'm trying to think of what else you might need. And you know, the, 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 surely you don't need to spend any more than twenty million. And um, that, yeah, you'd think so. And then uh, you're gonna hit like a hundred million, probably, no matter what. Exactly. An movie. Um, and then just write it really compellingly. And you know, we could we can always just kill Hank by a heart attack or something. It's been tragic like that. This could always happen. Well, yeah, I mean, imagine if it was something that was not related to superheroes. It was it was just a real-world thing. Be really straightforward. And to be honest with you, the MCU doesn't really do that that much. Um, no. Eggie's death was a really important, and that was a natural cause as one. Well. Yeah. It's been a while. And man, that would be a wise way to kick off the new phase. But right now, the only job I want is being a dad. I love you, Cassie. Thanks for being my hero. Feels a little more like the first Ant-Man, understanding Scott Lang, thief turned hero, focusing on how to be the best father he can be. And Let's this is the thing, what the film mentor was talking about, is like, he doesn't need to be a thief now. He's moved past that. That's not That's right. necessarily like an intrinsic part of an Ant-Man film. An Ant-Man film can change. See how it goes. Make mistakes. Take chances. There's always... Why do they show us everyone getting inspired and then tell us this is all I, worthless? I don't get it's it. so I don't, weird. I, it's, it seems like they don't realize what they've created here. He, okay. He's written an inspirational book about how we save the universe and how everybody has the capacity to be a hero in their own lives. It's, it's so inoffensive. Yeah. Please. Room to grow. You know what? I think that's pretty neat. You get a decent bit of confusion in terms of just what chances we should be taking when Scott has done some morally questionable things. Yeah, this is like, you know, really digging into the message, but ultimately these are the kinds of things that we take broadly and we're like, yeah, I get it. Take some risks, you know, yeah. don't, don't live your life in a cave, that sort of thing. Things that have led to bigger and better things, but dude, what a normal and fair bit of simple <laughs> advice to give uh, to people visual. who can sometimes miss out through fear, apprehension, or misjudgment on what a situation could truly mean. Makes a bit of sense that he would pop that in his book, as it's reflective of his life, and it even references his power. Though, is Scott Lang the kind of character who would write a book about his life? Well, I imagine it's quite the incredible story to tell, and it might just well, inspire- And now we know that this has happened because Hulk and Hawkeye told him to do it apparently which it's uh real awkward <laughs> yep considering do it. they all seem to be criticizing him in this movie based on the fact that he chose to write the book but now it turns out he was asked to write it as a you know a record of what mm. happened so even more selfless than it was already but <laughs> <laughs> good job guys <laughs> some people along the way. Maybe Falcon could have figured that one out and made some and money yeah, with And yeah, when book. you have that but as well, well, if the Avengers it's... don't pay, then yeah, I guess he probably does need to write a book. What's to insane to too is money. that he has an incredible insight that most people don't. He, he was with the uh, Vigilante Avengers for years. 
He was, that's right. Imagine being able to talk about that and then Cap's life. Like, what? I just... You could make so much yeah. money. You don't even need to write a book. Go on interview shows. It's, 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 we've talked about it before. It's so stupid. You've got to do... No! no! Sorry, that's me. <laughs> now, cool. South Park. Fun, fun fact, Why by the way. I didn't it? know that that... Uh, I didn't know that that line was from Star Trek. What line now? I, him screaming no. That's Picard. Oh, the Star Trek movies. You know the the line must be drawn here scene. Yeah, that's Picard. But they used that in the South Park episode. Yeah. So huh. instead of instead of Randy smashing his head through the glass, it was like Picard threw something through some glass. <laughs> but I didn't know that. I just remembered the. I just remembered Randy screaming no at the top of his lungs, which uh, I thought was funny. So I decided to throw it in there. Yeah, people saying first contact is apparently where it's from. All right. No. So it turns out Cassie Lang, Scott's daughter, the little girl from the first and second. Oh, <laughs> mm. she's, she's gone forever now. Second movie not only aged about ten years more than the character she's playing, she's been recast and thrown in jail. I understand that's a lot to take in, and before we talk about the story, it's probably worth mentioning that the actress playing Cassie in Endgame, Emma Furman, has indeed been replaced, and she discovered it the same way we all did, through social media announcements. You stay classy, Disney. As for her story... She only had well, one scene. I she was the better actress. One significant scene, yeah. You see her in another scene. It was scene, a demanding but... scene, and yeah, she was. performed really well, and then they replaced her with somebody who's not very good at acting. This, it's, it captures the whole fucking craft, doesn't it? You have to come on to this set, and you have to pretend this guy is a guy you haven't seen, he's your dad, and you haven't seen him in five years, and you thought he was dead. Go. Like, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Jesus, okay. And she did it, and she did it well. Yes, we'll have to wait for more information. Is she okay? Have you heard anything? Not yet. No. Oh no, what did you do to her hair? It's like she lost a fight with a hairdresser when the hairdresser was doing her hair. What? Why does every joke have to be creative? Cassie, what happened? Which in and of itself could be argued as a creative joke. Look at that. Look at the meta, the layers. I'm here. Oh, he knows. <laughs> Jail stuff. We have indeed discovered that Cassie is in jail because she got involved in a peaceful protest that was being displaced by tear gas. More on that in a sec. I did find this, though. No, 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 no. It's so funny because it's meant to be like, haha, look what she did to the car, but they'd be immediately like, arrest her. Now. Yeah. It doesn't work at all. No, no, no. She, she didn't because if she did. Oh no. You shrank a cop car? What were you thinking? What was I supposed to do? Look the other way? They were clearing out a homeless camp in the middle of the night. Uh, I think it was as Jay pointed out. If the shrink and grow tag is as uh, you know proliferated as we think it is, then I guess they just took it to the back of their police station and grew it up with their own I guess so. police grow tag. I don't know. Permanently destroyed. Yeah, it's... Uh, Which, uh, you, you know, cars cost like $30,000. I think there's <laughs> legal issue with destroying cop cars, yeah. I thought that destroying yeah. a cop car would help the homeless maintain their camp on what I assume is grounds they are illegally fucking with. Did they still have education after uh, the snap? And didn't they just <laughs> Another say Simpsons hope reference. is in charge of all no kinds of legal and No one ever suspects the butterfly. <laughs> true <laughs> forms of humanitarian efforts including affordable housing she should be shitting all over hope she should be like hope you fucking loser look at you with all your helpful efforts you're not even looking after the ones at home you know so to speak mm. why didn't you speak to her about it get a useful and possibly permanent solution for those people we've run every viable model through the computer and it looks like there just are no easy solutions to this recession have you tried Kill all the poor. The computer says it wouldn't help, so we're not doing it. That's why we're not doing it. And I didn't realize that it's only cold hearted pragmatism that's keeping you from pumping gas into Little. Little, a famously uh, cheap place to purchase supermarket items from in Europe. Don't know if you have them in Australia. No. Because uh, uh, when you start talking about it like it was Woolworths, that's just like, oh, okay, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> Pumping gas into little is just fucking funny as a thing to say. But also, uh, yeah, this is from that Michelin Web look. It's a show they ran, I think, for three years. I fully recommend it. A lot of great uh, jokes in there. There's, um, there's this one that's like presented as a documentary. You know, it's like you, you do a show about like a, a person who's living with some kind of disability or crazy difference, and they're just a day in the life of this person, like with interviews. And 
they treat it really seriously. This intro to this skit, they're like, uh, this man's name is Jeremy, and he lives with 17 penises. <laughs> it's just like delivered <laughs> really carefully and, and he's just it's just David Mitchell and he's like, Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> or hey, use Pimtech. Make a tiny house huge or whatever. They shouldn't have shown use. this. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> it's just <laughs> you've ruined everything. You could you permanently solved housing. Yep. But the weird thing is that Hope isn't chastising Cassie for this too. She's oddly silent. Which she's not allowed to have character. Why? Not in this film she isn't, no. Nope. Hey, wait, 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 wait. This is much worse Which than Which is I particularly painful when you see those clips from uh, Evangeline Lilly talking about how she needs to reinvent Hope every time she hit, gets a new movie. Like, she needs to figure her out. And it's like, yeah, it's because they didn't have a three... You know how they're treating Scott? We're like, where do we take Scott next? I don't think they've ever asked that question about Hope. She's like an extension of Scott. Which is really um, awkward when they went out of their way to name it Ant-Man and the Wasp. To present well, her as being her equal. The irony is she's the most unique as a character in the movie that doesn't have her name attached to it. Like, uh, uh, yeah, she... Well, it's... It is strange, isn't it? Why, why do we... It's, it's like we've accepted that there's nothing we can do with that character. Uh, she in Ant Man One is almost an antagonist at one point. Like she's very much invested in the same goal, but she has different methods, and she doesn't agree with her dad, and that that's a whole thing they got to solve. In the second mm -hmm. one, she's the dad's foot soldier, um, and wants to see her mum again. And they talk about yep. like Civil War stuff. And then in this one, as they admitted, they had nothing for her. It's like I don't know, she's just around. It's really a shame. She's a character. You're supposed to treat her as such. <laughs> it's kind of insane. Yeah. Realized. Why wasn't Cassie arrested for the destruction of that car? At least, until it's restored, of course. Why isn't her stepfather, the guy who chose to put his life at risk for hers, he- This would be um, a good example of how the video gets made. Uh, the original line there was father-in-law, because I'm, I'm, I'm to this day mixed up on exactly the difference, or at least uh, I'll use them interchangeably. Father-in-law, stepfather, mother-in-law, people-in-law, versus step-people. And uh, it doesn't get caught by me, and funnily enough, it probably wouldn't- I, th I don't think Rags was sure about it either, right? Um, uh, I'm not sure, but I remember I was just listening to it, it's like, no, stepfather. And so it has to be noted, and then when I do pickups for just, you know, lines that don't come out as well, or lines where you can hear shit in the background, or just flubs in general, or words that I've used just incorrectly, I uh, catch them all with timestamps and then redo them all. And the well, difficult- yeah, one of the Difficult yeah. part is that if I deliver a line like this, and then I deliver the pickups like that, yeah. <laughs> it becomes really obvious, and it's like, you've got to listen back to it, and then try... The best thing, and this is annoying to a lot of people, is having a, a microphone set up that gives you feedback into your ears straight away. You can hear your own voice. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have that, do have that, but it helps to direct sounding like you did. Um, and the funny thing is, uh, the DS2 videos particularly, there is this one time where I re-recorded a whole section because I uh, it like it like had background noise. But I was ill, and this was when I definitively learned I will never do that again, because it, it goes from like sounding exactly like this to like... <laughs> it's just like in the <laughs> middle of it, and I was like, why did I let that go? <laughs> like, it sounds it so bad. It. And it's just difficult because it, they could just sound different, even, even if you feel like you're doing it exactly the same way. You're the same distance from the microphone, same yeah. recording environment and everything. It can just sound different. And it, it, and fuck, uh, it, it can you can get away with it with a lot of the audience, but when you notice it, it can be like, oh, it's so annoying to listen to, because you're like, oh, I should probably redo that. Mm -hmm. Here, he is a cop. He gets the alert when his family are taken in. We saw that in the first Ant-Man, but this concerns him. And yeah, he was completely forgotten. Much yeah, like a lot of things. He was, are. even though he was a big role in the first movie, not nearly as big a role in the second movie. His stepdaughter. I imagine he would have a lot to say about her shrinking a cop car. Speaking of which... <clears throat> what the... No, 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 no. Not yet. It's okay. Why can Cassie shrink a cop car? Does she have... It's not cringe death? enough and yet. And why isn't this no, a shock? I, I promised your mom that you would only use this stuff when one of us was around. I, I already hate that. I think I would have taken the direction that he would have been hyper-protective of her. It like, just makes a lot of sense, considering that he lost five years of his life with her, you know. When Janet from... got lost, and all the shit that yeah. happens in this universe, Tony just died, like, it's it's just... No, well, I don't want weird. you to be a the fucking... MCU... And that was the story to tell, right? Or at least one of them. I don't want you to be a hero. I don't want you to be... And, and it's just like, what the fuck? It's like, surely you, you want to inspire everyone to. It's like, that's... 
yes. Yeah, like, maybe, but, maybe everybody else, but not you. Yeah, and that's conflict. Easy conflict. Yep. Exactly. It's like you've you've spent your whole it, life inspiring me, and now you don't want me to do it. It's like I, it, I, I, I uh, want you to. Damn it! Doesn't it seem like there's an easy parallel when hope? Would, you could you could easily yeah. say that hope was inspired to get into all of the Ant Man tech stuff because of her mom and dad. You, and you then it's already... like a parallel between her and uh, Cassie. They're both the daughters of you know an, an Ant Man who wanted to follow in their footsteps. You can already picture the scene where he's arguing with Cassie, and then it, you know she storms out. And then Hank walks in, he's like, you know, hope the longest time, and then just explains a parallel, and then Scott's like, yeah, I get it, but, like, you know, Cassie's not hope. She's not ready. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so unfair, because it's so easy and obvious. Nah, it's that really trope is played out. It's better than nothing at all. <laughs> Every trope is played <laughs> out when it comes to character conflict with storytelling. Like, and this, by the way, that mindset is what gets us stuff like Quantumania, where it's like, we've never done this before. It's like, yeah, maybe yeah. there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> dangerous tech. I know, it's dangerous. You got damn right it's dangerous. It took Hank's wife from him. It began an arms race that would have seen cataclysmic war worldwide if not for detonating the very building the research took place in. Handing it off to a teenager so she can destroy police property. It's all been rushed through because we need to get her into the ant suit doing Ant-Man things. Because... Haven't considered much of anything about it. He is probably not wise. What if the cops took it from you? Huh? What if you lost it? I didn't lose the suit. You have a suit? She has a suit? Why the f No way would he ever. Very good choice of visuals. <laughs> uh, the the uh the Tony looking up along with uh Doctor Strange's cape is just like ah it's perfect. It is yeah. Uh, and... But I mean, if it's not something you guys have noticed as well, the idea is if you use a reaction, you don't use it again. We <laughs> like, you we find try. There is two sets of reactions, ones that are meant for any particular, like a, like, what the fuck, for example, or yeah. time being referenced or being baffled. I have a couple from the father I like to consistently use, uh, Obi-Wan you'll see popping up with his pointing yeah. around in the star system a lot. Um, but then there are ones that are more, the wrong word would be generic, but the reason I'm using it is because I can't think of anything right now. We're, we're, we're like, that one's gone in, it served its purpose, now we'll try not using that again. Um, so it keeps the video yeah. lively, which is unusual in this, I would argue, sector of YouTube for film review that uses reaction imagery. They don't tend to not uh, repeat. And, yes. uh, it, it can be challenging because there are some that are really good and you'd like to use a lot of times. But if you try and use new ones every single time, it means that the longer that the project goes on, yeah, the more you have to strain to figure out what kind of reactions you can use. And um, because people point out, it's like, yeah, angry Tywin. Tywin's laugh, I usually try and get once in every video at least. I love it, the, huh, yeah. like a, such a dismissive, like, what a fuck up sort of thing. But uh, yeah, it makes it very dynamic, which is obviously the goal. The risk that. The guy hesitates to give it to anyone. He gave it to Scott because he considered him expendable. He allowed Hope to have the suit after years of understanding the tech and sharing his protective attitude on top of conducting missions they needed to complete to save Janet. Cassie has no idea what she's doing. She would have no familiarity with the mission or the sensitivity of the tech. And again, it seems like a missed opportunity. Why You could have had it so that Hank was like, Cassie, I don't even know who you are. Like... I appreciate that you're interested in your father's work and my work, but this has nothing to do with you. Like, that could be conflict. Yeah. And she's clearly almost- The story is right there. She's like, I love heroes. Hero work's great. Helping people. And then something horrible happens because she gets too far into yeah. it too quick. Lost it to basic law enforcement, which would drive Hank nuts. How in the world do we justify this insanity? I know how to take care of myself. Uh, good old Futurama. Pretty good at it by now. Ouch. God, this is such a bad <laughs> set of intro lines for Cassie. Wow, your dad was... Uh, it took me a while to figure out what visual I wanted for that one. Um, and then I, I remembered in the time... Well, for those I who missed. remember that scene, the emotion is the same. The, the like, yeah. what? Why? <laughs> Why would you say that? It's a great face, but it took, it took a little while to, to figure yeah. out what to use there. 
prison for trying to get money back to people it was stolen from to then miss five years of your life because a giant purple space monster killed his family while he was trapped in the quantum realm. Which he undid as no small feat, and you're bitching to him about not being there for you? An interesting choice when he has recently, very publicly made it clear that his mission statement is to be there for you. Man, you're making me love this new character real quick. And the thing is, you wouldn't know any better, it's not even sure yeah, clear that she understands that there is a book or what it's about or what it's done like she seems to just shun him for the fact that he wrote a book yeah that's that's lame you wrote a book like she doesn't even know what the book's like, about it seems that way anyway or, or like i guess she's cynical about any like inspirational book any self-help book ever like she's great look i didn't mean it like that I'm no. sorry. It's okay. It's all right. Well, at least she apologized. Though it is rather worrying that she actually holds resentment for Scott over the history of their relationship. And that's got to be the writers being like, okay, we can't actually blame him. <laughs> like, no, because that's blame. absurd. How in the world can you blame him? He got stuck there doing superhero stuff that was unrelated. Yeah. He was just really, really, really unlucky. But she also knows. simultaneously incredibly lucky, remarkably lucky, astoundingly lucky. Endgame doesn't happen. If he didn't, if he didn't get trapped in there for like the ten seconds, he guys, Endgame is really bad. Mm, yes, there's I'm a video sorry, about I that. I hate to break it to you. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's what we know about his absences, and so this is killing her likability. Thankfully, this is the beginning, and I'm sure there's plenty more of her being fun, reasonable, and likable throughout. Oh, and has Hope got anything to say about all of this? She spends the scene where her future husband and stepdaughter are arguing about going to jail, staring at her phone. But she does indeed if- I can't imagine how she didn't herself, like the actress, think to say like, would I be looking at my phone when they're saying all this? I don't know. Yeah, but what, I don't know. What did they say to her? It's like, yeah. yeah anyway, move it on. <laughs> That's it, you would. get involved. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just I'm telling her what to do. I'm telling me exactly what to do. Scott Hi. is desperately trying to guide his daughter away from the same life of crime that destroyed his prospects. So much potential there, but it's never brought up. And uh. almost ended the relationship he had with his family. Like, we sh this should be the first time we see him actually angry. We don't, yeah. we don't see Scott angry basically ever. In fact, uh, I struggle to imagine Scott doing, or rather Paul Rudd, doing a, a very really serious, angry. angry person, yeah. Yeah. And it would be cool to have, you know, Hope interject and be like, listen, she's made some mistakes, and he's just like, just don't. Just stay out of it. This has nothing to do with you. Like, that sort of thing. Yeah. It would be really nice to see. Never mind. Meanwhile, this gas-brained, hobbit-haired plank of garbage is actively siding with the troubled child. This is especially bizarre considering Hope's awareness of the world clamping down on Pimtech and what it would mean for the future. Cassie almost lost her suit and the tech to the police. You don't seem to be acting very much in character, Hope. How about oh. some music? And in that moment... Dad, are you listening to your own book? But I was ready for anything. Hmm? No, that's, uh... Scott Lang, possibly one of the MCU's least egotist- least egotistical, least selfish characters, motivated almost by the love of his family and the caring of others, listening to himself talk? Awesome. Let's move on, eh? Oh, it's Hank and Janet's house. <laughs> Muller, are it's you watching it. your own video? Yes. Yes. Um, it's worth emphasizing, again, Scott might be- he is, like, one of the least egotistical characters in the MCU. He is, like, astoundingly humble. The only person that's gonna beat him out at this point is someone like fucking Veb. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's probably. Almost impossible. Because he just- he just doesn't give a fuck. Because you could argue that, like, because Cap will, like, if Cap believes that he's right, he will, like, steadfastly maintain those principles, even in the face of, like, staunch opposition. Yeah. If it was like Scott would be the kind of person to be like, well, no, we, you know, we can have a chat about it. You know, I'm open to hearing your perspective and everything. Like, he's so chill. He's the chillest, least egotistical character, and they've decided to make him the one with the ego problem. What about Drax? Well, did, <laughs> didn't he say, I'm, I'm extraordinarily humble? Yeah, and yeah, that's right. He is extraordinarily humble, and he's very <laughs> literal, so he must, be, he must be telling the truth. I mean, he believes that he's humble, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, also someone said you could argue that he's uh, listening to it ahead of the reading. Uh, that would be fine, but the movie doesn't agree. 
No, the movie is saying that he is it because remember later on he he mentions again that he wrote a book about all of his adventures and yeah, that was Cassie looked at him like oh wow yeah look at him talking about his stupid book again yeah that's the that's one that the seals film. it that that is Cassie being like how awkward is it that his narcissism is getting in the way of us explaining to these creatures that we're you know we're fine we're yeah. good it's like that's that wouldn't happen but okay Drax is extraordinarily humble. True. Let's see what they're- Hank and Janet's house. Let's see what they're up to. Your Nobel Prize is in the mail. It better be. Just it may- it should be. Yeah. Did they even acknowledge- <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just- What are you doing? Five bucks. Did, did you- Did he seriously just find a way to expand food at a rate that value is created rather than maintained or lost? Uh, some of the stuff I mentioned to bring in is what I mean is kind of the point of this. Uh, when I wrote that line initially, it was- did he just, like, multiply food? And then I was looking back on it, and I was like, hmm, that's technically something we can already do. Like, uh, we, I should probably be more specific, because a lot of people would be like, it's not impressive to take food and make more food. Like, we, you have to be specific in terms of, like, mass is created. Like, we, we've, there is stuff there that was not there whatsoever before, to the point where he's, it just solves hunger instantly. Like, the, yeah, he's expanded its nutritional value. Yeah, and he said that he saved money by doing what he just did. Like it's which it's, uh, <laughs> so uh, I, guess, I guess free to make pim particles because uh, the the logic might have been thought to be like, is it the same amount of like stuff? It just looks bigger. It's like no, it's more no, stuff. It's more. It's definitely more. And um, again, why would she say you have a Nobel, Nobel Prize, Prize if not for the fact that he's done something that's absolutely incredible? Yeah, and I mean. I mean, if he doesn't have one, he should. He just solved world hunger. Again, like, it, it puts us post-scarcity, if you can just do this. Yeah. If you just drop but that drop droplet on, like, a, a huge silo of, I don't know, cheese, like, would it go oh, into, like, enormous yeah. amount of cheese? I don't know. Exactly. But, but the film is like, ah, it's a funny meme. But they don't realize that they've... Well, this and, is world building. We talk about it before, but, like, this food isn't even remotely the concern now. It'd be like, wait, 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 Because you'd be like, well, solving world well, hunger is a big deal. It's like, what happens if you put this on, like, weaponry? Mm. What happens if you put this on, like, a rocket? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, fuel? Like, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, there's loads, the, the government would want their hands on this immediately. Oh, you know, like, imagine how many, just imagine how much you can build, how much food you can create. And and they don't realize that it's world building and it's character. It's world building because this is an element that exists now in this universe that you have to account for, and it's character because they're just using it to make pizza. Yep. Instead of actually using it to help people. A way to just multiply food? He just said he saved money. They mentioned Hope working on food production, but Hank just solved the whole thing. It makes you wonder yeah. if this is what Hope's doing. I don't know. I guess so, but I mean, what's she working on? It's done. You, well, uh, you nailed it. You got it. <laughs> Uh, just you know, it would be so funny if in the next uh, with the Marvels in the background on TV it just says Hank Pym solves world hunger. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like if they were respecting the events of this film, they would have to. Like they have no choice. That that has yeah. to be the case. The world has been exactly. changed forever, and they all seem rather casual about it. Can't wait to see how this ripples through and affects the world of the MCU. You can talk about it. I spent thirty years down there. I want to live right now. That's By the way, when we talk about like continuity, her hair color is different. I just noticed from the same film or from the previous I, film. I was in the scene before when they were in the police station, she had like gold highlights. Yes, because it was a reshoot, and there she doesn't. They all look very different in the final scene where they have the birthday party cake. Which, that but... one's better because it's way later. Yeah, but yeah. I just noticed that like her hair changes that day. Holy okay, shit. I, it makes you wonder it's like, how much of this stuff was reshot and why. I mean, what Angely knew. Yeah. Janet was very open and passionate about the quantum realm at the end of the second movie. I wonder what happened between mm. then and now. <laughs> See, it's a, it's a reoccurring visual because it's just so fucking good. So that fry one. Did you get any yeah. new friends in the slammer this time? Grandpa. Wow. Hank doesn't seem to care at all that his <laughs> granddaughter has a record <laughs> and with his tech. It used to be one of his most significant concerns. Kinda looks like we're throwing all of that away for Cassie to just have... There's so many directions you could take it. You could have it be that Scott does, like, fully integrate her into the Ant-Man stuff, thinking it'll be great and fun. And then, like, she's messing around with it and Hank just goes ballistic. Like, what the fuck are you yeah. thinking? What is wrong with you? Why the hell would you ever do... Or you can go the other way around. Hank is more opened up, but he's still careful. But he introduces to her 
some of the ideas I suppose and Scott is the one that's furious like why the hell would you let her anywhere near this yeah. it's like what do you mean it's like, and then like Scott can remind him it's like you brought me into this knowing I could die why are you doing it with her and it's like well she showed exactly. an interest I, I don't I was just trying to you know conflict people like conflict because it's interesting typically the speaking. only source of conflict mostly is ah uh, you egotistical fuck scott yeah the book off you saved trillions of trillions as i'm just stating it like well imagine um, zillions imagine hawkeye was here for some reason he was just visiting they all say their shit about that and then he says i don't know i think that uh after saving the universe scott trying to inspire people to do great acts like him is actually kind of a good thing Mm -hmm. Just to see what the rest of them would say, and see Cassie yeah. like be like, <laughs> just to piss everyone off even more. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. I hate it. Fun. That's good. Makes you wonder if you don't want to be caught. <laughs> those suits make it nigh Dead impossible set. for normal cops to capture you. And I'm still wondering what. Yeah, how the hell did she get caught? She had an Ant Man suit. What mm -hmm. happened? And then she also got caught, but didn't get caught with the Ant-Man suit. So, you know, I guess it happened before we saw it, but it sounds a little nonsensical, just saying. Yeah. Shrinking a cop car has to do with helping people find homes. Or why it would make a difference to tear gas being shot. But hey, we're only ten minutes in, so, you know. And there were a lot of people who said, like, you know, right up until they go to the quantum realm, like, things were pretty solid in the movie. It's like, no, good God, I... it's a catastrophe. I mean, it's, like, no. straight away. I think this look from uh, Vulture feels pretty appropriate, just yeah. watching the movie like, hmm. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get more information as time goes on. This time? Was there a last time? I mean, last time barely counts. So now you're telling me that Scott's daughter is semi-regularly ending up in jail. Hank knows this. It's funny. And supplied her the pim tech to fuck around with and did it all behind Scott's back. These are not only things that Hank is definitely against, being that he has a strong motive to protect his family from the dangers of his own tech. He's also invested in Scott as a father. Hank's life is partially defined by having lost the connection to his own daughter. This is what drew him to Scott Lang, a man he sees himself in. Losing his family and his only daughter in the process. Exactly your kind of guy, Hank. So why the hell are you now trying to tell me that Hank is actively harming the relationship Scott has with his daughter and no one here is taking any issue with any of it? I mean, last time barely counts. I didn't know that. Why didn't you call me? Because I knew you'd be like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Be like what? A caring father? Asking whether it's possible to run the same goals without ending up in jail? Is this too much for you? Do you want him to simply not give a shit? Normally, this would- It's so unreal, because it feels like people who wrote this don't have kids or something. It's like, how do you think people react to this? Your kid has gone to jail twice, and then you didn't even know about it. And Scott- And then you find out that it's because Hank- like somebody who doesn't really have much of a connection with her at all is subverting your like he he's deliberately doing things that you don't like absolutely fucking nuts her to incredibly dangerous technology that for that man like his wife was trapped in the quantum realm for 30 years well and it's cute that they think that a, a parent would be like oh that's that's awful What's going on? As opposed to, what the hell is wrong with you? What the fuck has happened? Give me all the information right now, also you're grounded forever. Especially considering that Scott went to jail, um, and that had significant consequences for him. He couldn't get a job. And because he couldn't get a job, he couldn't see her. I mean, Scott's... So, like, if anything, he is particularly motivated to make sure that she, like, doesn't go to jail. <laughs> And Scott's uh, reaction is so passive. Like this is this is low it's level for most parents. Chill. Yeah, it's pretty chill considering. Like, he's already being chewed out for that. Trail. It's like you're already overreacting, Scott. Clearly. Not, yeah, you're overreacting for that time. I didn't tell you that I went to jail. Yes. <laughs> Unlike today, where I went to jail and you didn't know. Like they would, they would be telling her like you are destroying your life. And um, I say they because all the characters in this room would be telling her that. Unfortunately, only one of them even gets close. Would be hand-waved as the troubled it, it teen. It is crazy that, like, they all decide to shit on Scott because he wrote a book after saving the universe, something that is incredibly chill. Meanwhile, there's no criticism for her at all for nope. potentially losing their technology, potentially endangering the lives of everybody around there using that tech. Imagine if you threw the shrinker and it hit a person. Yeah. 
acting out. Unfortunately, the film seems to side with her. I would have just broken you out with ants. The hell you just say, old man? <laughs> Scott is trying to reach his daughter here after finding out she's making jail her new home after taking tech off you. Maybe sit down with your pizza and shut up for a second, okay? Can we have a family meeting? So unfair, because Hank should be the one giving out the most, like, you know, sage advice, but oh well. Yeah, I mean, he, he was the, he was the, the, like, he's a serious guy. Yeah. It's something that they, and I, and I imagine that, uh, what's his name would be like, nah, but see, because now that he's got his wife back, now he's super chill. That was like the thing. So now he's chill. Like, as if his temperament would just flip completely because of that. When, mm -hmm. if anything, you might think that he might be exceedingly cautious now. As like, well, I got my, I got my wife back. I don't want anything like this to ever happen ever again. Like, I can't bear the thought of this happening again. That if anything, he might become more careful. And now might be a good nah. time to mention, by the way, we are 17 minutes into the video. This would already have taken many weeks. Um, uh, yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> you might not think so, but it, taking in the full, like, process, which of course is that I watch the movies and make sort of watch any of the ones that, you know, link to these characters, at least the scenes in Endgame or whatever, just make sure I don't miss anything. You know, write out the script. It, 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 I've talked about it before, but I'll watch the film and note. Then I'll watch the film again and uh, categorize all of the notes in an order that I need for the second half of this video. After having, also, after having watched the first two movies and extensively known yeah, yeah. those ones as well. Um, and then start writing the script properly, which is going to be a chronological, like, sort of reacting to everything as it comes. Uh, you know, redraft, 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 and then start writing the second half, which is, as you guys would have seen, it's 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 a, it's hard to describe what exactly the second half is, but it's more meta. Um, this is more inside the film as it happens. The second half is like talking about it as it is, where it sits and what it means and what it's done now to each of these characters and uh, what it does to the MCU going forward. That all gets done. Redraft, 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 and then you know, final proof before I start recording, which takes forever. Um, it's, it's not a process I recommend, but I do like three to four takes of each line, and that's not including if I do a different kind of reading. And then uh, cut it all up, paste it all out, get the right things in the audio places, and then render it and send it over to Fringy, who then fills in all of the, uh, the blank spaces for the reactions or the context clues of what's happening while I continue doing the audio. And then yeah, when I've... Along. When I've essentially completed the timeline, by then he may have done an hour, two hours, whatever, and it'll be a decision of whether or not I start adding, because there's about two hours of this video as visuals I did, and then there's about an hour that goes to Goga, and about four hours there's Fringies. Obviously I've rounded up everybody's time there, so that just came to seven when it's six, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, just the 17 minutes here is, it takes a fucking long time for this to exist. As um, it is. I mean... When it comes to like visuals, making sure that you're using relevant visuals, uh, references can take a while to get. Like sometimes I would spend like like an, a couple of hours just to get like one reference. I'd just be sitting there thinking like, "Holy shit, what could I use for this? <laughs> like, what's the perfect reaction?" Sometimes it would take a while to even figure out what that is. But I mean, even like cutting together. Because, you know, with with copyright as a thing, you need to make sure that your clips are real, real short. So, like, I'm pretty sure that there's, like, no single, like, uh, visual that lasts longer than, like, four or five seconds, which every every time... Like, you just add that up over the course of several hours, that's a lot of cuts. That's, like, a lot of decisions about how long to spend on something, what's the right visual to use. It just, it takes some time. Well, and if there's a moment that I say, uh, you know, like, oh my god, check out the suits of Iron Man, Cap... Black Panther, Ant-Man, and uh, I guess the Hulk doesn't really count, but hey, threw him in there anyway. When you when you hear me say that, that's like, what, six seconds at most, and you're like, right, this is going to take me a while. <laughs> so I'm going to have yeah, to grab the best visual I can think of to represent each of those uh, names. Yeah, because sometimes you can have, sometimes the visuals, are, it's, you know, it's all, even though it's all playing while, you know, you're talking, how long it takes varies because it's always... I think it's like, think about, there has to be like a reason and a thought behind the visual that's being used every time, and that takes longer than the amount of time it takes to like, you know, for you to see the visual play out. Yeah. So like, if, if you decide like, oh, well, we need a shot of Scott with this reaction, there had to be like a thought process behind uh, putting it there. It's not just flippant. Um, 
That's not the right word. Flippant. Possibly, not, I think so. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's it's not it's not arbitrary. Is the point? Yeah. Isn't that what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, about this, about everybody being so fine with this. Man, I've never been more in Scott's corner than right now. His family have been replaced so by like, scrolls or something. So that that's probably a good example, right? This is pretty easy. Like, oh, they've been replaced by scrolls. Like, okay, cool, so scrolls. But then that first part is like, hmm, do I want like a sort of dejected, like kind of uh, expression? What what is a what kind of expression? Where, where would I? Where can I think that that would exist? Like in a Marvel movie. Or in anything, and then just go and then you know find it, and put it in there. Yeah, because this is like curious. You've got layer one, which is scroll. Layer two, arguably, which is most recognizable because Secret Invasion came out well into the production of this uh, video. So that yeah. you know, this is like one of the bigger visuals. Obviously, Ben Mendelsohn's scroll, which is more so uh, recognizable for a lot of people. And then, of course, yeah, he looks he looks curious, which, which is uh, uh, applicable. The question, have they been replaced by scrolls? Now, see. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's not something that is necessarily going to get noticed. No, but, but I think uh, it's, it's yeah. recognized. I or or maybe it's more so that it's like, it makes sense. The visual makes sense, even if, you know, like, w without having to think about all of the different layers for why that's the case. And I think that's like kind of the, because, I mean, it, you, usually the reactions go by pretty quickly. So it needs to be something that instantly sinks in of like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I see it. Yep, that, that gives me the emotion that I need for uh, this line. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the intention, is that we want you to grasp what the narrator is trying to get across that's not necessarily explicit. Your life. At least I'm still trying to do something with mine. What? What the fuck? He literally saved that's the, the first, world. That's uh, the proper one. 17 and a half minutes. It's not that yeah. reserved, considering <laughs> it's a six hour video, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't. <laughs> it's yeah. too much. Literally saved the world. Yeah, see? He saved the world. What do you mean he's not yeah, doing like that anything with his a life? Yeah, like that one took like, hmm, yeah, see, hmm. Yeah, that was a tough one. The, uh, <laughs> I found, I don't know if this was the intention, but the save the world, whenever that brings up, we, we show him punching the, um, the big jump. space whale. I think it's the best visual to but represent also, it. It gets a little funny to me because it's like it it, it 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 becomes absurd, right? Like save the world, save the world. I remember there was a yeah. comment saying, "Um, you're under understating it by saying he saved the world. He saved half the universe." And it's like, no, no, save the world does not reference Earth. It's it's the world from yeah. your point of view is just everything. Instance. Um, um, I know that well, definitions can be back and forth, but colloquially, the world can often mean universe. It's interesting that you bring that up because that wasn't the plan. It was just uh, like I used that first because that was that just seemed like the best visual. It's giant man punching a massive thing in yeah. the middle of the final battle. It's the clearest, easiest way to convey what he did because there's other scenes of him doing Ant Man stuff, but they're just not then they're, they're not as impactful. And then yeah, it's just how many times it keeps getting referenced. Then you realize, oh, I guess this has turned into like a running gag, sort of just mm -hmm. naturally wasn't planned. Did you? But yeah, you never mentioned that before. Everybody's got to save the world. Jeez, old man Mike is doing some <laughs> rambling. That's Thanks actually style at the time. A little bit of interest in terms of how I sometimes edit in the these. World. What do you um, mean he's not if doing you look anything? At, you can notice it when you point it with out. His life. But did you? You see, what, look at Michael at the end of this. Before. Everybody's got to save the world. Yeah, I, I noticed this. You so, uh, extended it because. Save the um, world extends into the next cut. Yeah, what happens with the audio clips, and this is om this is like fucking eighty percent of them, unfortunately. But this is typically how you edit a movie, so I'm not like ripping on them for that. But the end of my sentence as a character is usually like you hear the end of it at the start of the new shot of the next character who's going to talk. It flows yeah. oftentimes a lot better. Unfortunately, if I want to show that clip and end it when he's finished talking, it means that I have about two frames of some other character at the end of it that just goes blip blip. And so that's a flash frame now, which is really annoying. So you have a couple of options. One, you can clip off the end and extend the video so that he's in slow, like slight slow mode to the point you probably wouldn't even notice. Or you can go the way of uh, clip off the last two seconds, grab the previous two seconds of that and reverse them at the end so that he... Which, by the way, they do in film, <laughs> like to try and cover up yeah. some things they fuck up, um, and you know you do different ones to try and uh, cover this to, to hide it so that people don't feel as though it's uh, as fuckery. But one of the best ways to avoid copyright while also doing it is like if a character has a fucking you know ten second speech, but you want to keep the first three and last three, 
you chop out that middle section and then you just grab in that scene a reaction shot from some other character from some other part where they're not talking and put it in the middle two seconds so that it plays and you can blend it and it, and it looks a lot better. There'll be an example of that several times in this video, but those can take ages to get right. Well, yeah, because it's you're trying to avoid um, flash frames, which, I mean, because that, the thing is, that that even comes down to, like, when it comes to the visuals that you have, making sure that, like, they're, I don't know if I'd say coherent, but just that they don't, like, seem choppy or bizarre or strange can even come down to when I'm playing a visual while Maul is talking, I don't want the visual to end with somebody blinking. Like, I don't want it to end on them blinking. I don't want it to have like four or five frames of the next shot yeah. um and that's and just being conscious of those things because it makes for a smoother viewing experience and you want it to slide right into you know from audio in and out uh, you try and fade the clips so that they can almost yeah. overrun each other but the idea is to create in the sense of the audience there's no awkward breaks there's no the train is just running it's going it's going it's going there's, there's no sense of like make sure they heard that now we can begin the next thing like um is, uh, this is just a I, matter of timing i would argue i learned from nostalgia critic uh we saw it when we cover him a lot but he has a lot of gaps for laughs i hate them because it no I, they're it, terrible uh this is so awkward um, think, but sometimes uh, they're not even for laughs i think he just keeps them in from being inspired by some shows he would have watched whatever because he'll a lot of his videos will open be like you know i'm the nostalgia critic and this is my review of anastasia and then there'll be a two-second gap, and then music will start, and it'll cut into, like, a thing of Anastasia while he's talking about it. And it's just like, why is that gap there? It's so awkward to me. I always feel like you got to err on the side of, like, as few gaps as possible. Just keep the train moving. Yeah, because if keep the joke going. doesn't land, whatever, or on the next it's thing already, really it's fine. Exactly. Um, but if you have the gap, then it's just like, what was that gap for? <laughs> um. Oh, and I guess now it's something that's on my mind thinking about, like, all of these sort of editing things. Something you'll notice in terms of the way that the visuals are cut is that... You never have, like, if we, if we have a, uh, I guess, a, a shot that is being used, um, usually I try to sync the cuts up with either the end of a sentence or, like, kind of a good-sounding syllable break of some kind. Um, it just seems to, like, have a better flow and rhythm to it than if you just have, like... So, like, for instance, I don't know, if the sentence was... So that's pretty, uh, oh, no, I can't even think of an example. Um, it would just be that you don't have like a shot run on into the next sentence. A sentence will yeah. always mark the end and then the, the new visual because it just, it's, it's like you want to try and couple the visual with what's being said right now. And I think the easiest way to do that is to begin and end your clips on sentence breaks. And if the sentence is too long, then to try to synchronize those breaks with just, just like a, a good, <laughs> it's, I, well, to, I, to, I, I, I think to help you out, like if you said uh, Secret Invasion Episode 1 introduces Amelia Clark as a brand new character and then she died, you'd be like, yeah. do I cut to the scene where she dies on and or she or died? And I add, and I think you could already think of it from what I'm saying it, but you probably add the gunshot. It sounds perfect, right? But exactly. Be, and then yeah. she pff, like died and, and you hard cut to the next thing because that just seems to me the most comedically. Uh, juicy, but you can try all of them, watch all of them, and be like, I think the funniest is probably cutting in when she died. Like, it, it, it almost doesn't see it coming, and that's what makes it good. But yeah, um, the... and that's the thing—you got to figure that out. Like, that's not something yeah. that I think. It, I think it can seem it can seem obvious, and it can seem like it makes a lot of sense when you view it. But when you're making it, you need to be making these choices about what exactly is going to be the best outcome. And sometimes that can take a while to figure out exactly how it plays the best or like just the right kind of visual and just the right cut that can just take some time yeah and sometimes you'll put it in and then look at it on a proof and be like that's still okay look at it on the third proof and be like nah it's not working <laughs> and be like yeah, really it be it's like yeah that. nah what's a bit different yeah that that happens um i think i think it's good to have an attitude i wouldn't say that it's necessarily about being a perfectionist but it's good to have an attitude of if you feel like you can make it better even if even if it's going to take a while, that that extra effort ultimately it, it like builds up, it accumulates, it kind of snowballs. If you take the attitude of always thinking, "Hmm, can this be made better?" Uh, and then taking those opportunities more often than you go, "Nah, this is this is good enough." Well, uh, uh, then it ultimately sort of accumulates. Really difficult things is spending a while in an edit and only concluding it has to go. Like it's just not funny or it doesn't work. Like, oh, if you work yeah. really hard on it, that is like. 
either fix yeah, it or get rid of it. You gotta be comfortable with that. You gotta yeah. be comfortable with. Uh, this with, is why it happens on like further proofs for me is because I feel more disconnected from the work that it took to make it, and so I can more easily cut it. <laughs> the funny thing is, I feel like uh, work, like doing doing the editing for this one. It felt like it was it was I could be more, I guess, uh, um, a, <laughs> more like. Uh, I, th I think it was, I was, Endgame was tough. Uh, that one was hard for me to, like, look at in any way that could be approaching from, like, an outside perspective. All I could see was, like, yeah, that wasn't good enough. Oh, damn, yeah, I could have made that better. Like, it was, that was a hard one to make, which is funny. And compared to this, because it was, like, your audio and your uh, commentary, I found it, like, a smoother process in terms of being able to make a lot of these choices. Which is yeah. interesting. Because uh, really, like, the, the approach is, hmm... How would what would you use here? Like what 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 do I think would be like a what do I think is the choice that Mola would make for like this visual? Because it's kind of trying to present it as essentially like it's it's like your video, right? That it yes, should but... feel like it's congruent with all of the other ones. But I mean, invariably, there's going to be Simpsons references. Well, it's the most varied <laughs> of visuals I think that any of my videos have been, and it's just because you get to like it's our jobs are very specifically different now. Uh, Mine's like over overhauling the whole thing and building up foundations, while yours is very strictly almost the visuals only, and so you can get to explore a lot harder from like a visual library almost. Um, uh, well, yeah, because I mean, the, the interesting thing is there'll be references in here that you aren't familiar with. Yeah, I'm not sure that there are many, but there'll be some things that you wouldn't have seen or things that you wouldn't have thought about. Because something that you guys might have noticed is there's a lot more animation related uh, mm -hmm. reactions and, and visuals and references in here. Old man Michael doing some rambling. Is this jealousy or something? Are you annoyed that while you would- You're a lot more- my familiarity with South Park isn't good enough to have visual references a lot outside of the best known stuff, but my Simpsons is pretty up to snuff. Dust, everyone was saving the world? How is that We please, really Scott? care that I, much about uh, the visuals. I would prefer faster video production. Um... Yeah, too bad. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know uh, how else to like, respond to that, then, like, like this is what I want to make, so... Uh, I care about it. Uh, you can say it in as many weird and sarcastic ways you want. Scott was prompted to let people know he saved the- I mean, if you- it's kind of funny to think about, right? It's like, if you wanted quicker, less visually uh, focused breakdowns of media from me, or Fringy, or Rags, maybe there's a second channel where we do that regularly. Maybe. Uh, when it comes to our mainline videos, though, the, the, we all have preferences for the, the artistic side of it. But um, don't I'm, worry. I mean, yeah, sorry. It's just, it's, it's better this way. It's just, it looks I, better. It's funny because the true thing they want is somewhere in between. They don't want the, 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 the videos to be this sort of perfected, but they also don't want it to be as uh, visual less as EFAP can be. So it's just like, well. At that point, you just want it a particular way. That's that's Which, great, that's but fine. you know we want a particular way, and yeah. the way is a better thing at the end. It's just better. It is better at the end with all of uh, like the attempts to have varied visuals. The world by this sack of ungrateful flesh telling him he's doing nothing. I mean, this is all getting a bit weird, guys. You're angry at him for what? Saving the world? At least Janet isn't making fun of. You should write a book about it. Ja uh, uh, what is this? Yes, the man did indeed save trillions of lives by facilitating every last move that led to the undoing of the snap. If you didn't know, Janet, the man uh, who that's saved the beginning trillions. Of a running gag that I didn't realize was going to happen. Yeah, because I don't. I didn't give you much of any actual uh, restrictions and it's, there's good reason for that in terms of like it'll all come through me anyway so I, I kind of like seeing where you were you know what ideas you have or what interpretations you have of different lines and if for example there was like I think a grand total of about four or five times where I said something you put a visual there I was like oh I wasn't talking about that I was talking about this and I can just correct it but there are some things where I'm like oh that's an interesting you know visual for that I would have gone with something a lot more mundane or, or um, pragmatic, so to speak. And so uh, instead of giving you a laundry list of like, this means this, this means this, it's just like, go nuts, do whatever you want. And, yeah, uh, I think uh, as the process went on, I basically started getting more and more, I guess you could say, liberal with uh, the approach. Mm -hmm. It was more and more just like, okay, I'll just do this. And, you know, if it's, if it's funny, if it works, then it will make it in. And if not, then you'll just make a change to make it more in line with the style. But that life. one was, uh, I didn't know that it was going to be... 
I, I like it just it was a funny reaction the zoom and then it just kept happening yeah with the very like derisive scornful janet and then that became like a running gag in the video i mean you know it's once you it keeps stacking up uh her failure yeah. it just keeps getting worse and worse it's including your own can hold it over you till the end of time <laughs> a beautiful simpsons reference and <laughs> take a hike Scott. boss i'm in charge now all Doesn't hail because... king homer <laughs> Uh, it's not laugh. his character. Uh, However, he uh, is uh, capable of pointing out you'd all be dead if not for him, so maybe you can chill out on the bizarre bitterness. You're welcome for all not being dust. And what do you do now? That reaction there from Scott, I didn't focus on it, but it comes across to me as so like, man, I'm getting so tired right now. Like, this is insane. Getting beat down. Yeah, the, but, but he puts up with it because he's Scott Lang. Yeah. At least partially in this movie. Sign books. Bloody hell, she is one sour, bratty brick. Scott is currently touring with an- It's a great reaction, because the face covers it, but that scene is also about another sour, bratty brick. Yeah, that's right. That, was, uh, that felt perfect. Sometimes you're just like, ah, yep, there it is. There is no better choice yeah. for a visual. A lot of the- uh, whereas plenty of them, they'll be like, that was one of many decent choices book. He's doing readings for kids, adolescents, and adults alike, telling them that they can achieve what he did if they just take a chance, that no one is too small. On top of that, his mission statement is you, to be there for you, to raise you, something you just ripped into him for minutes ago. And as if that's not enough, he made this explicit. Yeah, so the most reasonable explanation is she doesn't know about any of this, she didn't read the book, which is really sad. Yeah. Which is lame. It's, uh, that's, that's a payoff in and of itself, the fact that she would have read his book. But no, she didn't. She didn't care about it. Will I be there when the Avengers need me? Absolutely. I'd never turn my back on them. Oh, maybe this would be an example of, like, uh, the, the way that you need to cut visuals. You don't want to have... I don't want to have, like, a close-up of Scott and then a cut to another scene that's a close-up of Scott. It's just kind of weird, yeah. visually. It's like, you want to... So the, the easiest way to explain it is if he, if it's if it's about the same framing, if he's taken up about as much space in the frame, uh, like you don't want to use that one and then cut to a new one because it just looks jarring. You'd rather it's it's better to have like a wide shot and then cut back to it, and it's kind of just being conscious of like the clips that you're using in that section and rearranging them to make it flow in a way that feels natural and not clunky. Yeah, varied. Um, a lot of the redrafting picks up stuff like that. Like, yeah. wait a minute, that feels a little stunted. If they need him, he will answer the call. So, fuck all of you idiots. <laughs> what happened out, to that sweet, Jack. caring girl in the first two movies? The one who saw her father for who he was. Yeah, they flipped it now. She's the only one who doesn't see her father. And for yeah. no real reason at all. Despite his situation. You know, the one who managed to understand reality better than you, despite being six. Are you trying to find my daddy? Yeah, I'm sweetheart. Hope you don't catch him. I had a surprisingly large amount of comments, even from um, like just random sort of friends about this video, that they were like, those clips of Ant-Man? Man. Yeah. Ant-Man seems pretty good. It's like, it actually is pretty kind of good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a decent movie. It's a solid movie. I think it's part of it is if you watch it now, it'll surprise you because of how much like better it is than Phase 4 and 5. It's, uh... Like, it's it's a normal movie. It, yeah. it hits standard beats and does them well. Um, and yeah, her and Scott are like the heart of the movie. Uh, so that's why it's especially fucking annoying if you rewatch it and then watch Quantumania. At this point, I'd say she needs Pym Tech to shrink her ego. People oh. still help that. I, uh, I thought about using the visual uh, from Community with uh, the, the, the apple in his apple head. Yeah. The ego, yeah. Problem with that, it was... I think it was at the acquiring of the visual, but also it's it it can be a little bit confusing if someone doesn't know the context. Yeah, whereas I figured just using the shrink tech from Ant Man to shrink something was an easier, simpler way to get that across. Yeah. Trying to do something that matters. Jesus Christ! You're the <laughs> unskippable cutscene. Yeah, of so that that's a that's a that visual synced up really well. Really well, and uh, that I think from judging from comments, that was everyone's favorite insult. That was one of the highest rated. The unskippable <laughs> cutscene of people. Yeah, <laughs> Rags really liked that when we proved it. <laughs> Portion with him. Creative. 
It is. Uh, it's fun. You are also incredibly wrong. Of course, Scott knows people still need help. He went to jail helping people several times. He lost time with you by trying to help people, and he's helping people right now. Did I miss a whole ass movie where Scott went on an arc involving his failure to give a shit about people? When did this happen? And wait a sec, what do you mean we? Who's we? What are you three? I always like to, um, in the script, try and sync back up with the movie, because, uh, I could just end my point and then play the clip, or I can try and interrupt myself with a thought and then the movie carries on that thought, because I do it a couple times with, like, whatever Scott's saying, or, um, I think I did it in the car, right, where it says, uh, you have a, wait, she has a suit? You have a suit? Like, it, it, I think it makes it more dynamic. Be up to. And science. Let's just show him. Well, uh, sure, but we have a whole family issue here to deal with. A family issue? Nope, no more character nope, anymore. That done. may yeah. even be made worse by whatever it is you're about to do. Which is crazy, a lot of movies, uh, maybe don't know this, but you can just, you can just do character the whole time. You can just keep it up. All time, yep. all, all through scenes, you can just keep doing character. Veal. So just, wait, wait, can you stop, stop, wait, wait. What are they building? Are you doing this? Actually, no. They built their own tech. What? Okay, stop, stop now. <laughs> 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 and uh, also, I don't highlight it, but that's pretty obviously ADR, both of them. All of that shit was not in their original version, yeah. because that means that they didn't feel the need to set up the ants, that they just saw them go into the quantum realm, and then they turned up later. But now they, they, they injected that to make sure it's like, they, these are the... Uh, you heard uh, Jeff Loves us talk about it, he's like, that's, that's uh, Chekhov's ants. <laughs> yeah, which uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned on uh, our stream covering it. I didn't know it was something he fucking said, I was joking. Yeah, it's, it, it is mean. a joke. It's it's stupid, and and if he doesn't know why, it would be like, well, because that's not how good writing works. You don't just get if a, if a time traveling dinosaur crossed with Jesus saved us at the end of our script. I don't. It doesn't become good if I mention that at the beginning. It doesn't really T Rex Jesus. That's a thing, by the way. There you go. I set it up. That's not at all. Now, we need to go over what's just happened. This is insane. You've all based <laughs> another Simpsons. This is a classic. Yeah. We get a lot out of that scene. <laughs> I uh, think. Yeah, we, I think we got four or five references just from that scene. The the Modoc one. Uh, I, I can talk about them. Yeah. That's, that's, in case we don't get to it for whatever reason, um, the way that I, I said this was split was I did all of the audio, obviously, writing, recording, and cutting into a, a big timeline. Fringy did... I believe four hours of uh, visuals. It was something like that. Um, basically, what what I know for sure, what, well, what I remember for sure is that from here until the end of the coverage of the film from beginning to end, uh, I handled that alone. And then after that, it starts to get mixed up a bit more. Yeah, some it, smaller, some Goga, I some think me. Uh, Goga's part begins with when I start talking about plot summary in the second half. Yeah, and his so part ends uh, with the end of Hank. Or no, the beginning of Hank, because uh, you no, start yeah, on Hank. The beginning of Hank, because I did Hank, yeah. And then your part then ends at Jan? Cassie? Uh, I end think of I, Cassie. Yeah, I think I had the Cassie portion. And then there was another part that I did as well. Um, and then I do uh, from Cassie to the end, which it equals out. I think Goga had about 40 minutes. I had about two hours and 10 or 20, and then of course I I saw everyone's parts in to chop them all and process them all, and then proof, proof, proof. Yeah. Um, but the other person that needs a mention for the credit is that a lot of the bigger, more complicated MODOK memes, they all go to Das Bullshit. I asked yes. him as a favor for those, and he fucking knocked it out of the park. They were glorious. I think my favorite one was the, uh, it was, it was, uh, Mike. <laughs> we, we had, had a, a good, good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> It was perfect, so it was, it was fun to discover those yes. <laughs> when I was editing. They were, to see all uh, of, of what I was showing people when this was being made, I showed them some of that, but they would get the biggest laughs, the uh, Bodoc edits. That was really funny. Basically, let Scott know that you think he's doing a poor job with his potential. That he is narcissistic, and you are seemingly ashamed of him, while also screwing around behind his back and feeding his daughter all kinds of dangerous tech that's landing her in jail. A lot of this was brought up, but we're now moving on because Hank has just revealed his fucking ants are sophisticated enough to build elevators and electrical light- Someone pointed out, I didn't even think of it, it's like, why would an ant colony build an elevator? That Why would they build an elevator? First they of all, they there. can just walk up walls, but also they're known for the incredible ability to carry. Well, it's just ants, like, that. 
I mean, look at all of the vertical paths in there. Yeah, look it, at it's, them. but there's just an elevator there. And it's like, why? Because that's technology. Because they're pretty smart ants. Yeah, that's the only reason it's there. It's so <laughs> shit. It's so staggeringly shit. Sources on their own, presumably utilizing metal. What in the holy fuck is this, my dude? Do we need to get the world? <laughs> Gotta appreciate the that. The, uh, <laughs> as, as though the, the milk monster is looking at Luke like, what are you doing, my dude? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> bit weird. He's Double judging in silence. Yes. Involved? Have we made contact with the ants of Earth? Do we need a human ant ambassador? Should we be treating this like the breakthrough it clearly is? Does anyone? Yeah, it's just it's so insane to have developed with a, a species in your basement so hard that they now, like, a building their own technology. They've got an understanding of tools that goes beyond any other animal outside of humans now. Like, it's yeah. this is something that we need to let everyone know about. Anyone here mm -hmm. care? What does Hank have to say about this? Pretty smart ants. Pretty smart. Pretty smart ants. What the fuck is going this, on? This Pretty part took a while. Yeah, uh, lots of solid reactions, and, I, and we this came up in our EFAP stream about it. The pretty smart anything. It just it's just, it's just recur recurring because it's like what pathetic writing is that? Pretty smart. Yeah, you sucks. could say that, I suppose. Pretty sapient ants. Pretty enslaved by Hank Pym after being gifted with greater intelligence. Ants. What the? Fuck? Well, you were all. Yeah, I think that's a really great combo of the script and the visuals there. Just, it's, yeah. makes the point very clearly, and we even have a reference to a film that most people may have momentarily forgotten and then been like, oh, that's shit, right. yeah. Yeah, they are pretty smart ants. Like, gone those five years. I started reading Grandpa Hank's old journals, and I got really into the quantum realm. And Bullshit. Not only would those things be <laughs> locked the fuck up and written in goddamn code, you had no understanding of the ant tech. You had no intro to it at all. Cassie had a life. The only way oh, to have yeah, meaningfully so that, introduced yeah, her to PimTech. I, I was really happy with that one. Which one, sorry? Syncs up with, uh, it syncs up with Hank clicking to, uh, yeah. like, explaining Cassie's backstory. Heck, giving her a chance to learn anything about it is with all of these fuckers being alive and passionately invested in getting her up to speed. At the same time, considering what's about to happen, she would have needed a bloody university course in quantum- <laughs> Look at that expression, it's great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Mechanics. No way you can convince me she got into quantum fucking physics through notes she found after being passionate about it when she was eight. This, oh, what a glorious <laughs> fucking <laughs> reference, man. I'm, I, unfortunately, I can't remember if this was something I got from memory or if it was something I caught by chance. Because it's perfect. It feels like it was built to make fun of this. May I ask why you felt little Tiffany deserved to die? She's about eight years old. Those books are way too advanced for her. If you ask me, I say she's up to something. Fucking too right. It is absurd that an eight-year-old would get into <laughs> quantum physics. That's not yeah, a thing. Yeah, it's something that's worth emphasizing. The idea of, I got, you know, I started reading Hank's, like, journals. If you presented me with his journals, what can I do with that? If I don't have, like, a foundation in physics. I did physics at school, and, like, if you just gave me his journals, I can't do anything with that. Like, it's worthless to me. And then you tell me that, like, yeah, like, a 10-year-old girl just gets these notes on the most sophisticated, most advanced of quantum mechanics and just picks it up and then builds a Hubble telescope in her basement. A Hubble telescope that was built by a team, like, hundreds and hundreds of the most intelligent people in the world. And she just built it in her basement. Like, yeah, okay, cool. Someone said Jay Longbone reminded you in a stream, so credit to her, if that's true. I, I genuinely can't remember, unfortunately, but it's such a brilliant reference. Oh, and, yeah, uh, the, uh, of the visual, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, of course, you're right, and if you re reverse engineer it, the reason why it was written that way is because they can't think of any other way to justify why she's doing quantum shit. There isn't one. As much there, as she's, there really isn't. she's Scott's kid, but there's no reference in the first two movies to her having any interest in fucking quantum physics, guys. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Not even Scott really has an understanding of quantum no, physics. No, Scott doesn't. He's not a quantum physics guy. He's, like that's what that's what Hope and uh and Hank are for. They're the they're the experts in all the quantum stuff. Mainly Hank. Hope, yes, uh, definitely more oh, so uh, than Hope, Hope has a, definitely got more familiarity yeah. than Scott. But uh, because Scott's thing is uh, electrical engineer, right? And he had yeah he's relative insight into the construction of the suit, which gave him a chance to manipulate the um the mm -hmm. uh I forget the name of it the the thing the that prevents you from going too small. Though for anybody who's unconvinced, just give it a sec. I got really into the quantum realm and- Quantum realm? 
I know we all have a history there. At least now Scott is realizing that Hank has been behind all of this. And don't get me wrong, it makes no sense for Hank to do any of it, but at least Scott can finally do something about it. The, that, that little look makes you think, oh, is he finally gonna chew Hank out? I'm only gonna do something about this, but no. It. She has some questions, okay? I can't help if people are inspired by me. Mm. I guess that could be considered a callback to when Scott delivered this clunker of a line. Just saved eight bucks. God, I admire you. Thank you. Except there is a difference between inspiration <laughs> and admiration, Another and inspiring his yeah. daughter is fucking far from the issue. I'm looking forward to the part where Scott rips into Hank for all this bullshit. I mean, he's barely her grandpa. He's barely been in her life at all. Hank didn't even get to properly that, meet her in the first film. Yeah, he spends his it, time it seriously is something that they glossed over. They, they just have no relationship at all. They don't nope. know each other. Hank is aware Anything, of Cassie, and, but he never spoke to her properly. No, uh, he never spoke to her in the first two films, so you have to assume that all of that occurred off screen. Which, sure, it could have, but like, you're, you're asking people to accept that this like new dynamic exists that they've never seen before, and it's a strange dynamic. Yeah. In the sequel on the run, thanks to Civil War's events, and then he's snapped. He didn't have a relationship with her, and now he's apparently hyper-interested as she's been reading his work since the snap. Makes it even harder to believe she had any access or interest in Hank's notes specifically. The man is pretty protective. As long as I am alive, <laughs> it's, Oh god, it's just... Formula. And then it's, someone would be like, yeah, but that was 1986, shut up. Well, it's just funny, this is how characterization used to work. There's like a core, and this, yeah. without any, <laughs> there's no understanding this muddled here. It's like, Hank protects Pym Tech. Very straightforward. Yep. But sure, with that, Cassie is now a quantum expert. Don't believe me? Just you wait. So you've been studying the quantum realm. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you ask me about it? There is so much <laughs> one could say about this war crime of a plot point, and uh. my god, I will give up the hours to do it. I tried, Mom. A lot. You never wanted to talk about it. Janet was obvious. And the uh, uh, Shady Durag just recommended as well, an alternate thing you could have played with is that Cassie hates Hank. You could have it be that, like, he's the reason that all this shit happened, that, like, the dad would have been with her the whole time, if not for fucking around in the quantum realm. She could have been like, why weren't you guys doing it? Why do you make Scott do it all the time? Imagine she found out that Scott was only in the ant suit because Hank considered him expendable. Yeah. Yeah. All drama you can use if you want, but no, they don't use any of it. ...and thoroughly pro-quantum stuff at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's precisely where she became more prominent as a character, talking about many of the areas that exist there and the dangers within, as well as facilities... she's quite, she's quite funny about it. She's having, she's having a laugh, you know, it's all chill. It's like, you just want to be on the set, right? When they're filming that scene and be like, what about Modoc? And they're like, what? <laughs> like, what about, what about if she gets sucked in? What are we going to do then? It's like, uh... I don't know what you're talking about. You're like, yeah, you will one day. Taking the energy and tech needed to save Ghost. Remember Ghost? Remember Goliath? Well, the writers don't, and to be honest, you don't either. In any case, what is this weird new aspect of Janet's character where she- I don't remember if it was Az or Gary said when they were watching this that they thought it was funny they synced up with basically saying to the video, like, I do not remember them, but then I say, yeah. like, you don't remember them. It's like, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody does doesn't want to talk about the quantum realm at all. Seems like earlier was an example of her not wanting to talk specifically about what she did there, but that she's on board with working on it, or with it, studying it, etc. So, Hope is being a rascally rabbit here. She's not making much sense. And when a character isn't making much sense, you'll find the plot might be pushing them in a particular direction. It would be like if someone didn't want to talk about the trauma related to a series of droids killing their parents. And so then, you decide to create a fucking butler droid in their basement without telling them since they are being evasive about the subject of droids. Not only does that make no sense, it's just an asshole thing to do. Mando was shit, by the way. Not sure- Some great visuals to, to capitalize on how shit it is. The jetpack hammerer and the yeah. regurgitation and a Mando pops out. That's just a perfect visual, like, come on. <laughs> 
Careful how you thought those things were the same there, Hope. Your dialogue hasn't been stellar so far. In any case, it's kinda weird that Janet hasn't talked about meeting Kang in the Quantum Realm either. But maybe it was a mostly uneventful thing that happened. Maybe she has nothing to say about it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Cassie's just been curious and we, we gave her some pointers. Okay, so what did Cassie do with some notes and pointers then? What did she make? It's like a satellite for deep space or the ocean. But... Quanta. You fucking what, mate? A satellite for the ocean <laughs> or deep nice. space, but for the quantum realm. How in the... What the... You did this? Your daughter built a subatomic... I saw a comment, by the way, because I had mentioned, of course, we haven't mapped out all of the ocean yet. Someone commented no. saying, um, yes, we have. We know where all of the oceans are. Uh... <laughs> I was like... What the thanks, fuck? bro. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> We haven't mapped out the ocean floor. I think we barely mapped it out, right? It's only like 15, 20 percent. Yeah, it's something ridiculously low, but I read that I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, like, yes, we on. know like, we know where the water is. That's true. I love the idea that like you could just keep sailing. It's like, oh my god, I've discovered a new sea. <laughs> like, come on. No, no, again, it is worth it. I, I kinda hate this line. The idea like it, it annoys me because I feel like this stuff. I feel like this stuff contributes to a lack of appreciation for, like, real science. Oh, yeah, she built, like, a Hubble telescope in her basement. Yeah, cool. Uh, awesome, yeah. It's not like that took hundreds of people. Like, I, I think, didn't the Hubble telescope, it cost, like, a few billion dollars, didn't it? Well, and they have took, infinite like, money, infinite resources, not... infinite tech. She probably had loads of prototypes that went wrong yeah. and just got bitched. And who cares? Yeah, how, how much did the Hubble telescope cost? Uh, the Hubble telescope cost... No, where's the cost? Where is it? Damn it. Um. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Uh, I I just I need to know, or maybe someone in chat knows how much it costs. I would have thought it'd be pretty easily Googleable. Is it you looking through results? I, I was on Wikipedia. Yeah. Hold on. Hubble telescope cost. Uh. Apparently, the Hubble telescope uh costs. $2 billion, but the total running of the Hubble telescope was $10 billion. Well, I'm sure they have that <laughs> pretty casually in the... Uh... Oh, apparently uh, it was adjusted for inflation and stuff. It's like $5.8 billion. And yeah, so yeah, the, the point is, it costs billions of dollars, and it took hundreds of people, hundreds of the smartest people in the world working for years on it. Uh, she built it in her basement with, like, I guess, whatever stuff Hank just sort of had laying around. And well, I bet they wish they had Cassie when they were working on the Hubble telescope. And remember, remember, the Hubble telescope didn't map the entire universe. It, it <laughs> specifically was used to examine portions of the, of the universe. She built something that apparently can map out the ent entire quantum realm, which presumably the entire quantum realm is, like, infinitely bigger than the entire universe, which itself is already like, massive on a scale that's difficult to put into words. Yes. Because remember, she says, we can map the entire quantum realm. It's like, oh, the entire... You couldn't just write the line of, we can map some of it. <laughs> we, can we can map a portion of it. It's the thing, though, it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't even make sense. We, we can't we can't map that which cannot be operated via a map. Like, there's no mapping of yeah, the quantum what, realm. What does, it mean to, what does it mean to generate a map of the quantum realm? What does it mean to generate a map of a place that like potentially d d radically completely and utterly defies any and all uh of our understanding certainly, of the way that yeah the certainly human exists, understanding beyond. like we cannot perceive it in a logically consistent way so how do we make a, a human-made map but of that's it? the problem is that their imagination is way too limited the quantum realm is essentially a place that can be comprehensible to a human being well it's, the, it's got cities and towns and stuff that particular and, like, world within a world within a world maybe but I guess so, but, well, because we've seen other parts of the quantum realm that are incomprehensible. Yeah. More or less, like the place that Scott got trapped in. The void, in. yeah. Yeah, and the void. The subatomica. <laughs> Why did they say that? <laughs> Telescope in a basement. Silence, old man. You're making this much worse. <laughs> I had Another like one. This when you were gone, then yeah. I could have found you. What?
You didn't even know <laughs> what happened to him. For the five years he There's was gone, you references. and everyone else figured that he got blipped. So how would that have encouraged you to pursue a device that could have found him in the quantum realm? Unless, of course, you are making all of this up, forgetting your own timeline, and starting to realize she could only have been working on this world-changing technology recently. Nice try, I guess. Though I appreciate showing that Cassie does give a shit about her dad. Remnants of that are better than nothing. Anyway, yes, Cassie the teenager created a subatomic Hubble telescope. We just need a yeah, map. it's a deep, and deep lore reference there. The entire... If you know, you know. Yeah. She can map out the quantum realm when we can't even fully map out the oceans. <laughs> How do you His map out a place James, that operates James on Cameron, several levels of reality? Pioneer. According to these guys, it doesn't even have a through line of space or time. But sure, yeah, like, go how do you ahead. map out the that? The teenager created tech that blows the minds of Hank Pym et al. <laughs> in a basement with a box of highly sensitive, highly complex, expensive Pym tech devices. Because fuck it, join the club, Cassie. There's plenty of company. Dead is the time of the people who work hard in their lives, backed by parents who've been in it since they were young, mentoring you and sending you to every top school imaginable only for you to make revolutionary it's the thing, you, you break it enough, and then I think the justification would be like, whatever, everyone else is making crazy shit. It's like, yeah, okay. It seems like that's where we're at now, because this is a crazy sci-fi world where, like, individuals can just create revolutionary tech with a box of scrap. This, <laughs> but it's um... like... I don't know, it feels like, because even with the, like, what he accomplished in that cave was remarkable, but it feels like the, the film recognizes, well, sure, but, like, it, it ain't, it ain't amazing compared to what he can build with, like, resources and time. It, it, it got the job done. It is very much a proto Iron Man suit, whereas, by comparison, the Ironheart, like, that suit is, like, that suit's crazy, the one that she built. It's, like, yeah. incredible. It, it might as well be, like, a regular Iron Man suit. Obviously, some time has passed, but still, it doesn't come across as something that was, you know, like, essentially cobbled together with whatever you had. Um, I, I don't know, it feels like it makes a, it makes a clear distinction, right? The Mark I is this clunky, barely operable, pretty, pretty impressive considering the context it was made in, but definitely, like, not the best thing it could be uh, suit. And then that contrasts sharply with what he can make when he gets time and resources to make something. Yeah, and the, it also uh, helps that he's incredibly wealthy, so the of justification course he can have access to all this. is the power source, and the power source is justified because it's work that he he was familiar with the arc reactor stuff before, it just, it was scuttled, right? It wasn't, it didn't work out the way they yeah, wanted exactly. to. They, they yep. put all the setups in there for why this happened, it's, it's a long history for why. Back in your 40s. No, fuck that. Just be you. You send a signal down from here, and then it collects the data and it sends it back. I don't see why Hank couldn't have come up with that. Yeah, the way she explains it is like the simplest thing ever. You send signal down, yeah. and the signal comes back up. It's like, okay. It's because you didn't know how to write anything more no. interesting. <laughs> but hey, you don't that's, know. That's what we're trying to highlight here. It's just like, this sounds like something anybody with familiarity could have done. But of course, Hank is still struggling with the fact that he doesn't recognize the quantum realm at all. Quantum physics. Uh, yeah. You'd have thought he'd talk about it with Janet a lot, but I guess she was like, no, and then How he was like, generate a map oh. for this? You know? Look at this. Destroy it. That's what fine. is it? <laughs> well, beyond my understanding, I'm just here for the characters. Wait a minute. You're sending a signal. See, in a, in a visual like that, you'd be like, is the only layer that he's watching something on TV? He's like, well, of course not. It's that he's... He's like fucking losing his mind. I think that's season three <laughs> of The Boys. He, he's I struggling. that. He's he's watching like the the Avengers equivalent of the Seven or whatever, and he hates it, right? Because it's all about <laughs> it's just all fake. And of that's course, a like versatile meme. When I say you know I'm watching the characters, that is how I feel because all of them get destroyed. Signal. Mm -hmm. Down to the quantum realm. Yes, Janet, that's what she's saying. And if you had any compunction <laughs> about this sort of thing taking place, it seems you should have raised that's the an alarm. The Street the Fighter they references, I think. Oh, they were working Cause on the well because I think there was one where uh, it was Ryu doing the like the uppercut thing. Um, because mm -hmm. I think you mentioned uppercut, and then of course, yes, I don't, I don't know, know about Street Fighter, yeah realm without your knowledge. I mean, it makes no sense regardless. You guys have been fucking around with and entering the quantum realm for some time, certainly after Janet had returned. So what's the problem? What's wrong? That's the you first of a few Shrek off, references. Yeah. Hmm. Well, whatever is happening here, it better slot in with everything else this story's <laughs> built on. You don't have the oh. mighty... Oh, such a was... good an A. It was perfect. Slots in and then destroys the foundation, yeah, which is what exactly. I was talking about. Yeah, so, yeah, it's you know not to toot my own horn, but it's a pretty multi-layered joke. 
Woiks. Waldronator this time. Yeah, that's definitely a case of me just not knowing to, what to do with the script. We have Jeff Loveness writing this masterpiece, so what's happening? You gotta you gotta delay the reveal of his famous quote, okay? Yeah. You can't just throw it in. <laughs> We've gotta see that's his work right. first. There's something yeah. I should have told you. Well, wait a minute, didn't she just disconnect it? How's it doing that with no First power? Big short references. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this is this is arguably a nitpick, but it's also just like a what is happening then? There's no power. There is no power. Well, it's when you when you expand and you, you realize what happened here, disconnected from power, a telescope gets turned into a shrinking portal device. Yeah. And someone be like, it's sci-fi. Be like, okay. <laughs> I don't understand why. It, it would be like if, I don't know, you were standing by the Hubble telescope pointing it at something and then you got teleported elsewhere through the Hubble telescope's technology. It just doesn't make any sense. It is devoid of sense. It is sans sense. Oh, we're, we're done with stuff, aren't we? <laughs> Look at this, this depressed Iceman. Look at him. <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> no resolving what Hank has done, nothing to make any of all of this make any more sense, and Cassie's gonna be right about Scott, isn't she? Well, anyway, wow, explosion of quantum, or something. <laughs> I think I got a couple of Esworld references in here. Okay, do, yeah. suit up and get out of there, folks. This looks dangerous. Don't, don't just, uh, don't, don't just, don't just stand there for fuck's sake. Ah, uh, the first of several Incredibles Lots of Incredibles, good idea, yeah. Okay, this is pretty bad, and before we can even really make sense of it from a story perspective, maybe you guys should pop your suits on. We know that Scott and Hope have them almost automated, and since they that act as so armor, bad. we should probably yep. have everyone with a chance to pop them on at any moment. Especially when Hank doesn't seem to give a shit anymore, and considering the bullshit in this universe haunting them around every corner. In any case, there is some neat stuff. Good choice of visuals, we have like a sci-fi space monsters, the fantasy soul-sucking dragon creature from yeah. beyond the dimension, and then... Yeah, it's just everything happens in this universe now. Yeah. For example... Now, I'm not talking about tossing Janet into a portal. I don't hate her that much. Yet. It's that she loses her grip, considering this thing is bending the bloody walls, and she's pulled in, only for Hank to try and reach for her, leading to him falling in as well. The guy was madly in love with her, and lost her for 30 years. We know at this point he'll do everything he can not to lose her, including sacrificing his own grip. I do appreciate that kind of storytelling. Action scenes are incredibly important for character. In fact... That's a little foreshadowing for one of the only things I like in Iron Man 3. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, I think it took a while, because I remember I was, I, I think I asked you, it's like, what do you think would be, like, the perfect visual, because I, I was, I was trying to think of, like, examples, and then you, you floated that one from Iron Man 3, and I remember my thought was, yeah, but, like, that film sucks, though, and then, and then it was like, yeah, but that's, it's a good reference, like, it's true, that is character, it's, it's one of the few good things in that film. It frustrates me to no end because of the potential for Iron Man storytelling, but the idea that you've got a suit that he can attach to people at his will and you know the whole building's coming down and he has to choose between himself and pepper and he chooses her it's just like that's really good shit it's in, it's instant character and in, in action and uh i even like the way it's shot in the film where it's like we slow it down they're both you know being blasted away and he he very very consciously gets it on her before she falls yep check this out <laughs> Oh, so Those bad. two are That's Hope's so parents. <laughs> She's lost one and almost both several times. She's got incredibly deep trauma related to the lack of time she's had with both of them. The only hesitation she See, gives... and this is the thing, it sucks. I don't even think people fucking remember any of that. Most people watching this no, movie I... won't even remember, like, how much... how much their relationship is so incredibly important to, like, show us. We get barely anything in this film, even though both of the actresses talked about how important it was as well. It's... <laughs> It's like a conflict is started as to what info. You remember because he talks about it, right? Like the, the secret, and we got we got to take it seriously. And it's like, okay, cancel that. What else is there between you two in this movie? Mm -hmm. You kept a secret from that's me. Here's the secret. All right, you told me good. Okay. That's it. Yep, and that's about halfway through the movie. Yeah, and there's nothing else before going after them is a look to Scott. Could be the last time she sees him, but she has to go. And if I'm being a bit generous, I'd say we're shown he understands that. Cassie then slips in, and of course, Scott is prompted to go after her. Oh, look 
after that, Scott deciding that he's going to risk himself to go and help someone when he didn't have to. Yeah. Oh my god. Crazy. Overall, not the worst 10 seconds of the movie. And Genuinely probably the best 10 seconds of the movie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very <laughs> likely. It's uh, obviously high stakes, and they get everybody to do the things they should do. In fact, it could end up being my favorite, and it's just about the easiest thing to portray in terms of choices. But hell, that's all I'm ever asking for. It's still a- I swear to God, if you just get, like, the big character choices correct, everything else can flow from it, and you can make a whole bunch of mistakes and people won't mind. Mm -hmm. just, just get them f***ing right. Annoying, however, that Cassie, Hank, and Janet apparently all don't have their protective suits, not even for the purposes of shrinking or growing, just for the insane armor and flight. <laughs> Like seriously, if he just got splatted, that was it. Just like, pfft, blood goes Magic. everywhere, it's like, yeah. he's dead. I'm like, oh, okay. You ever notice how every single time they enter these crazy nonsense tunnels, they somehow luckily manage to avoid the million forms of death flying right at them? It's also worth noting that the ant colony from earlier has entered the realm and smashed, leaving the ants to float away and zap forward. <laughs> Who knows what that will lead to. <laughs> Such a scuffed visual, but it's if you know, you know. Again, like, it's it leads to the worst bit of writing of the whole movie, so. Yep. Regardless, Hope manages to grab both Hank and Janet, and they reach a destination together. Which, to be honest, seems incredibly lucky, considering how chaotic everything is here. But whatever. We also get some acting from Cassie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I believe it. And that that crusty is just <laughs> just summarizes it's, uh, perfect. it. Which, uh, that that clip has to be extended. He is not like blank faced staring for quite as long as that clip needs to last. So I just extended it. Yes, but which is notice. funny because that clip actually gets played almost in full later as part of a different thing, and that part right. of it is cut out to you know perfect. reduce copyright. So perfect. There you go. You got it in full. <laughs> Good lord, man, that's gonna be hard on the back. Miraculously, nothing gets through the suit. Some of the interesting about those sounds is like, I will provide my timeline to Fringy, he'll add the visuals and send them back, and then, because I don't want, like, for every, le like, the, uh, for every render, obviously, with how bitrate works and everything, it just, it chews up the data more and more and more, so you want to limit them as much as possible, meaning, I render out the audio, give it to Fringy, I don't use the audio he's now rendered out back. I use my audio originally and put his visuals on them. But that means I miss out on some of the uh, the audio he's put in from some of these clips. And so in our like primary proofing, he has to just let me know which ones have it in them so I can restore them, so to speak. But it's uh, pretty seamless, but they actually, I, I uh, fade my original audio into his oh, rendered right. audio. And uh, I don't know, I think, it, I think it mostly gets gotten away with. Nobody notices anything. Just, uh, that was something that we had to, I had to keep in mind during the proofing process was, okay, I need to make sure that I'm remembering where did I insert a sudden sound effect. Because I like sudden sound effects. It, that, like, that was something that <laughs> ended up being a big part of the endgame video was just, sudden loud noise is really funny. It just is. Especially when you're not expecting it, and especially when it's not showing up all the time. It, it makes, it keeps people alert, it keeps them, you know... When you, because I, I think there's one here where it's uh, in Die Hard when he drops the dude through uh through the window. It's just a loud shatter sound to just be like, yeah, yeah you paying attention? Yeah, you're paying attention now, aren't you? <laughs> sure, but force does, right? Maybe not. Imagine like free fall doesn't do anything, but a punch and a kick gets through the suit. That would be funny. Though it's a bit odd. <laughs> Cassie did talk about the suit, but she didn't suit it's up. It's all she yours. It with her. Anyone with even a modicum of self-preservation would have popped that shit on in a heartbeat. <laughs> Seems a little weird that he got the same sort of temporary exhaustion he usually gets when getting big. Only here, he's still nanoscopic at best. He shrank down so far, he's in the quantum realm, so going several sizes larger is still tiny. Shouldn't he still be operating? I opted for the word sizes in the script because I don't know what else to fucking say. Yeah. Like, it's so weird. To, it's all relative, of course, so none of it... He's not really getting bigger, small, whatever. It's just... He's still tiny. Fuck it. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's why I keep using the Dr. Evil fingers. Everything as though he's very small, not exhausted from being big, I mean. The whole mass difference and whatnot. Why the fuck am I even asking these questions? Surprising amount of clips from that movie considering 
It's uh, one that a lot of people don't even probably remember that much, but because oh, I yeah, threw in the uh, uh, square peg round hole thing. Yep, which is a great visual. Um, yeah, there, there's uh, I think there's one more reference to Apollo 13. Where are we? Who? Boy, look at that. Generic alien world, ah, background number well. 783. That, to be fair, only lacks character because the story will be doing fuck all to support it while the CG artists toiled in the sugar <laughs> caves for endless days and nights. It's funny because I wrote that, I was like, that visual will be there because that's the visual, yeah, <laughs> that's the one to do. <laughs> but hey, colors. See, like, th there's nothing connected, those two, those two worlds we just saw back to back, it's, it's, it's almost like it was designed by two different people. And they might say, like, well, yeah, it was, and they were told that there's a quantum world where all kinds of things happen. It's just like, okay, fine. Mm. Just, uh, know the result you'll get by doing that. Mom! Hey, idiot, maybe don't do the Prometheus <laughs> thing and take off your helmet when on a completely unfamiliar and quantum land that, as far as you knew, requires super tech to survive in. At least the Prometheus guy detected oxygen. You literally can't. You're smaller than those particles and you have no tech assisting you. In fact, how the fuck are any of you alive? How are you functioning in any way when that small without protective gear? Can we get an explanation? We should be dead. <clears throat> Why aren't we? I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's good enough, lads. What does take pride in your work mean? I don't know. It's just so good to see Denim's cameoing, of course. Um, <laughs> and what's interesting, too, is that if you remember, there's going to be a part later where we see the um, director's commentary with the writer talking about how it's not fun to have to account for the fact that they shouldn't be able to breathe. Like, they don't want to do that. And be like, why not bring it in now? And it's like, well, the way this works is that I'm trying to give the film all of the benefit of the doubt and take it for what it is. Instead of being like, because there's a lot of things we could immediately resort to the meta commentary from um, the people who created this to start shitting on it. But I'm doing my best to, to give it as much of a fair shake as possible. But of course, when we get, I think, about an hour into the film, it's like, this is an absolute okay. fucking mess. So we can start at least involving some of the insight from how they made it. Just about what one would expect from the writing teams behind anything Phase 4, but, oh, sorry, Phase 5, of course. Also, I was gonna give them a pass on their entry to this floompy world, being that Hope clearly grabbed them, and so the three of them... The so, fun fact, as <laughs> I told Rags and Free this, that complaint was not in the original script, nor in the recording. The complaint... Sorry, I, I should let this play out, actually, for a second. had a softened landing thanks to her wings, but now they're all up and about in different places. So, if they landed separately, then how did they survive the fall? So that, that wasn't in the original. It was in one of the like last drafts that criticism got added in, because I watched this film with my mum and dad, who are not in the clips. That is my sister and her husband. Um, who were laughing and making fun of the film. I didn't record the one with my mum and dad. I was just really curious how they would take the film. And so we're watching it, and in the original script, I say I appreciate that, you know, those two would have landed just fine because Hope's wings would have softened it. Um, I don't I don't know if there's if she can make them fly with three people at once, but it doesn't matter. You softened it, whatever, they're fine. And so we're watching the film, and that happens. My mum is like... How are they? How are they all okay? And I assume immediately, like they're maybe talking about the oxygen stuff. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. They just don't really give a reason. And then she was like, no, like, like, uh, not for the oxygen stuff. For the for the fall when they've like broken their backs. And uh, again, my mum. And I was like, well, no. Um, Hope has wings, so like she would have delayed it. And then she's like, but they woke up in separate places. And I remember watching the <laughs> film, being like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> hang on. Good like, point. And then she was like, should they, like, just be dead? And I was like, fuck, yes, they should, in multiple ways, damn. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's so a... That was a really astute observation there. I was really surprised, I was like, alright, well, I gotta, I gotta re-record that part now, because that's true. Do not move. So this is the Quantum Realm, a brand new universe with its own entirely unique ecology. Yes, this is entirely different from what we all understood to be the truth for some time, but don't worry, I'm sure they'll explain. For now, we have a spooky quantum robot doing a scan, and it's thwarted because they stand behind a quantum tree. <laughs> Fucking useless scanner. In any case, hope- you know What's funny about that visual is a lot of people might not even recognize it. Like. What is that sparking on the floor? It's like yeah, it's, it's, it's all it, Iron Man two. Was it was called the ex-wife, right? Uh, 
Uh, I think so. I think yeah, that's what like uh, that. Justin Hammer calls it. And yeah, it's uh, Rody fires it at Whiplash, and it does nothing. <laughs> and it kind of makes a fart sound like... Yeah. Hope and Hank have some questions. Keep your voice down. You said there was nothing down here. That line doesn't work very well now, does it? We already knew <laughs> oh, there was something down here. It's where we collected the energy for Ghost. Yeah, yeah, I know nobody remembers it. Hank saw plenty when he came down, and Janet lived here for 30 years. This is what I mean, like, what did the conversation look like? It's like, Mom, how did you survive down there? And she's like, there's nothing down there. Like, Yeah, nothing. Okay. Like, what'd you do? Uh, nothing. <laughs> didn't do nothing, didn't go anywhere. It was just nothing. You really thought there was nothing? Oh, I will explain everything, but right now I just need you to trust me. Then make me. me trust you! We don't have time to talk. Well, actually, you have a lot of time. Like, seriously, a lot of time. You are walking in the quantum jungle. Just talk while you walk, and then you will be talking Does without anybody a in chat recognize a guy on the right? Give him a sec if you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> Many people got it. Yeah. The All Father, yeah. indeed. Ragnarok. Got a wall. Okay. You can honestly do yeah. both. It would be weird if you had incredibly important information to share and you simply don't, like for no reason at all. Let's hope that ain't it. Why didn't you listen? I told you to stay away from here. I should have told you what we were doing. I had no idea. But she didn't tell you to stay away at all. You even had to go into the quantum realm to get the quantum energy to save. Yeah, like if she had said to them at some point, never study the quantum realm, I think all would be like, wait, what? Why? And that would be a yeah. conversation that would happen. But that never happened. She's lying ghost from That's a life right. of quantum torment. Yes, I know nobody remembers her, but it's your history movie, not mine. You were jumping in and out of it well after Janet returned. She was fine with it. What changed? We'll talk later. Right now, we stick together, we find Scott and Cassie, and we go home, okay? You can walk and talk, Janet. Tell these poor souls, including us at home, what you are hiding. Don't give me this Maz Kanata shit. A good question for another time. You're all Ain't that crazy, that line? It's been overshadowed by all the craziness of the sequel trilogy and the rest of Disney Star Wars, but that one felt like one of the original, like, people being like, wait a minute. I don't know, that yeah. seems like a shitty excuse. Like, it was. Exactly. It never got explained. Nope. We're all wandering through bullshit, rambling about anything anyway. Just explain it. I studied the Well, it did get explained in third-party shit, as far as I'm aware, but uh, not yeah, in the that main line. Count. No. <laughs> Most people don't watch third or read third party material. Quantum realm for years. Why didn't I see any of this? Because your life's work is apparently a joke, Hank. You didn't see or know shit. Sit down. You weren't able to look deep <laughs> enough. Not through the void and subatomica. The subawatica? The Illumawadi? <laughs> At least they mentioned the void, <laughs> the place oh, source. And I think when you can connect things like that, it's just, it's, it's, you just get this overwhelming sense of like, fuck it hell. This yeah. is so awful, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Scott end up that Janet was supposed to be stuck in as well, back then at least. But I guess she was in the subatomica, which is here, you know, where she met Kang. It's the thing, man. She never did anything with the regulator, so she should have just shrank forever. It should never have been yeah, a stop. Exactly, yeah. Why did she stop shrinking? I don't know. Never answered that. Below that is the quantum realm. Remember, you can shrink in the quantum realm, so there's no cutoff point, yeah, which would right. be weird, by the way, in terms of physics. Which is this? But then, what was the place Hank found Janet? Is that the subatomica, the void, or some other place? There are worlds here. Worlds within worlds. It's a place outside time and- Yeah, so that's an example, by the way. Her speech is a lot longer with a lot more pauses than that, but I cut them much closer and then I just cut to hope to, you know, cover the blend, basically. Yeah, which, uh, by the way, editing the Ahsoka episodes right now, it is- Fucking annoying how many long pauses there are yep. between every sentence that they say. It just makes it really hard to edit. And it makes it really hard to convey just how long those pauses are because you can't you can't play too much, otherwise you get hit with copyright. So you gotta try and figure out exactly the optimal length, which I mean, in this case, I think in throughout this video there was nothing longer than like five seconds, maybe six. Space. I you mother 
bullshit. You're telling me that we have a grand total of Earth that took as a, a while world. To yep. The <laughs> tiniest, smallest parts of Earth. Then you keep shrinking until you go subatomic. That's where Scott and Janet ended up on their respective journeys to complete their missions. That is the world of the Void. The Void is just the place you go when you're very, very small. Scott managed to escape, but Janet kept on shrinking until she entered the subatomica, which is another world. And yeah, you get clips later of me trying to explain this to the people on EFAP without realizing, of course, that they hadn't thought about this as much as I had. <laughs> And so it, like, yeah. vaguely made sense to me, but you guys were just like, what the fuck language are you speaking? Like, what? what is this? I was like, I'm pretty sure this is what they want us to think. I don't know. I think ...within so, the world but... of the Void, a world with spooky invisible creatures and Kang. She, uh, she stopped shrinking at that point, I guess. Only she then kept shrinking <laughs> because she entered another <laughs> world. That was I just, that one. The bewildered nature of him. Uh, a lot of the um, the visuals I ever add in these are usually just ones because you, you had context clips anyway, so I was like, oh, well, I can probably put one of my more common uh, visuals in there. Like, there's a distinct lack of uh, boss nasses anyway um, stuff in here, because I, I like some of the anyways you put in. He, he's my go-to for me saying anyway. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> deeper than the subatomica, as she put it. A place called the Quantum Realm, where a whole ass civilization is, and if that wasn't difficult enough to understand, you can access any of these worlds at any time and place on Earth, even when you are on the other side of the fucking planet, but none of these worlds within worlds adhere to time or space, despite clearly operating with standard physics and expected spatial relations, on top of events progressing in a linear temporal fashion, and it supports human life and you're telling me all of these worlds and see you can you can appeal to like sci-fi but they just this is just the most pathetic and lazy attempt like they just didn't explain anything yep. and it seems like from that clip from the um the assembled stuff uh that they were going to try at one point they were going to give them quantum suits that accounted for how they could breathe and stuff but i'm sure that got thrown out early because they were like well we need to show their faces all the time so how are we exactly, going to do that so we can't do that just use normal suits I'm surprised they didn't opt to actually say, we are wearing the masks and the helmets and stuff, they're just invisible. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, whatever, whatever. whatever. Yeah are accessible from each other. They are interconnected. What in the fuck were you thinking? The people who wrote this are why we have instructions on shampoo. And how are you going to convince oh, anyone that Cassie visual. made something that can yeah. map all of this? We just need a map. And then we can study and explore the entire quantum realm. Does her map not adhere to time and space too? The less they say yeah. about any of this, the better. Though to be honest, we're getting worse and worse in the department of why the fuck didn't Janet say anything. Now we have whole worlds beneath worlds that changes everything about our understanding of the quantum realm despite working on it with her. She's also partially explaining things. How about you explain it all instead of giving us random tidbits, Janet? Nope, that's the only thing they've got as writers is to reveal gradually stuff stuff that takes us all the way to the middle of the movie, you know? It's like, that's how it delays, because yeah. we've got nothing else to do, and it's so sad because there's so many things they could do. Mm -hmm. You could have told them all about Kang at the beginning of this film. She could have said, like, I have to. I didn't want to, but I have to. Uh, you know, everything went wrong. I was gonna, I was gonna tell you once we sorted out Ghost, but obviously the blip happened, and then we sorted out Thanos, and... Uh, you know, my mind got fucked with a little bit with all the quantum shit, but it's it, I, it's time, I can tell you. I'll be a lot more forgiving of that. And you can get it all out of the way. Um, but never mind, because we, we, that's the only thing they've got to tell us. I'll handle this. Man, that's some harsh editing. We left them for about one <laughs> minute on a cliff's edge, spotting their goal quantum miles away, and now we're in the quantum wasteland. God, I hate this shot so much. So bad. It's so gross to look at. It's so fucking <laughs> ugly. Awful. And uh, it it reminds me of like uh, oh, did you ever see the Linkin Park music video for In the End? Uh, yeah, I it's think like, so. You know, uh, that would have been made in the nineties, right? Uh, like the early two thousands. Well, they're playing around with uh, CG in that, and uh, you know, it's not the focus, and they're. Like I said, it's so early on, but it just it's that same vibe of like, look at us, we're in a we're in a weird alien world. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure you are. I believe it. Uh the matter of going a little further than you can pull off, I guess, and so obviously not standing there. Uh but even the fact that the three of them are 
Is the shots composed this way? It just seems so fucking generic. Looks awful. And this another world within a world. And Bill Pope uh, was the cinematographer for this, as far as I'm aware. Or the director of photography, rather. Janet, look at this place. How the fuck long did it take you to get here? We just chopped out a whole ass day, at least. Th that's actually something yeah. that's worth mentioning. I didn't put it in the video, but there's so many talented people that are involved in this that makes, like, you know, Michael Douglas is an actor, Michelle Pfeiffer is an actress, Paul Rudd is an actor, uh, Bill Pope is DP, and Christoph Beck with the uh, as composer. Soundtrack. Like, these people, they're not shit. <laughs> like, no, you have to understand. Quite good. So, what the hell happened? It's like, it's Disney, it's Marvel, it's this gross blending machine that just makes people shit. Oh, and look how fake all of this is. You really trying to convince me they're looking at or standing on anything but blue? Uh, look at it. Look at <laughs> it! Uh. I think your original line was green and you felt that you had to change it to blue. I had, I think, three instances that I had to change because I, I instinctively call it a green screen, but most of the time they're blue screens this, uh, these days. I think more often they're blue, yeah. And, uh... You know, it, it, it's fine. You guys know what I'm talking about, but it's just too, it's too awkward to look at and, and hear at the same time. It's like you can't have this much blue, and then hear me say that they're sitting on a green screen. Green. It's like, why? Yeah. I think it's a matter of like, why did he say green screen when it's obviously blue? And is it because he thinks that all of them are called green screens, even if they're blue? It's like it just cuts all that bullshit out. It's just like, no, I'm just used to calling it a green screen. Blue mm -hmm. or the illustrious volumes. I could have chroma keyed it to make it look green. Damn. <laughs> there you go, the easy solution. Screen. And what was the direction here? Uh, yeah, Miss Lily, we're gonna need you to, to look as though something's coming for you. Uh, so, something's coming right like, for you. You know for a fact, they had no idea what was gonna be here. So, just like, just look, ugh, look concerned and like maybe you're yeah. in danger, but also strong that you can take it no matter what. <laughs> and then eventually just like, yeah. fuck it, just do something. For you. It's a big old thing, maybe. We're not sure what it is, but it's coming. And uh, you're feeling very confused, scared, and confidently strong, but also calm and content with your horrifying, brave state. Michael, wh wh whatever that is, it's great. So Janet is attacked by this quantum guy and everyone freaks out. Only she chops off his arm and they're friends now. Put your fucking helmet on, Hope, you cave clown. And what's with the writing here? If Hope's beloved and long lost mother is being attacked by Quantum Boy here, you bet your ass she's shrinking down and flying over, whether she said I'll handle this or not, especially after this. It's just basic shit. She cares about her mum more than anything. She's gonna go and stop that from happening. She's not just gonna stand there and watch. No, it's not happening. Mike, Michael Douglas is not even bothering to do anything. He's just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good old yeah, matter of characters yeah. not being allowed to say what they absolutely would say or do what they absolutely would do because tension. Providing suspense to an audience in any context means you are writing good, right? But really, Janet should have said, Oh, I have to beat this guy in a fair fight for us to get a ride. He's actually a friend. Don't get involved and don't panic. It would make sense, you still have tension, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking dusty ass cliche. It's friendly. Quite a ride. Says the man who invented flying on the back of an ant. Um, ants are a little bit different to the flying quantum space alien manta ray, you plum. I like ants. And I love that you love them. Here. Oh, gee, that's. You know, in great... retrospect, it's like this guy's helping you even though you abandoned him. Yeah. Interesting. Don't you think they'd have a lot yeah. of questions for her? Where did you go? What happened to you? Who are these people? What are we doing about the revolution? But no, <laughs> they're not actually characters. They're just creatures that will provide us tools. Yeah. Is he thinking to ride? Yeah, well, you ride on ants. I do like them. Yes, I like that too. The dialogue is... I, I, I'm partially convinced the writers think it's funny. And it's like, oh, shit. Damn. You thought that yeah. was funny? Okay. Also, this visual. Dying yeah, on the vine. Beautiful. I'm particularly happy with this one. It's dying on the vine here. They need some spice, some fire. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of force that's fucking oh, right away. Another Poor one. million-year-old yeah. Michael there, <laughs> hanging on to his pulse for dear life. The subatomic universe. 
This changes everything we know about life, evolution. It really does change everything, and yet it will change nothing about any commentary going forward in the entire movie. Holy shit. That guy looks like broccoli. Quite seriously, some of the most earth-shattering information imaginable, and you'll lose interest in it after seeing broccoli. Also, Janet clearly says, Keep your head down. And Hank has a mask he can put on, but I guess he took it off to rant about life here and no one gives a shit. You're doing a great job of staying low profile, lads. Drink those. I'll be right back. No, it wouldn't change anything, since life on Earth and evolution on Earth is the, still the same as we know it. Bro, life functioning at the quantum level to this degree changes everything about the origin of life and how we think anything works. It, it, just, it just does, categorically. There's a, a lot of our systems are based on not having quantum versions, like tiny, tiny quantum versions of everything that we already know to be true. And look at the composition of all these creatures. These, this this shit can't exist on Earth, or rather doesn't, for sure, and what does it mean that it can heal? What happens if we blow them back up? And can they procreate exactly. with humans? What does that mean for biology? Where do they come from? How does this work? What is what is their genealogy? It's, this, it's incredible, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing, but we don't really give a shit, we're moving on. That's just how that works. So those are translation ooze drinks. They let you understand presumably all languages spoken, and Janet simply says, drink them. Gotta tell ya, that's nowhere near enough for me to do it, but what the fuck ever, at least it's just a thimble's worth. Eventually, they figure out they can- Look at me carefully planting. Life on an alien planet. Yeah, but that would change everything we know about life if we found life on another planet. Yeah, that- we'd have to reset everything, look at all their biology. Uh, it might match, it might not, it might change our look, understanding look completely. Those, this certainly look, would. Look at that. Look at those guys. Yep, this is definitely something to study. <laughs> Indeed understand yeah. all languages now. That's neat. And then, Bill Murray arrives. Janet Van Dyne? I thought you were dead. He's been airdropped in, courtesy of a green screen yeah. in his house <laughs> to record all of his lines, conspicuously distant from everyone else at almost all times. In terms he really of narrative, does look they're trying to conspicuously distant. Janet's the only I one think. that he seems to get anywhere near, and yeah. it makes you wonder. But then you see all those scenes they filmed of him doing all kinds of things in different places. It's like, what the fuck happened, guys? What happened? For his help. Kryler, we need your help. After all we've been through, together, just ask me. Tell me, how can I help? Doesn't remind me of anything else, nor Marvel's desperate attempts to keep audiences interested via legacy actors pouring what remains of their star power into this desiccated, sunken corpse. Really feels like they do that one per movie, or one per project. Yeah, one, one per movie you gotta get a legacy actor to play a small bit role. In any case, he introduces himself, and somehow you have Murray and Pfeiffer disagreeing on how to pronounce his name. Been a long time, Kryler. Officially... Lord Krylar now. So is it Krylar or Krylar, you fucking idiots? Krylar. 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 That visual Krylar. from uh, the Primal Fear, Primal right? Fear. Yeah. Yeah. We watched that recently. Interesting movie. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Bill Murray has heard about ants. He's curious about ants and what ants even are. What are ants anyway? Do we have them down here? I don't think so. No. Oh, that's too bad. That's the conversation they have. He asks about ants and whether they are in the quantum realm, and Hank is like, no. And then he says, oh, okay. I guess you can say this is a thin setup for something later, but man, the dialogue is clunking. Oh, she talked about you every day. Strange, she never said anything about you. Okay, were you born a cunt, or did it take practice? Why let this guy, who we clearly need help f I legit to this day have no idea what Hope was trying to achieve with that one. I don't know, why would you say that? Like, that only stands to make things harder for you. Yep. From know that he wasn't mentioned at all by someone who is trying to convince him she's his friend. Hope didn't used to be this dense. It's like she just wants to be a cock. Mm. Man, that's a Rick and Morty joke if I ever <laughs> saw one, which <laughs> does make some sense. Are you not human? Not that, that's the face yes. that the uh, that, that the shrimp uh, brook makes yeah, is really funny. Yes. Matter. 
Why? What the fuck does that mean? You are anatomically compatible, but you're not human, I guess? How did you all come to be... What the... We're really never going to understand any of this shit, are we? And boy, is it going to create some ethical issues later. But no worries, folks. Fun quantum movie go... You left... All of us. With him. How many people died because of you? Does your family even know who you are? So, this is kinda interesting. Krylar is saying that Janet abandoned the people of the Quantum Realm with someone, and we know he ain't lying because she not only ditched them here, she didn't mention any of this at all. Any assistance she could have provided these people was cut off by the fact that she tried to hide their existence in the first place. Though it does make you wonder why she would come to this guy for help when she seemingly left him for dead. <laughs> So he tries to capture them as he's in league with the conqueror of these lands. Things start to get a little tense. Janet offers to be taken in if Hank and Hope can be released, only for Krylar to say this. But you want them, so they're coming too. Along with Ugh. those other friends of yours. <laughs> Seriously, so what clunky. the fuck is with this absolutely clanking dipshit dialogue? I heard about them, but he did too. And uh, he sent the hunter. But you want them, so they're coming too, along with those other friends of yours. I heard about them, but he did too, and he sent the hunter. Sounds like cliff notes. You know, redrafting isn't a crime. Also, what yeah, kind- Yeah, as you sort of find out later, it's that they had a set, and then they went back in and had him record extra shit, and then tried to stitch it all together to make it better, when I think it makes it worse. It makes it worse, for sure. It's just super clunky and confusing. Kind of hunter. A mechanized organism designed only for killing? Holy good goddamn fuck, <laughs> we'll get to that. So things are yeah. looking pretty bad. Krylar's gonna sell them out to the Conqueror, yeah. and he was expected to be an ally. Well, so yeah, so it's probably worth mentioning, right? When breaking this down, I, I was thinking about how this was gonna go. I could go by the actual scenes, because of course we would have had two Cassie and uh, Scott scenes by now uh, in the yes. actual movie, but the. I feel like it makes the flow a bit more awkward that I... Some of them aren't even that long, like the Cassie got ones. And so it's like I just describe what happens and then move on instead of making it all flow as one big story, which um, feels like it just helps the pacing of the video. I've done this before in the other um, videos as well, when they have like an A plot and a B plot. Sometimes it's better to just commit to doing the A plot in full and then the B plot in full or vice versa. What happened? What happened to you? We fought against him. He can be very persuasive. Ah, so he probably had very little choice. It is interesting to have a guy who resents Janet because she left him to the fury of this conqueror to then give us a hint that something valuable to him is held as leverage to force him to do these things. I wonder how... <laughs> uh, just the way that Bill Murray like falls back when he gets kicked, it's clear uh... that he's not actually falling, <laughs> he's just leaning back in his seat. Yeah, it's funny. Wait, what? Slow down. I, I thought maybe we oh, could. Is there Looney something Tunes that looked references. like character mm -hmm. here? Some, something. That... Wait, what happens to Krylar? Is he safe? <laughs> is he all right? Well, Hank in large. And of course, it. the meme there is just the he was the most interesting thing to happen in this movie so far. I was like, yeah, uh, you know, he's calling Janet out. Finally, someone is, and the but but like as you know, all the uh, writing director have to say about him is he made a, an evil bargain. He's he's a bad man. It's like oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> the fleam creature and it throws Krylar away. We don't see him again. <laughs> okay then, that's that I suppose. We start with all of our characters just shooting the bad guys and winning. You have two, count them, two geriatrics here, <laughs> and yet the robot henchmen can't shoot the geezers to save their circuits. You then get this. What the fuck? The action scene is already pretty that? much over, by the know. way. Hank and Janet run into the <laughs> ship, and Hope stands guard while they hotwire and pilot it. And by stand guard, I mean Hope just stands there and shoots her little pew pew gun. The fucking wasp just stands there and shoots. She's capable. And see, so you, you could have had like a moment where she shrinks down, starts to fight, and like she's around that big fleam thing, and so like a tentacle is about to crash into it, and she has to like roll out of the way and you know, move to a different thing that's blown up because of his size and stuff, but they really did just opt to have her shoot. That's all they did. They're just like, shoot, 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 yeah. shoot, shoot. Done, done, done. 
capable of all kinds of combat, both in flight and on the ground. On top of that, you have the shrinking and expanding technology. And I mean, they just... None of them can hit this static target. I feel like these scenes are made for people who enjoy water with their cereal. You know, the <laughs> real psychopaths. The wet socks of people. So anyway, Michael Douglas then plunges <laughs> himself the elbow deep into slimy yellow quantum tentacle cock. <laughs> Do you guys remember the MCU? <laughs> Time for some memory lane yeah, shit. Drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Not a perfect soldier, but a good man. Come on, one hand! Two more! Let's go find two more! <laughs> So anyway, back to the. <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> I know, I know. This, those clips are a combination of like badass and fun, and yeah. those two things are just not in Quantum Mania at all. A slimy yellow quantum tentacle cock ravaging Michael Douglas. That's what needs to happen to pilot the ship, you see. Because everything is all floopy down here in the quantum world. Except most stuff is just normal, really. In any case, we can't... And, like, for anybody who doesn't know what I mean by that, it's just everything's just functioning. There's nothing everything crazy or difficult really to understand. You know, yeah. like you've got, like, ships, you got... Uh, just, like, regular sort of technology, you got regular, like, utensils. Like, they're kind of floopy, but they're all legible. There's nothing strange about the way, like, even the bar itself, like, as a whole place, it's just normal. It's a, there's a bar and then it's there's normal, chairs and like tables. It's a looking bar, that's it. There's no confusion as to where people are going as well. It's all on one plane, everyone's just walking around. And it's like, yeah. it's a quantum world, you'd think maybe, hmm, never mind. <laughs> Close out this side of the plot line without another banger exchange. Really? Him? He used to be charming. That guy? I was down here for 30 years, Henry. I had needs. Oh my god. Why? Why do we need this? Why? <laughs> Who asked face. for this? Why? I get it. I've got needs, too. I had dinner with someone a few times. What went wrong? She wasn't you, baby. Okay, this is like the fourth time. Why is everything so fucking chemistryless? I had needs. So did I. It didn't work out. Why didn't it? Genuinely, I think that Loveness was like, that was so funny. He probably, yeah, like, he mm. probably put the pen down and was like, ha ha ha. Oh, <laughs> witty. Witty me. She wasn't you. It's bad enough that everything is this dry when you have Janet sharing her sexcapades for no reason at all. But on top of that, you took inspiration from fucking Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. There must have been Seemed like the perfect for visual for that movie. All had the same problem. Yes. They weren't you, honey. We do be sinking low, eh? So significant that, though, though, that hope yeah. is there in one shot, right next to Janet, and then when Hank is rambling on and on, she disappears. Oh, the <laughs> trouble of the quantum <laughs> world. <laughs> Angeline Lilly's role in the film has been reduced and that, down. You know that no one caught it because you could easily fix that in post, but they just didn't. Exactly. Whoops. Oh well. Bye, Hope. And so far, she can barely stay on screen. How about we get them all off screen and we go and visit Cassie and Scott? What have they been up to? Hope. Hank. Can anyone hear me? Oh my god. Keep the helmet on, you fucking mop. But yes, apparently Scott is so <laughs> far away faces. he cannot communicate with Hank or Hope. Points for trying, of course. We're okay. It's gonna be okay. You're saying okay too much. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, it's because we are. We're okay. Oh boy, some top-notch you know, marble humor. Funny, funny, what funny. else we got? It's like we're camping. We love camping. We've never been camping. But we've always talked about it. Man, that felt like a straight-up Paul Rudd joke. He did have writing credits on the other two. Maybe he can try to sneak something into this train wreck. Though what's interesting here is not only her awful acting, it's that we're trying to shore up the fact that these two haven't had time to spend with each other. Something of a very sore subject for Cassie that she even somewhat blames Scott for. So you'd think that the direction here should be for her to get more and more angry until popping as she does. We love camping. 
We've never been camping. Only as Scott says we love camping, you can clearly see her nodding along to then complain. We've never been camping. And as if that's not confusing enough, when he says, I but we've always <laughs> talked about it, I she's nodding again. It is perfect. I still like it. It's like, hey, good one, Krusty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then points the counter at him. <laughs> again. But we've always talked about it. Now, I know these movies get shot and reshot to death to then be torn <laughs> up and glued together with toe jam and chewing gum, uh, so I yeah, guess it doesn't surprise I, I think, me. That. I think the reason why I thought about that visual, because what was it, toe jam, you said? Toe jam and chewing gum, yeah. It just made me think about, yeah, it just made me think about Beth making a collage out of horse hooves. Trying to argue it's perfectly normal. <laughs> yeah, so the hospital just lets you walk on out of there with, with horse parts in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> The film ended up this way, but still, how the fuck did it end up this way? Come in. Whoa, all right, calm down. What have we got here? Big ol' quantum jelly sun is attacking them for reasons, and Scott is going big boy mode to beat it. Kinda weird he's not going bigger, though. Like, all the way back to regular big. But for this, I would imagine he should probably at least go bigger? What's that you say? This is his maximum size relative to this situation? Sure, fine. I'm very certain that's the case. And that is not a criticism that is banked on later, that's just, you get that on a repeat viewing, you know what I'm talking about, uh, he goes much, right. much bigger. Should have yeah. used it for the jelly, son. And man, would have been so useful here if Cassie had a suit. And what if she had a suit that could also go big? You know, so that she could help save her father from what seems like a perilous situation. Would be real lame if it turned out she had a suit <laughs> and she could go big. Anyway, the face Scott that he makes, though. Yeah. When he looks it's... at the camera. Yes, and then just, and then the music that plays as well. He's so sad. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of rabbit season, uh, visuals. It's one of the best Looney Tunes cartoons. Well, and with the structure of these videos, there's just a lot of implied criticisms, because, you know, the actual criticism can't come in until, like, an hour from now, at least in movies, yeah. so it's just like, yeah, it's, 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 real, it's fine, game, though. A face that it's, when you say, like, it's fine, but the face seems, like, not fine at all, <laughs> it's just a really easy juxtaposition. Yeah. Scott throws away the quantum jellyfish sun and everything is fine. Weird. Yep, it's a Marvel movie. And it's that, that thing that guy was talking about on our anniversary thing. It's just the, yeah. the lack of sincerity. We can't just be like, that was horrifying. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I made it. He has to be like, huh, that was weird. Stop. Oh. <laughs> Please. And then that thing is eaten by a big old different quantum manta ray. There's always a bigger fish. Run. Go big and Punch it, you coward, you little fucking bitch. Punch the flesh carpet. I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue what's happening here. Oh, they exploded it? Wait, who who exploded it? What? What the fuck, man? The quantum Avengers are here, I guess? There's quantum people in the quantum realm. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, but... Like, they sometimes have laser faces? Or broccoli? Maybe more of the film will help me understand it. That's reasonable. Anyway, Scott and Cassie have been captured, and by the time we hit the next scene, they've been separated significantly. Cassie has ooze on her mouth and says this. Drink the ooze! What?! Now, I've purposefully ripped the band-aid of ooze being translation ooze off as a reveal to really dig into just what the fuck this whole scene is. They would have come in together and been force-fed ooze together, but clearly they didn't want to show us a teenage girl being force-fed a foreign substance while gagging and begging them to stop. But they'll do it for the guy. So they teleported her not, not only ahead, but post-force-feed. Meaning she can now tell it. Scott to accept it. And what does she say exactly? Is it, Dad, this dream Drink allows you to understand them. Drink it. Or is it this ooze they are feeding you allows you to communicate with them? Or maybe it's this is translation ooze. Or is it as simple as drink this and you want- Funnily enough, uh, people were surprised I didn't put her saying drink the ooze in the selection of like bad acting clips. And it's like, to be fair, I don't- there's no like good acting from her. Uh, no, that, that's not to be no mean. good acting. The only one I think I would pick is when She's like tearing up after he says uh, she's the only thing that's he didn't mess up. 
Yeah, that's probably it. I think the reason why it stands out so much is because it's just not a problem that Marvel has. They usually get good actors. Like, the acting is rarely the problem with Marvel movies compared to DC, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, so she stands out as, like, distinctly bad. Yeah, I'm not trying to be mean. Else. I'm just saying, like, the, the, you... <laughs> Seems like everybody. It's not. A, it's not a shocking take. It seems like everyone agrees. Well, it's just, I think the reason why it's particularly awkward is it's like you're not very good, and the person you replaced was good for a demanding scene that she only got one for. So why not just use her again? I'd say she's got an acting talent for golf. Uh well, the fact it's unbelievable that she's acting, and they're like, oh, you know, she's she's a great golfer. What the? <laughs> why did you say that? I don't know. <laughs> why didn't you compliment her acting? Understand them. No, it's this. Drink the ooze! What? Seriously, why is the dialogue this horrendously bad throughout? Who said you could touch things as dangerous as a keyboard? Or a crayon? <laughs> yes, best character in the film. So the scene continues and Cassie says nothing else. Despite, of well, course, currently Veb being... and Modoc, and they need their own show. Yeah. Vem and Modoc is like a tag team. That'd be yeah. great seeing Vem and Modoc go on adventures in the quantum realm. One able to explain everything to Scott easily, and the creatures here all know this and are invested in that very thing happening. Instead, we get shouting, chanting, confusion, and a uh ceremony for all of this. <laughs> Where do I even begin? Just hand him a cup, like you fuckers do in the bar. Like a normal- Like legit, why? Why with the jug? Why? Yeah, I don't get and it. And we all know why. It's to come across as weird and creepy and strange as possible before being normal. That's the joke. Yeah. That's always the Except joke. the problem is that it just doesn't- It doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't it just be like a little cup? You only, it's like they rely on it quite a few times, like, oh, doesn't this look crazy? Well, it's not actually, it's kind of normal, actually. Yeah. Person would. <laughs> What's with all the stupid chanting? <laughs> why do any of this? Like, I know they're saying drink the ooze, but why chant that? Why do any of this weird shit? In seconds from now, they're about to act much more normal. It's that really lame half committal to being weird or alien. They just give up the longer the time code goes. The meme, of course, is to make it all seem like it's much worse than it actually is. Like they already did with Janet and the Tizami Arm Man. <laughs> Oh my god. Time and place. And you did it at my birthday dinner. What? Don't know why. I think that popped up in someone's YouTube video as a reference in and of itself, and I was like, that would be funny after Scott drinking the ooze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why would you swallow, my dude? You clearly don't want just to. That Thanos face is like <laughs> why would, Because why would you swallow is a great question because it's like, did well, you did you want to? Like <laughs> your mouth is open. You could just spit it. You could just close your mouth, you could just spit it out. Like, they're not forcing you to swallow. <laughs> Thanos is so disappointed in Scott. You? you clearly don't understand why you should, and they clearly didn't even cover your nose. You can breathe through that. Like, it's not exactly hard to just not drink the bullshit. Also, what is this absurd pouring <laughs> jug thing? The bar had shot glasses. What? Does the same thing, makes way more sense. Why the fuck can't you quantum cunts just be consistent? The joke, of course, is that they're absurdly normal once he takes the ooze anyway. What are you doing here? Where are you from? <laughs> Why is he drinking a liter of that shit when Hope and Hank needed a thimble's worth? Ugh, oh, whatever. What's next? Hello. Girl. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Did you drink the ooze? Ah, finally. Oh. An alien that looks real <laughs> fucking weird, but he's super chill. Been looking to see this for a while. <laughs> What's he all about? I am Peb. You just drank me. What? Do you need some more ooze? Here, I can pour some ooze into your no, hole. I'm... Fucking hell, mate. Steady on. So you're telling me that this guy, Veb, can produce ooze, and when creatures drink it, they can then communicate with everyone? And there is a need for this, I imagine, because there are many different creatures growing and evolving in the quantum world, and they came together but couldn't communicate well. And and so they lucked out in having this one creature evolve. In retrospect, I don't even know why they connected it to Veb specifically. I'm not like, sure why they connected it to Veb, because it only creates problems. Yeah, you know, like it just could have been a substance they have down there that does that. I mean, but again, it's just he really likes being drunk, I guess. Mm. He's a wacky guy. I mean, I, I like it's I 
I really like Veb. He's such a look at him. What an interesting design he is. You like he's, him like he's... Marge likes potatoes. Uh it, it's just I he's he's super unique and chill, and he's he's a cool lad. I like to produce him. a liquid that, when consumed, solves that exact problem? Well, gosh darn, how fucking useful. And so now, presumably as a quantum-wide industry, Veb sells his ooze to bartenders the world over that, in order for them to I mean. serve I drinks see that. I want to see that movie of him traveling the world selling... Those little Veb truck filled yeah, with kegs exactly. that he gives them out as he goes kegs, along. Yeah, and he sings a little song as he's traveling the quantum realm. It's he like doesn't do it for the money, he does it because he knows no, it he helps doesn't. people. He does it for the love of the craft. Yeah. ...to passers-by. And so, if Veb were to die, we can no longer provide <laughs> translation liquid to the world. Hopefully, there are more Vebs. Can we harness the power of the Veb for Earth? Do Scott or Cassie realize they are sitting on what is probably the most significant communication barrier solution in human history? Can we pocket some Veb and study it in the above the world? It would be so cool to know what would happen if you actually solved language barriers. Like, they were just gone. Yeah. I, I feel like everything would change. I feel like that, feel like that transforms existences on this planet. Because, like, uh, it may not seem like it at first, but the thing is, there are so many references that require knowledge of other languages in everyday life. Oh, being bilingual is super, like, beneficial as a skill. That's, like, super useful. And uh, it makes you wonder what we would settle on for what languages we would even use if we were fluent in all of them, everyone was. Or, hmm, I'm not sure. I guess the way it works is you understand all of them. Yeah, so but don't... what happens, I don't know, I guess, like, if you're born and then you, like, you just grow up surrounded by everybody speaking a language, what would yeah, the you'd language be You'd have to get verbs stuff to infants quickly. But then would, but, would that mean that... What, like, what language would they learn, right? If, if like, you're... Because the language, you're taught your language, but it's, like, whatever, whatever, when you drink verb you default to hearing everybody in, like, I guess your native language, but what does it mean to have a native language if everybody can hear, understand everybody? You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes you wonder if uh, the kids would then just be making noises, but that we hear exactly what they intend for us to understand. I guess so, but then what happens when everybody's dead and it's only ever been people with Veb? Well, the crazy know, part, I guess, is the... This probably can't work in terms of until we figure out mechanically how it does work, because there there are a lot of pieces of language that require, like, um, the context of the speaker. Exactly. Yeah. So it can't just be as simple as they speak and you understand. Well, yeah, how, do, how does a word like mold exist? How does that come to be? And that's why a translator makes more sense that's, like, in you, because it just, it gives you the best approximation. It doesn't give you, like, this thing seems magical, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Does anyone much. care about how amazing this is? Will Scott be able to understand all creatures now? Could be a fun payoff in future. Big hole. How many holes do you have? I'm sorry, is that a personal question? I don't have any holes. Pretty weird question, but the man is passionate about holes, I suppose. Can't judge too harshly. He has seven holes. <gasps> yeah, that's, that's right. How, do you, how did you know that? Okay, solid joke. But it is yeah, lacking not a bad in one. that every other person... Also, people being like, you know, it's more than seven if you consider it. It's like, obviously, you can change the amount based on your fucking... Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, goddamn. Leave the joke alone. And we see down here also has seven holes and similar sized holes. But hey, David Dasmalchian's doing a fun performance. <laughs> and it's far... How do they get the ooze from if he doesn't have holes? No idea. I don't know. No idea. Better than some of the jokes to come. How did you know that? He's quiz. He's a telepath. You can read minds? You know, you don't need to be a telepath to guess the amount of holes in a species almost identical to yours. But then again, maybe Scott was talking about how they knew his name. Though he knows they could have gotten that from Cassie. And wait, what the fuck did you just say? He's a telepath? You have telepaths? Please, stop thinking. N thinking that. I'm trying. Well, not very hard, and I think you look weird, too. Dude, you've had, like, five seconds as a Charles Xavier wannabe, and you're already pissing me off. Why, as a I've always imagined people like Charles Xavier would hear semi-regularly things that would offend him, but he wouldn't hold it against a person. Well, that's, it's, it's uh, essentially the point that you're about to make. If you're a telepath, and you've been a telepath your whole life, at, surely you're used to hearing things that you don't want to hear. Yeah, and you need to like he acts that. like this is the first time it's happened, but he'd be doing this all the time. 
he'd either need to just ignore it or I, like I guess be able to control when he listens to what people are saying it's just a shit joke yeah because it's it um work. I think it's like the first tier of thinking you're smart it's like he thinks everyone's gross because he, he hears all yeah. the things that they don't want people to hear about haha <laughs> isn't that clever kind of and I know that people are like yeah that is kind of clever and funny it's like no it would be it would be well beyond that at this point that would have been like earlier on now he'd be exactly. at the point of understanding that's just humanity and he does it himself and that it's really on him to not point it out about other people. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. And it makes the situation worse every time, which as it does here. Path. Well, yeah, it's entirely us? unfair. Stop thinking that. Oh, yeah, sure, bro. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. very helpful advice. Someone not to think the thing you don't want them to think. Chances are, these people will all be thinking precisely what they wouldn't want you to hear. Especially when you tell them what not to think about. Chances are, you're all going to be thinking whatever you least want Buffy to hear. Hell yeah. It's a question, of course, of <laughs> mental discipline. See? And that was done in the bloody late 90s. You've lived with this, presumably a whole life. Try and get some uh, Buffy and Angel in every video. Uh, yeah. I don't think I failed so <laughs> far, at least I don't think I have. Life. Which, by the way, are you just a telepathic species? Because, man, governments would absolutely want to get their hands on you. And I imagine we're just going to wash over the whole reading people's minds without their permission being a bit morally abhorrent thing. Probably not something this movie's ready to deal with. I don't think you look weird. I think you look really cool. No, no, you don't. I know I don't. I just, I'm nervous, okay? That just came out. I hope you know that <laughs> you're the twat in this situation and not Scott. He's he is. And, and uh, I actually <laughs> get a sense that the uh scott the character there is just like i'm cornered i can't do anything you're, you're reaching yeah. into my head and telling me i'm being mean i, I uh, what do we do exactly. be kind and you're essentially reaching into his mind only to complain about what you heard in fact i would kindly like for you to fuck off at this point unless of course you need to clear their names what's earth it's also where we're from we should torture them why are you always trying to torture people <laughs> How the fuck are you all this A efficient? very late edition, because we, yeah. we watched A Time to Kill like a week before this came out. Uh, and we just thought that laugh was so funny, I was like, I gotta find a place for it. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, it, it's more of a commentary on the film itself. It's just like, ah, ha, 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 look at you, you think you're so funny. Let us torture him. <laughs> You have a bloody mind reader. Just ask whether he's a spy and read. Do things come out of your holes? Stop asking about his holes. Some of us have holes. What are you doing here? Ugh, this is getting pretty stanky. Fast paced, edgy but for kids dialogue, and the straight talking guy who's just trying to make sense of his wacky friends. All of this could have been solved ages ago if you lads had one brain cell between you. What a mess. Scott and Cassie then struggle to explain they are from a world above this one called Earth and they are not spies. Well, I'm, uh, well, well this is Earth, but it's very small Earth right here. I get big, I, I shrink, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, but I wrote a book about it, actually. Yeah, you really need to make him mention that because we're still doing the narcissism angle. It ain't gonna make sense no matter how many times you try it. We bigger. shrunk, and right bigger, now we're, we're really we're small. We're so we're small it's bigger. Right Okay, they're telling the truth. Wow. An especially Could've weird been. version of tele telepathy when you've got, like, it alerts everyone. It's like, wow, 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 yeah, I'm reading your exactly. mind. It's like, oh, It's like okay. a phone notification. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't with that, but it's fine. You do you, I'm sure there's no rush. It doesn't matter. You come from above. Oh, here we go. Uh, like him. Oh dear, look at this lady. With the gear and the makeup, trying a little hard there. <laughs> to find you. I, I I feel like I that line just really annoys me because it just feels like the shittiest version of that line. He will burn the world to find you. That sucks. Try harder. Like, write something more interesting than that. You know what I mean? It's she's, like the, she's way too dramatic so as well. Like, yeah. Comes across as cringy. Because you know what they're trying to go for with the telepath guy is like, you know, ooh, blah, 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 and then he turns up and he's like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Like, whoa, mm -hmm. he's normal? What's going on? Yeah. And then she comes in as this, like, reject of a B-movie fantasy. Like, you come from above. It's like, what do what you... you yeah. You're normal too. Stop pretending you're not. Well, it's just... It feels like you're performing. You're not, like, a character in this world. Yeah. Because the, uh... I don't know the actor's name, the one who's playing uh, Telepath Guy, but he was in The Good Place, right? And, uh, yes. The uh, Midsummer as well. Yeah. He's, uh... He was really good in The Good Place. He's, uh... Well, I like him and what I've seen him in. It's just obviously yeah. he's considered more of the wasted talent in the uh, MCU. But, uh, yep. I think that that's fair to say because, yeah, he's quite good in uh, The Good Place. But here it's like, what can you do with any of this? Yeah. This is bad material. 
the Conqueror. Okay, since we don't yet know who this Conqueror <laughs> is, we can't know exactly what his power levels are, nor his level of control. But, for the sake of the argument, why not assume he's extremely powerful and can move with the power of portals? Tryhard over here just said he will burn the world to find anyone from above, implying not only that there have been several instances of people from above being captured in the past, they have- It makes you wonder when they picked them up in the first place, the first question Laserface Man should have said is, are you from above? And then they go, yes. He goes, okay, Bye. Yeah, see ya. And that's it. Or kill them. I don't know. It depends on whatever you, your values are. But the fact that they've dragged them here. She hasn't asked about this the whole time, by the way. She's been waiting. Just like, doesn't seem that urgent, <laughs> you know? Even though you're all about to get massacred, but it's fine. But that he will be here at any moment. He will hunt these people. Which means they all need to get the fuck out of here, right? We discover they are a rebellion of sorts, and they fear the fuck out of him. So I can only imagine the first thought when learning who these two are is to run. But hey, there's not much Scott and Cassie can do. They are essentially captives. Also, it's kind of amazing that the crowd lose complete interest once they discover Scott and Cassie aren't spies. First of all, they've established- Makes you wonder what would have happened if they'd said they are spies. Mm. They skewer them, <laughs> rip them into shreds, who knows? <laughs> Established that these two are a liability regardless of that, but apparently none of them give a fuck that these two come from a world with entirely different rules, species, and technology that sits above their own. A world they know nothing about. One of the obvious questions would be like, do you guys know why everyone here turned to dust uh, a while yeah. back? And it's like, we do actually, yes. We know why that happened. And you could ask us about mm -hmm. it if you're interested, I guess. You might be thinking, Well, Mola, how do you know they think Scott and Cassie don't know anything about anything? Well, let's just say I have a theory. They don't know anything about anything. Uh-huh, sure, man. They're only a deep source of existential exploration, with more answers to the nature of the universe than you likely even have access to. But yeah, they don't know anything. So they let them go, because there's nothing to do. You'd think they'd have some urgency with the whole impending doom thing, but no, it's fine. Is that building alive? Yours are dead? Uh, I appreciate the attempts at humor, but most of the buildings in this universe of theirs are dead too. How do you think jokes work? That characters just say things that make no sense to themselves and we all laugh at how silly everything is? <laughs> Fucking stale Rick and Morty leftovers. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure was the goal, just everyone's like, <laughs> the buildings in their world aren't even dead at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't think about it too much. Like, what a great joke. We just want to go home. At least you still have a home. Oh, I, I hate that line so fucking much. It's like, what do you want him to do? Like, just go, sorry, I shouldn't have brought him homes. That's my bad. Yeah. Piss. Looks like Shadow the Hedgehog here is yeah. about to burst into glorious song. Conqueror burned oh. our homes. Our stories. All right, calm down. They still need to know how to get home. There's no need to wait. What do you mean he burned your stories? Like he burned down your library? Or are you doing a thing like a building is a story, a person is a story, and I guess when someone dies, they can't be a story? Can you tell their story or? I'll be honest, I don't even care. He built his citadel on the bones of our people. Yeah, okay, that's awesome. How do they get out of here? You want them gone, remember? And they want to leave. Found others on the run. We gathered who we could to fight. That's never enough. She does eventually stop talking, and then Cassie has an idea. Dad, you're an Avenger. They need help. No. It's so funny, too. It's like, what is Cassie's goal? Like, let us help them. How? It's like, well, uh, kill, the, kill this Conqueror guy. And grow. Yeah. Get this guy. He's called the Conqueror. He's apparently horrifying, but we can do it. What I need to do is get you home. Why would you want to help? So what's happening here is that Cassie is having baby ogre brain, where you react to everything instantly with no knowledge of the situation while demanding that everyone agree with your correct position. Basically, Twitter. We don't know anything about this place. I mean, I don't even know how time works down here. Ah, the first of several a very good points. Point. Scott it's has so no weird. Like, the writers are capable of making this position, but then they shit on him for it. They're like, nah, you only care. Even cares. though it's like, it's, out. It's, he's so right. And, you know, the, the ultimate conclusion at the end of the film is him going, Cassie, you know, help me understand. The people need help. 
This is supposed to be yeah. a step in the wrong direction here from Scott. Basis to discover <laughs> just how much time is passing here so compared insane. to Earth, nor any other area of the quantum realm. This could mean his loved ones are dying without him, or that he's rapidly aging in a trapped time zone. <laughs> have we been gone for 10 seconds? Or have we been gone for 10 years? Think about your mom right now. Thankfully, they've written Scott smart enough to understand how this has affected the world before. Oh god, it's like, it's like if they presented this to me in the little writer boardroom thing, and they're like, ain't that great? And I'd be like, yep, that's that's what Scott would say. And they go, no, 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 I mean, like, it sounds convincing, but he's so wrong. <laughs> like, what? what? The man cares for his family first and remembers Cassie's mother. Granted, the stepfather was completely forgotten about, but at least the mum got a mention. The remaining seconds Cassie can spend with her could very well be slipping away. Can you imagine? Don't what use mom as an excuse. You just don't care. Yeah, don't use caring about the mother of your child as an excuse to not get involved in a conflict you don't understand a thing about and are likely making worse by getting involved in. Who cares about your mother, Hank, Janet, Hope, or the surface, or even finding out if you've been permanently damaged by being here at all? Who cares about escaping in order to tell the world about these people and to save them from this conflict in the first place? But ultimately, fuck you, Scott, for caring about your daughter first, for trying to get her to safety. What a selfish man. Man you must be. Just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's not happening. Absolutely painful. Do you ever get yeah. uncomfortable living so far up your own ass? Would you look at me? It's actually baffling. The writers decided to make Cassie Lang, the cute, fun, supportive, and honestly awesome girl from the first two movies, into a complete sack of hydraulic cringe. She's somehow beginning to overcome the foul energy. For those who don't know, cringe is bad, hydraulic cringe is much worse. Yes, so, of course. Yeah, it's very straightforward, I think. G of several other modern, wonderful characters bestowed upon us in the Disney media empire. We're doing great, aren't we, guys? Like, just so yeah. many great characters. But why? Why would you do this? Why do you have so many spare chromosomes? Why do you want to write insufferable cunts? I don't want you wasting your life. At least I'm still trying to do something with mine. If your brain exploded, would it even mess up your hair? She's disappointed in you. I got that, yeah. Thank you. Do you mind, you dumpy fuckle nitwit like, mushroom? This man is so, so rude. Invasive. So rude. It is rude. Trying to leash his daughter in from having a bloody milkshake-fueled brat attack that could cost them their lives, and you have the temerity to reach into their heads where you are absolutely and obviously not fucking welcome. Temerity, by the way. Underrated word. The cool word. Yep and share your thoughts? Eavesdropping is bad enough even without the stealing thoughts from people bit, you dopey shot. That name. Janet. Van Dyne? Where is she? That's what we're trying to find out. You know her? So it turns- Where is this energy when she finally gets to meet <laughs> Janet, or at least is close to Janet at the end of the yeah, film? Yeah, of like, wow, you ass. You ruined everything. It's, uh, ran away. would have actually been pretty interesting for the, you know, Kang to be defeated and then for her to be like, you know how many people we lost, right? Mm. And, and you did it, why? Uh, well, because you wanted to hang out with your daughter again. That's nice for you that you got to escape. Yeah. You could just picture oh Jada being like, let's go, let's go, let's get out of here, let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Out, Tryhard recognizes the name Janet and orders the evacuation. Take them as far away from here as you can. What? If you're looking for Janet... He's looking for you. Uh, you already said he was looking yeah. for them. You literally said this. You come from above, so he is hunting you. He will burn the world to find you. So he was very much looking for them, but now he's super very much looking for them. Maybe. Or Dumb maybe shit. you cut this film together with a blender, a shoe, and some cheese. Regardless, <laughs> it would seem there is a hum on the air as the enemies approach. We recommend Smiling Friends, by the way. You should all check yeah. it out if you haven't. Shh. Soldiers are arriving from the Conqueror's army. This is bad news for everyone, so Tryhard lets us know what she thinks. You led them straight to us. You led them it's so funny. What a stupid us. fucking Perhaps line. Women were a mistake. Cassie and Scott were kidnapped, brought to this settlement and interrogated, only to then be questioned further when saying they might be able to help, but also that they want to go home. To then earn themselves this absolute banner of a line. You led them straight to us. 
No, they didn't, you weapons-grade Redditor. This doesn't bode well for Tryhard's brain, what little there may be. She can now comfortably join the ranks of several great moments in media, such as Vader chasing Obi-Wan Kenobi across the galaxy to finally <laughs> reach him and say, Have you come to destroy me, What? Obi-Wan? You're the one that arrived <laughs> here! You what the fuck? Here? I will you... do what I must. Did it what? Disney just belting out classic after classic. Well, time to run, everybody. Probably time for Cassie to suit up as well, but as we've seen time and time again, she most certainly does not have her suit. <laughs> Man, whoever's organizing this must really want Cassie and Scott dead. Look, everybody, an army of robots to kill and feel nothing about. I can't wait to see a collection of nuts and bolts fall to the ground when... <laughs> Oh, what? God. Why is he sludge now? She slapped him with a stick and he turned into a Disney product. Robots made of sludge? Sure, I guess. No idea why, but whatever. Should probably use that wow, laser. Wow, I just noticed as well, his laser Maybe is like, uh... It bounces. He's doing like the Omega Beam yep. thing. Like uh, hence why he should use it a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, goddamn. On the dropships, but whatever. Scott and Cassie then spend the next 30 seconds escaping death very narrowly. Just several moments where luck decided they live a little longer. Or main character status. Either way, Scott is just refusing to put that helmet on, eh? Just leaving yourself wide open. <laughs> Dude, I can't help but feel sorry for the composer right now, who has to cram a semblance of the Ant-Man uh, theme that's, right that's, into that. Th that's 30 Simpsons references so far. Not bad. Three seconds yeah. of fighting, because of course you have to. It's Ant-Man's first significant multiple men fight in the movie, but holy fuck is that theme crushed. <laughs> And they just keep on doing that bullshit with the helmets coming up and down. We all know it's to make sure you see the actors, but god damn. Any way you can facilitate that need without making it seem as though nobody wants to live? <laughs> Oh, wow, so like these living buildings or whatever can take down the incoming yeah, ships holy with shit, one look at shot? That. You could just stand one your shot. ground, lads. You'll probably win. Either do that or run your evacuation when you first mentioned the dangers. That would have been neat. <laughs> So, Tryhard starts using her really cool stick to kill all the robots, and as the audience struggles to understand the stakes, she is struck by laser wire and all seems lost. Especially when seeing Cassie's reaction. Just, uh, not really feeling much of anything specific there, are ya? Paul Rudd, on the other hand, does resignation, likely due to having decided to save this lady despite what it may cost him, to then reach confusion, shock, concern, and panic as he realizes Cassie is gone. Acting. The point, however, is that Cassie has indeed ran off to go and save Tryhard. I, uh, let's take a look at that, shall we? Here it is. <laughs> it was funny showing my, uh, my sister that she found it absolutely shocking that this would have been, like, sort of released. The... Um... The, oh, yeah, because it's a promotional thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're putting your best foot forward and it looks awful. And I still don't understand how... Why didn't they just get someone in a suit to run? Why Why didn't they just do that? Why, why would you CG it? Just get her to run. It's less work and it looks better. And you can cut it so that there's no problem. Just have her on your soundstage and then blue screen in the background and get taken care of. Have her run. That is it. And again, I mean, it's worth pointing out as well, like, throughout this whole battle, there is an astounding lack of visual clarity. It's so fucking muddy. Yeah. Like, the colors are really desaturated. And it's, it's like, everything... It, it feels like it's hard to make out any of the details, and it kind of needs to be that way. Because if you could make out the details, you'd notice how bad it is. I mean, it's something that, um... You have to slow down to notice it, but when uh, Scott and Cassie are running away and all of the blasts are happening... Like, when there's flashes of light, it's like, you can see, it, it's like an outline around them of the original background that they were running on, that would have been on the, the, uh, the, the stage, the, what's it called, the, the, the uh, volume? yeah, the volume, before they changed their mind partway through, and changed it. It looks so bad. <laughs> 
And yes, of course, uh, classic meme here. And uh, part of what I thought was the strength of it, of course, was just uh, I can. This is almost like a setup for later jokes that, whenever I show quickly some of the CG related to masks or sizing and stuff, I can just play his laughing relatively quickly. Uh, quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, this franchise is impossible to <laughs> underestimate. So Cassie hits the guy the who classic. was on Try Hard, and yeah. then she takes her helmet off, only to put it back on, because I guess some people might not know this is Cassie Lang. Ant Girl, or whatever. Isn't Wasp already Ant Girl, kinda? She fucks up the fight, and Scott saves- We'll say, a lot of ant people running around, and it's just, uh... I guess in a sense that it makes sense to give Hank and Wasp and Janet their suits, but at the same time, I guess you don't want to because it's just like, God, everybody's just ad, everybody's doing ad stuff. You gotta be careful. You say it by doing a jumping attack right at the last moment. <laughs> <laughs> the animation. It's oh. so ugly. Uh... For fuck's sake, does it get worse? Cassie then talks about how. Oh, and the, yeah, so it's worth mentioning, when I say it doesn't get worse, there was a very, very subtle MODOK face right there. <laughs> yes, there uh, was. <laughs> and I think at the beginning of the video, when I say, when uh, Wanda says, is this really happening, I think there's another very subtle MODOK face there as well. Yeah, I mean, people should already have gleaned this, but the way that these videos work is that it's all chronological and, and like, it's very... Very, very, very rarely will any visual be used that's later on in the in the uh, in the video, which it's... can actually make it challenging at the beginning because it's like, oh, it'd be really good to like have that visual from later on, but you just gotta show some restraint and use uh, only from what you have so far. And um, yeah, these are all very subtle little like Easter eggs, but also, as uh, Fringe just said, that that's the reason why there's no EFAP clips until Modox revealed because yeah. Uh, we don't want anybody, anybody who hasn't seen this film and doesn't know a lot about MODOK, you know, the thumbnail doesn't necessarily give it away. It's it, it's kind of, you know, it's a dumb fucking face. But when you see him in all of his splendor upon intro, it's quite a thing. And of course, we yes. could have used his face up to this point for different reactions. We were like, no, we're going to wait until he's actually in it. And then uh, that just reflects everything else. We don't want to use visuals from ahead of time so that it all hits you for the first time as you go. How shocking it is that she has a suit. I have a suit! Yeah, I noticed. And I noticed that you didn't put that suit on here, 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 or here. In fact, neither of you even tried to escape Team Quantard when they captured you. You know, going really small and hiding behind a rock to then dig yourself a hole in the floor might actually save you. But hey, I didn't design the tech, so what do I know? You don't look like idiots at all. Scott then teaches Cassie how to utilize the attacks as an ant person, which is neat, only it has a distinctly funny tone to it. It fucking blew my mind when I checked out the audio commentary and that the creators themselves said pretty awkward we have this you know at the same time that everyone's getting masked around them but you make it work yes somehow you make it work and it's like mm. I feel like you highlighted that because you know it doesn't work you know they shouldn't be joking when a war is happening and it's uh, quite drastic for the very people that Cassie's invested in just just doesn't work it when everyone around them is being slaughtered. You see what I did? No. You're like this small. I jumped into half. Oh. Bit weird to show Cassie is invested in saving these people from annihilation to the point of getting herself almost killed with her father saving her to then be like, I know how to do it, Dad. I messed up on the timing. So anyway, the mind raper detects an incoming. Not sure what he's detecting here since oh he's goodness, a mind raper like, of people. Seriously who though, what is he? How is he detecting Mo Modok? How? He's a mind that reader one, of people right in front yeah. of him. I guess, I don't know, he just catches it in his peripheral, like, mind. I just vision. think that they wanted to make it one of the main characters, like I pointed out, but really you could have had Laser Face Guy run up to her and say, he's coming. Or something yeah, like that. exactly. But that would make him. more no sense. No way he's it? detecting a ship more than a mile away, right? Or a person. Well, you all knew we'd get here at some point. <laughs> this all is, uh, punch, this section was particularly fun for visuals. It was fun scripting too, because it, it was for me like the first time I can... This is the most absurd shit. Sometimes I think that, uh, you might think this in chat, you're, we're a bit desensitized because we've seen so much of him. But when you first see this creature, I remember the first time I saw him was because there was a tiny bit of him in the first trailer. Yeah. 
That's but like right. it was so and quick that people real. didn't believe the image was real. I don't know if any of you in chat right now were on the real BBC episode where I put it on the screen and and we were like the people in chat were like that's not real. And then uh, I nope. went to the actual trailer itself and paused it. I was like, it's real. Yeah. That's him. Fucking yeah. it's, shocking. I mean, it is. It is kind of. It 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 is like begs. It's it's unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> real, really, that this could make its way into a two hundred million dollar production. That it's, this was uh, considered acceptable. Wild. You all knew I guess, this uh, was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So love that say about the visuals here is that I think this was the main portion of the video where. There'd be times when I was uh, doing stuff like before or after where I would have a visual and think like, mm, maybe I'll save that one for later. Like I wouldn't feel confident necessarily using it when it could be used later. Uh, this was the point where I basically decided whatever I think is like the best visual, this is the time to use it. This is the part to... Because especially with like how... This this part's really funny. Like it's it's meant to be like really funny and just sort of like letting loose about how hilarious this is. So it seemed it's it seemed like it would be a good idea to essentially use all of the best visuals I could think of for this section and to use a lot of them, like not hold on anyone for too long, get a bunch of variety. Um <laughs> this this was it took a while mm -hmm. to cut this portion together, but I think it turned out really well. The Quantards begin to escape, and this creature narrowly misses several strikes on both Cassie and Scott, only to then finally reveal himself <laughs> to the world. I've been waiting a long time for this. What? A destiny you cannot escape. So this is Modok, a well-known character from the comics reimagined for the movies, and in this adaptation, he is Darren Cross. If you remember Ant-Man 1, Darren Cross, he got sucked down and... Blew. Yeah, when, when I know what the next project's gonna be, <laughs> uh, then there's a particularly funny thing that's happening on Open Bar, EFAB, or Real BBC, I'm just like, I gotta, gotta snatch him and put him in you. But into the into the quantum realm. Dr Drinker's reactions to things are quite funny. Elm Kang found him. Oh yeah, and they are. I guess saved his life, and so he's literally a head with tiny flume arms and legs. Oh fuck off! No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rival and enemy in Ant Man One, all those years ago. Darren. Surprised to see me. Now, <laughs> this, <laughs> these Simpsons jokes, this this was a while in, in construction, so I was like, I've got to figure out a way to make some consistent but repeating jokes with just Modoc and uh, Homer screaming came to mind quite early on in terms of just like, that seems like a really appropriate reaction. And then I was like, and there's loads of them. And so I just went hunting for Simpsons screams, uh, Homer ones, and then I tried to order them such that the first one is a very straightforward screen, but by the time you hit the last one, it's like uh, dynamically edited, and you know, it, it, it's uh, even the one that the takes a little bit for you need to be a Simpsons fan to understand why I edited the way you know, the the die diet one, like, yeah, that one is pretty good. He screams <laughs> when he sees Modoc with the mask up, and then the mask out. And, and uh, I remember Rags was laughing at it. I was like, so hopefully that works whether or not you know the reference, which I think has a double layer of working then as well. But, I think uh, um, going for home screaming makes a lot of sense because he just screams a lot. There's, there's like a, there, there was as many as you would need to make it a, a running gag compared to if you picked other. But yeah. it's just appropriate. Like, look at this. It's a scary image. Yes. What the fuck? Like, actually, what the fuck? I became the ultimate weapon. Ultimate? You became- What the fuck is happening to me? Why did they do this? Why did they do that to film? Did they lose a bet? <laughs> did they need to launder money? Did the mob capture someone's family? Why? Why is Darren this? <laughs> that How did it even happen? <laughs> Why did they do this to Corey Stoll's face? Darren is dead! <laughs> there is only- Monarch! Stop! I'm begging you to stop. And now all he needs is you. <laughs> He's like trying to be sinister and it's just like, what the fuck? It's funny. Stop your ass with this Google <laughs> chumpling lips. Fucking stretched out baby rage, Humpty Dumpty handball thumb. What the fuck were you thinking? It just cuts off like we have in any way agreed for it to end. For that sin to simply slink away. <laughs> it's so bad. 
Tryhard and the Mind Toucher are captured, along with Cassie and Scott, somehow. They could have gone tiny, split up, and made it difficult as hell for Modok to even find them. Or they could have gone big and punched him in the face. I mean, he is mostly... Yeah, what if they punched him in the face? That might work. Hmm. Uh, no, it wouldn't. Nah, nah, that but they surrender for some reason. Great, perhaps it's time to go back to the world of Hope, Hank, and Janet, eh? What's after Scott and Cassie? We have to find them! So and on that, I was actually going to say, uh, me and Freeman might check out these, uh, we've had some super chats in, and since we don't want to get confusing with doing catch-ups for streams that are minis that are also not, with rags isn't even here, and it's, you know, it's going to get complicated, so we'll try and cover these uh, within this yeah. stream itself. We... That there are a couple of portions in the video that probably are that there are there are stories to to tell, but I guess we could just jump to those parts. Uh, sure. Any uh, the one that sticks out is the socialist ants, uh, like Soviet Union thing. Yeah, was, yeah. There's a bit uh, of a story for that. There's one. kind of a story there because I I can't remember what it was, but I think it was just as we were working on it that I think it was floated. I wait. Was it? Did you come up with that one, or was that? I know that we were talking about it, like, if, uh... I'm pretty sure you made the joke party. of them arriving with that theme. The, the the interesting thing was that I got hit with copyright the first time around testing it. Well, yeah, because the joke originally was, yeah, just play the, the Soviet Union, like, national anthem while the ants are attacking, but get it louder and louder and louder until the audio starts clipping, because that's really funny. Yeah, and but that then, yeah, got, got hit with copyright. copyright. And so, and so uh, got... overlayed the uh, flute version or recorder version, whatever, and, um... You know, fucked around with it so that it can't be claimed by anybody. It's just, but it's recognizably the Soviet theme. The amount of jokes I've seen in videos with that, I was like, how the hell did I get hit with copyright? Like, I I, I didn't realize that people actually like, and people like, yeah, who copyrighted? It's like that's the thing. I don't remember. I did check because I just immediately fixed it, but it must be one of those situations where uh, YouTube's DMCA system or, or copyright infringement system is just fucked to the point where you can upload something that's like. Uh, you know, publicly available, and then claim other videos that use it. Which makes the, you an extremely is, piece of shit person, by the way. Making the change with the, the, uh, the, what is, it's like the recorder version of it, and then mixing it in, I still think that works pretty well. Yeah, it, um, the recorder stuff always funny. works, it's just automatically yeah. funny. I don't know, there's just something really funny to me about playing the Soviet Union, like, national anthem, and it getting louder and louder and louder as the ants go, because I think it just emphasizes the absurdity of socialist ants yeah. as like a concept that this film presented. What um it's what we so... can do if you uh we'll play it but on very low volume and if anything comes to mind that you want to talk about we can but while it's playing I'll just read out uh super chat yeah, yeah, something well, I have to actually, do. Actually uh, I know that something that's dead. probably worth mentioning is like the, the challenge involved in um as we were working on it we were waiting desperately for the uh for the uh the assembled for uh this film yes but it just kept getting it, it kept getting delayed and delayed probably because of all the stuff having to do with uh so, for those who don't know some of my, my most valued quotes to do with the construction of mom was from the assembled um mom behind the scenes thing we learned a decent chunk about how like things were made including of course the um the second act third act and the him talk all this stuff about how the script was made was in the uh, assembled and it's absolutely insane. I don't know how long we'll be able to get more of stuff like that before they stop uh, because it's the most embarrassing shit. No, 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 no. I'm talking specifically Sorry. about commenting on the construction of the script. Why the hell did they let him do that? Oh, well, yeah, because um, it's it's strange, right? You think that the assembled is meant to be essentially the the opportunity for them to essentially make themselves look better in terms of all of the work that goes into making films because a lot of work does go into making films. And the thing is. In these, like, behind-the-scenes things, you get a lot of appreciation for, like, the set designers, costumes, visual effects guys, even, you know, with crunch and everything, yeah. like the designers, uh, and, and actors as well. You, you, get, you, you get to look at all of the hard work of everybody, and then you get the really embarrassing quotes about the writing from the writers. Because that's where the, the uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's Unforgiven was, uh, that was from <laughs> The Assembled. And The Assembled came out, like, I think it came out like two weeks before before we finished this. Absolute nightmare. Uh, I had to rewrite the process for that. Actually, yeah, I suppose I could talk about that. Is that the video is done and then assembled comes out? Which, by the way, it was delayed. We believe anyway. I, I think it's a pretty strong theory because they weren't sure about it uh, no. being promoting um, 
How am I forgetting his name? Actor for Kang. Uh, Jonathan Majors. Yeah, it's... And, um... and I think it, it's really clear because uh, as I was watching it, there was this part where... Because it, it opens with them talking basically, oh yeah, we're going to make like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, but Ant-Man, you know, all that shit. And then it starts to get to, you know, like Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly talking about their characters. And then you get a part where they talk about Kang. And there's like a 30 second portion in there where it just plays like music while showing everybody but Jonathan Majors like in a room, like reading the script and laughing and, you know, having a good time. It's so clear that that was a part where they were talking about him as an actor playing Kang. And, they just, and like, then they cut it. Yeah, they like, yeah if you watch, okay. um, <laughs> it's still available. The, the Blu-ray version of this has best special features on it where the sections about Kang are all about how great Jonathan Majors is as an actor, how uh, wonderful it is to work with him, how he has such great ideas to bring toward the character and that he himself gets lots of time talking about how invested he is in Kang. He even has this line in the... um behind the scenes where he was like, when he first saw the costume and he realized when he put it on, like, this is the first time of so many where I'm going to be playing Kang. He's going to be such an important character to me and, like, it's something going forward. And then you watch the, the the Assembled and they mostly only talk about Kang. They don't really talk about they Jonathan talk about Majors. They talk about Kang and they talk about the costume. Yeah. They, uh, they gloss over it. It's kind of fascinating to, uh, to see that. The thing is, yeah, the, the special features for the, uh, for the, like, Blu-ray, that days as it was intended as part of their yeah. it's interesting to see like the, the strategies that are often employed by marvel in terms of you notice when you look at the projects and the way that they're marketed <laughs> they have like these very specific objectives in terms of this is what we want people to think about our projects and the more that we can say that the more that people will accept that to be the case yeah. um secret invasion it's gritty it's mature it's you know it's grounded that's that's like the the thing that they kept saying over and over and over again um, what they say for multiverse? Uh, I mean, a lot of it was hyping up Wonder, well, right? Wonder, Wonder, and, uh, Wonder. Yeah. yeah, Sam Raimi. Yeah, look at all these crazy shots. Um, it's 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 fascinating to see that. And clearly, the one with Quantum Mania was Kang, Kang, Jonathan Majors, Kang, uh, and assembled. <laughs> Just it yeah, shows and after what happened. So assembled was supposed to come out. Uh, was it June or July twenty first? Uh, or something? They usually come out. Few months after, so it was probably meant to come out around June, July, and it, it eventually ended it just, up coming out like at the and, end and, of July. You know, this work is all all scheduled and prepared to account for that, and then it just didn't. And I remember I was at a point where I was like, "This is probably not going to be included," and then it just drops randomly. Yeah, and I think um, I just opened up Disney Plus. It's like, oh shit, it's it like is. it's out. It's just there. And so uh, uh, the way that yeah. works is I have to watch it, watch it with Fringy, and every point of interest, every quote of interest, every bit of revelation, like. I have to note in timestamp of like where it is and then I have to figure out how I can get that into the script that either supports a current point or is added on to a section that it's relevant in and it has to be done you know not so stapley I'll try and point them out if we come across one in the sections we have left because we're probably not going to cover the whole video uh quickly realizing we're an hour and 15 into the film uh, I, I say film into... six hours is a bit long for a film yeah. um and yeah we're already three and a half and we haven't uh responded to any messages yet so uh but there are times where uh one of the earlier ones is when i talk about the suits like that wasn't in the original cut but it was once the behind the scenes came out because that's just pure evidence that there was a script once upon a time where they accounted for the physics slash the, yeah, the dangers but they gave up that stuff is invaluable in terms of giving you insight into it because Behind the scenes also has way more of Bill Murray in it. There's just scenes that he's in that aren't in the film. Yeah. There's a there's a scene where he's he's like in a, a scene with Cassie. So he was clearly meant to be a bigger part of that film, but they cut it. The, it's, the, it's, the two big ones. Crazy. He tosses that security guard man into the the quantum storm or whatever, the probability storm. Yeah. But that was cut. And then yeah, he's uh, he's trying to stop uh try hard and her friends from escaping the prison cells. And it's like, Jesus, he was in the whole movie. The cut all it's, of it. It's crazy. It's it's astounding. But it's I like all of this is kind of the challenges of um I know it was a problem I had with the end game video was I started writing it before Loki came out, and then as that was progressing, I just realized like I have to account for this. You just have to. It's kind of like the difficulty of the longer it goes on, the yeah. more new information you have to deal with in this case as well. Cause I think you the the special features that was like incorporated while you were scripting, but then we had to try and figure out a way to, I say we, it was mainly you, figuring out how to put, uh, 
the stuff from the assembled into the video after yeah, yeah. it was already mostly completed. Incorporating it in a way that doesn't come across as shit and stapled is really annoying, but uh, hopefully yeah. it was pulled off. The audience may decide on that one. <clears throat> so, yeah, if you just turn the bodily fluids volume down, we can, we'll start yeah, no, I've, I've talking got about yeah. so, oh, good. oh my goshness, a video commentary? In the words of Viceroy's, this is incredible! Yeah, uh, uh, it's a bit of a weird thing. Uh, not something we've done before. Bit of fun. I'm gonna turn it down even more, because I imagine it's clashing right now. Uh, this is the real EFAP 250, 195 wasn't a real episode. Wait, but why would- if 195 wasn't real, why would this be 250? You could just say this is 195, because this is a mini. If you don't consider- I'm assuming 195 was like a, a one where we chatted about stuff. Or are they- are they saying that it means that the anniversary was technically 249? Oh, well. <laughs> Fine. But I was gonna say though, this is a mini though, so that doesn't even make sense. That's right. So the next- the next EFAP episode will be 250. Well, I, what I mean is that this re replaced 195 and 250 is 250. Um, yeah, we, we could also that this. Yeah. A simple thanks for all the hard work it took to do. Well played, chaps. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. We're quite happy with how it turned out, I think. Uh, yes. I think it's... Uh, the classic <laughs> Homer screen. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I think I just turned out really uh, well. Uh, I'm surprised Hank gave the socialism line considering he lost Janet when disabling a Soviet nuclear missile in 1987. Guess that wasn't real socialism. Well, he's also, he's quite, he'd be obsessed with patents, right? And um, protecting sort of property. I imagine it's part of the protecting the PIM stuff. But ultimately, one could possibly say that all of it was just memes. I don't know if Loveness would say that or not. Yeah. Well, I don't know. As we can tell, he he's quite happy with the socialist aspect. He was Look, like, they said a lot of weird things, right? Like, yeah. they had the thing with the, the broccoli man. You gotta do better, broccoli people. <laughs> what the hell was that? And then, what was the, the part where he's like, oh, yeah, you know, themes. We got themes of revolution and stuff. Like, come on, man. Like, can't you at least admit that what you made is, like, shallow and shit? Why are you even, like, <laughs> pretending that it's this lofty story with these themes? Or is that a meme, too? Why would they are ever just memeing that? about the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, well, remember, he said it was, uh, <laughs> again, Michelle Pfeiffer's is Unforgiven. Yes. Which, by the way, that was in Assembled and it was in the uh, audio commentary. Yeah, I wanted like, to make I sure really people like understood that. that. <laughs> I sense... you imagine having the balls to compare this to Unforgiven? Oh, it's so wrong. So wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I sense a great new addition to my EFAP collection. Oh, oh, hopefully, yeah. Wow. Hopefully it was interesting and illuminating. Hey, Mubshly, my bank, my bank flagged one of my anniversary Super Chats as illegal activity. What sort of operation are you exactly running here? Well, of course it all goes to fund my, uh, my crazy large project of launching an enormous robot into space. So it's, uh, <laughs> get in trouble. Also, we've, we've responded, we've done all of the, uh, anniversary Super Chats. Those will be out soon as recordings. Yes. We're still right. uh, going to be doing the recordings for the other EFA episodes we've missed. We're still we're still on the way. And of course, uh, answering Super Chats right now. Impossible happened. Netflix One Piece is good. I've heard about this. Apparently it's good. I've heard it's alright. Uh, Which uh, I guess, yeah, that is unique for uh, anime adaptations. Yep. Inclu especially on Netflix. The uh, Kind of scary, isn't it? We're entering that? a scary new world where anime adaptations might be okay. God. Two questions. How much research did you do into Ant-Man 1 and 2? So, well, I rewatched them and just uh, sort of tried to have a focus in my head of what I believe is established fully about these characters. I didn't, you know, I'd happily admit Ant-Man's not the person I'm most invested in the MCU or wasn't, but uh, as of where we were in Phase 4, he probably is one of the people I'm most invested in. Um, yeah. In terms of who's left. And uh, when you rewatch the other movies and then rewatch this one, you get it's just staggering the amount they missed out on and clearly didn't care about or understand, especially being that Peyton Reed directed all three. That's insane. Well, it's, um, it's, it's, it's kind of by, by simply watching the first two films and incorporating, uh, observations about those films into this review. I, I feel like, um, a lot of the discussion around this film didn't deal much with, uh, the first two films. It kind of treated it as his own thing, but when you realize how much it contradicts the prior two films and uh, Scott's other appearances in other films, it's astounding. Mm. Uh, and what is the 
What is one strange thing you didn't remember about them? About Ant-Man 1 and 2? Um, to be honest with you, the biggest shock was that Ant-Man 2 was not as bad as I remembered. It was like, it's a very meh move. It's part of the fact that you just don't remember anything. A lot of it doesn't make Which, sense. The biggest issue I remember taking with it at the time and still do is the, yeah, the, and nothing's explained. They just keep saying quantum and then they point that out as well. It's like, good for you. Yeah, like quantum, quantum, quantum. But I mean, it's uh, it's kind of that what's happened now with phase four is it's set a new bar for how low it can go. That, and that, like the middling, mediocre, forgettable films of uh, yesteryear are like, oh, wow, they're, like, not bad compared to, <laughs> compared you know, to where the, we're at. The shrinking and growing action scenes, there's actually some cool stuff in that film. It's not worthless. Um, uh, well, yeah, it's something that got lost in uh, Ant-Man 3 was... <laughs> Randy Poopin. Uh, it's something that got <laughs> lost in Ant-Man 3 was playing with size in a way that was creative and easy to understand as a viewer. Like, the first film and the second film use household objects, making them bigger and smaller, or having characters small relative to, like, a kitchen or a bathroom or, like, a, a, a toy. That That's, like, really easy and fun, and, and they don't do that in this film. They don't play with size uh, no, really in not. any creative ways. So even Ant-Man and the Wasp does, right? Where the, the notable one was when um, Hope knocks over the uh the salt shaker shoots it makes it grow big to block the door and the guy bumps into it. it's like yeah it's creative it is or like the hello kitty pez dispenser that she throws out and makes bigger it's like that's that's a lot of fun and they they don't do that in this film at all yeah because you except it, the, it's all that relativity stuff like the guy has to avoid it with his motorbike is the the pez versus the bike it, it looks it's something that makes you go huh it's a funny clash uh, that calls attention to the the size thing. Whereas here, we just don't get that. And part of it, like it's it's not it's not that it would have been impossible because the fact that the quantum realm is so normal and mundane for a sci-fi world, the fact that it's got regular appliances, regular sort of sense of size, it means they could have still done that. Like if if they had the fight in the bar or something, and you had I don't know Hope running along next to all of the the bottles and like using those and throwing them at a, uh, at, at, a, at like the, the guys that they're fighting. They could have done that, but they still didn't. It's like they still didn't seize the opportunities that were present in the quantum realm. It's weird. Yeah, and uh, the, the, another annoying factor is that Scott is kind of an idiot throughout the movie. Um, he's mostly playing catch up to everybody else, everyone else's goals, yeah. like be it Goliath or Hank and Janet or. Uh, hope whatever else he's mostly just there trying to make up for the mistake he did in civil war which isn't exactly like according to the movie it's just like he got caught and then he ditched the suit and it's just like how did i guess okay again he is ant-man it should be hard for him to get captured but fine okay and yeah the movie is him trying to make up for his mistakes that he made in favor of helping other people which i think is on brand for him so like it's mostly forgivable but yeah that'd be the most Surprising thing about rewatching them is I don't I don't dislike it as much as I thought I did. Um, also, would you consider having fringy voice sections for these collabs? I am totally fine and interested in possibly setting up projects where we have more like voices in one video. But this, the the, the idea here was more so to provide him stuff to be able to work with and uh, essentially have an editing job to to commit to, not necessarily to you know make something that we both want to have a part in. But that could happen in future. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's it's just visuals. <laughs> it's it's uh, just it's mainly there to complete and enhance the uh, the primarily the work of this chap here. Yeah, because uh, you guys want stuff faster, and <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. this is the and the only way to make it faster and still have it be good is to have more people work on it. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, hi, Fringy. Thoughts on Pikmin Four? Cheers. Uh, I think it's pretty great. I'm nearly finished with it. I've nearly 100%ed it. That game is super fun. I don't have a good point of reference for the other Pikmin games. I haven't played them, but Pikmin 4 is uh, real cool. That's a fun game. Uh, hi, Ra. Wait, something's wrong here. Oh, yeah. Hi, Rags, I guess. Uh, as I said at the beginning, Rags is not actually home right now. And this is obviously yeah. something that we thought we could do that uh, Rags would feel a bit third wheelie on, I imagine, because... Uh, just mainly trying to talk about the production of this video. Sure. Yeah. Uh, hi, Long Man and Plague Man. I just finished watching the anniversary stream this Friday. Its length made it a massive. 
It is a big boy. Yeah, it's a massive one. That's why I like space mount a little bit so you uh, don't feel like you're overwhelmed. <laughs> but you probably were anyway. <laughs> Um, maybe it's a little bit racially insensitive of me not to know, but what's the difference between a fleam, a flim flam, and a floomp? Once again, good work. Well, great work, sorry. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, it is a bit insensitive, but that's okay. Uh, context clues always give it away. You can always tell exactly what those words mean just by how they're used in a sentence. They're, they're beautiful like that. Uh, it's wonderfully straightforward. A dictionary will be released one day, I'm sure. Um, farewell and adieu to you fair fleamish massives. Farewell and adieu to you massives of fleam. Jaws for EFAP movies. You you sent this as part of the anniversary ones as well. Um, maybe at some point, don't know if Jaws works quite the way that we want for EFAP movies, but um, maybe. It, it would be on, the list it's on, there would be a few other things that would make it in before Jaws would, you know? Yeah, probably. No, almost certainly. So that's no, it can't be true. I could be gay if I wanted to. Like a guy who is gay. I believe I am gay. I am gay. This is the gay actor Michael Douglas, I think. Ah. Director's commentary, nice. Also, Dark Souls 1 is good. I agree. With with both of those sentiments. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess, is it director's commentary or is it comment commentator's commentary? Critiquer's commentary? Whatever anyone wants to call it, I'm yep. fine with it. <laughs> Fletcher's face there. <laughs> he has a lot of funny expressions. Um, why did you use that specific Ma Miss Marvel clip at the beginning of the video since you haven't seen the show? I think the CG looks awful. It just looks bad. Yeah. Um, not to say that Miss Marvel is a bad show, because right, I haven't seen it, but... Uh... Uh, it seems like the sentiment is that that's one of the better ones, but the fact that nobody talks about it is not a great sign in terms of it being genuinely great. No. And plus, I heard it's got time travel, so... <laughs> you know what that means, typically. You get into that watch together, watch together goes on the internet, you go out on the, the internet, shark's on the internet. Our shark, Jaws EFAP. Maybe someday. Uh, the more nanotech helmets. Oh, that was, because that was something that uh, we were just noticing more and more of the shitty nanotech helmets as we were editing. Yeah. When you're putting in visuals and you're figuring things out, like, you know, sometimes down to like a frame by frame uh, basis, you start to notice how bad the nanotech helmets are. Yeah, like, it's, um... The ones that don't line up properly, the ones that like animate so quickly that you can barely even comprehend what's happening. When they're zoomed in and slowed down, it starts to get shocking. Like, you don't you realize how notice. bad they are. Yeah. And the thing is, if you slow down, like, Iron Man suiting up in the older movies, you don't have this problem of just, like, the faceplate popping up or popping down. Like, that stuff works fine. Look at look at that helmet. Like, that looks shit. <laughs> yes. Kang's helmet looks particularly bad. The thing that you notice is how bad, um... It has terrible tracking. Like, the shot when he, um... The shot when he does the blast, you know, the one that they use in the trailer... Like, his face is moving in a way that doesn't align with the helmet. It's like it's moving within the helmet. It looks awful, especially when you slow down and zoom in. Um, and it'd be annoying because someone would be like, oh, well, yeah, but, like, no film holds up to scrutiny. And it's like, nah, they hold up way better. Like, there are things where it looks even better when you start to notice when you slow down. It just looks shit. True. This movie tries to portray Scott as an egotist asshole with how he saved the world and how he listens to himself, but Scott is literally the nicest guy featured in the MCU. Why did they even try? To give him yeah. something to learn. He needed something to learn. <laughs> That's right. He needed something to learn. And, you know, whether it was congruent with this character or not, it's the only way that he can learn something is to learn a lesson he never needed to learn. You should help people. Just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's not happening. It's like, dude, Scott is like one of the last people you can say that to. He will go above and beyond and well out of his way to help people. He helped, like, he helped, uh, he helped Hope and, uh, and Hank at great potential cost to himself. He, if he, if they found out, he would have been sent to jail. It's really sad, because, um, I imagine they'd be like, well, where else are we going to take him? It's like, ugh. Yeah, what where shame. else can we take him? Oh, and also, I think this is the montage section, actually. Scott Lee. Fucking uh, oh, yeah, we Helmets should. Again. Let's, let's bump up the, <sighs> the, the volume days. on this one. <laughs> uh, the clunk. So pleasing to the senses. Yeah. Bringing him in. Sorry about this.
all those circuits and and then it yeah. went to place. <laughs> <laughs> the no, oh, the tracking on all oh, these guys is so bad. so bad. Yeah, this this worst Iron Man suit up, I think. Yep. Oh, so bad. Look at that. Come on, that's unacceptable. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Look at her hair and her ears. It's so weird. Uh, Carl stepping over here. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that that Fast might be the worst one. All right, one. enough. Back that to the That might movie. be the worst I don't know one. Who you are, like, it looks like it's a like a PNG file that's been like put over. It looks awful. Yeah. It's so bad. Um, a mother cried when you described the birthday scene. You know, I hate the birthday scene? What, like a, when Scott went to, uh... In MM1 or MM3? Uh, was there a... Oh, uh, at the end of the film, you mean? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Probably the MM1 one. Um, Muller, I'm on the RSVP list for the Hot Toys Modoc to send you. Of only one condition, <laughs> you set it up to watch you sleep. <laughs> Can you imagine waking up in the middle of the night and seeing Murdoch staring at you? Every once in a while he says, surprised to see me. The Bible and unrivaled idled rage wed? Uh, probably not. Probably not going to do that. That's, uh, you know, it's one of them uh, media breakdowns that I don't, I'm, not, I'm not particularly passionate about the Bible, you know? It's not, it's not my thing. Uh, wish Cassie was just a normal teenager who shrunk because she's with her dad and the movie is Scott hyper on edge protecting his daughter in a realm that she isn't trained for with her as the reliable PO relatable POV. So uh, something Loveness says in the um, yeah, behind the scenes stuff. He's like, she was brought into this world by Scott and now he's got to take this a lot more seriously. Both things are not true. It's it's strange. He makes the observation that Scott's taking it more seriously, but he's not. He just not isn't. Normal. He's taking it less seriously, if anything. Yeah, he he's still joking around with someone who's got them in prison cells and has the power to kill them at a moment's notice. It's, uh, uh, you could argue God. that's in. Oh shit! This is the introduction <laughs> of the audio commentary, isn't it? Yeah, let's let's uh. That's right. If he's not allowed to speak to you while you're in the room, is it all done through comms <laughs> devices? Sounds retarded. He asked Murdoch a question. Murdoch's like, nah. oh, just steps out. Is that the first the time that you found the ads? Yeah, because be. obviously the idea here is that we've introduced Murdoch now. Don't do the yeah. trope so. of the bad guy hurting his henchman. I hope that's funny for anybody who hadn't seen that episode so. that we're all Murdoch. It is so fucking lame. The bad guy killing or hurting his own henchman. I'm tired of it. It's lame. Boring, yeah. It's it's genuinely interesting if you present. It's, it's, um, it's, oh my god, and The Simpsons, when he goes to, uh, no, I can't <laughs> believe I'm, his name is escaping me, um. Hank Scorpio? Yeah, yeah, Hank Scorpio, like, it's one of the reasons why Hank Scorpio is so memorable as a character, is he's like a supervillain who genuinely cares about Homer. And who works like, for him, really yeah, there's people him. who works for him, matter. He's, he's like an awesome boss, but his business is evil, like, this, yeah. this, and, and it's like, why does that stick out? It's because you never see that. You never see the henchman who, who, uh, who, like, cares about his employees. It's, it's, it would be downright, like, unique and interesting, especially in an MCU movie, if you presented that. Uh, maybe it's about time I start listening Here it to is. the audio commentary. But wait, who was in it? Hello yeah. there, I'm Peyton Reed, director of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I'm joined today by screenwriter of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Mr. Jeff Loveness. Oh God, it's the director and the writer. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. So, what do they have to say about this scene? I want this moment to become a meme. <laughs> I want to see Modoc flying against the wall and uh, do not speak when I'm in the room. Oh, uh, geez, man. Yeah, that would be so <laughs> funny. Let's make a meme of Modoc and we'll have do not speak while I'm oh, in the room. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do not speak. It's so embarrassing. Your villain is this flatlining fucks. already and a good performance income. And the, and the thing is, when you say, like, I hope you will make a meme of it, that's already cringe. But then your suggestion yeah. is just the line 
Yeah, the, the, the meme is do not speak when I... Because that's how memes typically work, is that they actually have the line from the film. There's usually more layers to a meme than that. <laughs> like, well, well, what? Yeah, like, the meme is... The meme is Modoc's face pressed against the wall with do not speak when I am in the room. What is that? That's it just sucks. It comes across as a person who doesn't know what memes are. Which is really awkward, right? Because he's, like... He's not old, is he? Isn't, like, he's in his 30s? I don't, yeah, one. he's got to be a child of the internet to some extent. Like, he, surely he knows, what, like, you give how memes work. Screenplay with like, what? And yeah, here's him admitting that this is his first screenplay, like, to a significant Which, uh, degree. Yeah, it's insane. Good old Voss. It is insane. That is crazy. Actually, I don't know why I said that. And then everywhere I looked, everywhere I looked. <laughs> he's fucking... <laughs> Something's gotta happen. Um, <laughs> thinking this time it's gonna be different. No, 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 please. This oh, yes, yeah, still you talking about the screenwriting. Yeah, that book, three dimensional. Right? Yeah. Twist and turn, you know, twist and turn to beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, everybody knows the hero's journey isn't always a happy one. Oh, I look forward to reading it. <laughs> It's um, kind of funny because we've, we've like, evolved past the era of Brian being the bad writer, you know? Yeah. Like, R Brian representing the bad writer trope. Because, like, the, the observation with Brian is that what he wrote was, like, uninspired, hackneyed, lame, derivative. Like, that was what was observed as being a bad writer in the mid-2000s by Family Guy. At this point, being an uninspired, hackneyed, like, writer who just makes something that's generic and not so good would put you above what you get with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yeah. Where it's just broken to the core. And, uh... Yeah, it would have been awesome to have Cassie be the relatable. Almost, you could have made her the protagonist, honestly. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, it would have been. I I just don't know why. It's remember like the part where um oh, I think it was I think it was Evangeline Lilly said it was someone who was saying oh it's it's great that Cassie grows up to be like an optimistic upbeat funny person. It's like she's not funny first of all, but she's not optimistic. She's quite cynical. Yes, and you, you, just uh, everyone's just wondering what the fuck happened to her. What happened? Yeah, to her? exactly. And if Someone you want to go the route of, well, she was, uh, everyone got blipped that she loved. Uh, don't you think that would have an effect? It's like, I okay, fine, we can go, though. we can go that direction, but it doesn't explain where she's at now. It, it, that, and that doesn't strike me as the angle at all. Um, like that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like she's unhappy with Scott specifically now, not what was happening in the the blip. And I mean, it's one of the problems with uh, Marvel is that. The the five years of the blip is like remarkably uneventful by Marvel yeah. standards. Every year there's multiple world ending catastrophes. Like think about everything that happened in the five years prior, from like Avengers up until Infinity War. Think about all of the crazy events that happened. Meanwhile, in the five years of the blip, nothing happened seemingly. We've had no story set during that time. No big supervillains arising. It was just a remarkably quiet time in the MCU. Uh, hmm, so what do I have to do to make you watch Black Sails? It's really good and a much needed break from Cape Shit and Trash Wars. We watch plenty of things that aren't Cape Shit and Trash Wars, okay? <laughs> like, oh yeah, of course. Uh, I recently showed Rags The Remains of the Day, uh, I watched The Bounty myself, and I watched uh, Cobweb. So that's a, a, a action-adventure, almost biopic, historical film. A horror film, a horror fantasy fairy tale film, and um, then a, a period piece drama. Like the And this was after having watched like five animated films back to back from several different eras and studios. We watched uh, The Pirates and An Adventure with Science, it's Anastasia, The Black you, Cauldron, White. You guys probably figure it out from the visual references in these videos sometimes. It's like, oh, they must have seen that semi-recently, unless it's like Simpsons or something. Uh, well, it, it varies. Some of them are just like those sort of baked in references like Fight Club and oh, well, yeah, like that El Dorado right there. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, yeah, the, the, I haven't actually seen tomorrow. the dance tomorrow yet, but that's, uh, yeah, there's a, I'd say there's like a good amount of variety to the clips. Most of the reactions are, this also lined up really well because like this visual in terms of what's happening, where, how, it's like, ah, yes, I can use day after tomorrow because that's just sometimes how it works it's like oh that's on my mind i could mm -hmm. uh and it just lines up perfectly other times it takes an hour or two to figure out what reference i can use please more and more looney tunes references in the future they're so good about 99 percent of them were free <laughs> yeah, yeah lots of uh, i threw in the one where um bugs is like 
Deflated. I don't know what episode it's from, but he's uh, it's one of the newer ones, I think. Yeah, because I, uh, I think, because Wiley Coyote and Rogue Runner is, uh, <laughs> I love those. Mm -hmm. Lots of those ones made their way in. Obviously, the Daffy Duck ones, like Duck Amok, uh, Duck Dodgers. They're, they're just, like, cartoons are super useful for, uh, reactions, because especially with Looney Tunes, the reactions are just excellent and varied. Um, like, you could just have Daffy with his, like, beak shot off, like, on the side of his head, glaring at... Oh, yeah, and of course, Toy Story's got a lot there, too. Oh, yep, there's Homer again. Yeah, Going and it's crazy. funny, because, um, in our respective sections, it's like, uh, you'll see a lot of... Like, I'll have Toy Story in there as well, or just different... We, we've got a lot of, um... <laughs> Arguably, the, we, we lucked out in terms of we didn't really repeat each other's visuals, even though we used similar sources. There was one or two yeah, times um, I had to move around some of the um, fuck offs from Logan Roy because we had we had chosen yeah, the like, same yeah. visuals. And hopes fall yeah. And super duper Janet's fault and uh, I'm not sure if you've heard about this, but some of the people in the background are supposed to be Infinity Stones. Don't ask me why or how. Yeah, I heard about that. It's the little guys with the colored like sphere heads or whatever. It's dumb as fuck. I'm not interested. Not <laughs> Leave me alone. Well, at least they remember the uh, hi, Fringy. Opinion on No Pawn from Xenoblade? Something. Uh, I haven't played played Xenoblade Chronicles X, but I haven't played the other one, so I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Also, yeah, don't know why, but the FPS has shrunk to like five now. <laughs> so weird. Don't know what's going what on. So I don't really know how That's strange. Uh, hi guys, love the video. Is there any way to appeal a ban from the Discord? I was kicked from the server for disagreeing with a mod over an anime manga, but didn't break any of the rules. I'm sorry, I've got basically no uh, sway or sort of coverage of the Discord. I've left that to the uh, the moderators. It's more so theirs as a Discord than it is mine. Um, it would feel weird to sort of impose any preference that I have when they're the ones that run it. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if they have a process to appeal bans. I, I genuinely have no idea if they do. But um, sorry to, to, to hear you've been banned, I guess. When this Unbridled video came out, I went back and watched the first two Ant-Man movies, and boy, the writing and characters are really on different worlds of quality. Bless you both, and God frickin' speed. Well, thank you very much. I mean, and yes, true. Ant-Man 1 especially. Yeah, Ant-Man 1 is... Real solid. Don't die. Yeah, I quite like it. Allegedly, they were a Whenever I hear the name Goliath in this video, I think of the early EFAP meme. And you should. That's the good thing to think about. That, but I'm out hope. And so uh, on, the, on the topic of villains pointlessly killing their henchmen, imagine if Saruman killed Wormtongue out of rage for letting Gandalf heal Theoden. Um, that's that would be more of a reason, though. Like a, Usually when you talk about the, the villain killing their henchmen, it's just for some bullshit, stupid reason. Uh, most of the time it's nothing. Like, it's just... Yeah. Just like, the, the funniest one will always be uh, Rise of Skywalker. The guy asks a really good oh, question, right. and then he just gets fucking strangled. It's like, what are you doing, you idiot? Yeah, it's really dumb. Or just like, when they're mad, so they just decide to kill some random guy. He's dumb. It's it's just like, it seems like, ah, see, so yeah, they're villains, I don't care about their own men. It's like, maybe they don't, but like, this is terrible for morale, that a simple mistake could end your life. Yeah. Like, why would anybody work for you? <laughs> like, why would anybody participate in this? Uh, been watching EFAP since episode zero back in my college days. Now I'm officially a homeowner. Love you guys. Happy five years. Time sure flies. Does indeed. Many a change have happened since then. On the house. And hello, somebody made a 42 minute Top Gear special out of Dark Souls 2. It was quite enjoyable. Oh, like a meme where they're in Dark Souls 2 or whatever? Because that sounds, uh, sounds a lot of fun. <laughs> Could be. Now that we are currently caught up with the messages, uh, can you think of any particular sections you'd want to jump to or talk about? Mm. Uh, I'm just trying to think about which parts would be like notable in terms of uh the way that they were the, the way that they were made that haven't already been covered in terms of the general approach to references writing you know um yeah because obviously we've mostly told you guys how everything gets made in this um scheduling scripting all the editing passing over back and forth proofing and uh, timing sound effects to try and improve it as well yeah. And well, it's just yeah. It's uh, it's it's. I guess the the interesting thing is like the way that um, how like a project can kind of 
it, it can be tough when you're like when you're working on something for a few months and you don't have like the complete thing there to look at you kind of have to work with the hope that it'll all come together with like that you that you have enough trust in the process that it will yield a, a great like coherent end product that can sometimes be like hard to have in mind when you're like working on individual things yeah. down to like the second um it's like one of the challenges of working on a project for a long time it can be hard to stay motivated um <laughs> yeah. Someone asked, any yeah. meaningful differences between the plot synopsis and the recap sections editing-wise? So, there's a sense of, there's like a pro and con. In the first half of the video, when you're recapping all the events chronologically, a lot of the visuals speak for themselves in terms of, I'm recam uh, recapping, so you know what to put there, representative of what I'm saying. When you get to the second half, as much as, I'm going to skip to it now, maybe we'll start skipping around a little bit. Um, I'm talking about all kinds of things and you have full access to the film, so basically complete freedom for visuals and, like I said, the pro and con is that you'll have to do probably more work in the latter section than the prior section because as much as I'm describing context stuff, I'm often talking about abstract things as well. Like, yeah, um, which means that you kind of need to think a little bit outside the box of what would be a good visual to explain, like... What's what's a good visual to describe Hank's character in relation to this specific point that isn't referencing any one scene in particular? It could be, you know, any number of scenes. And does this overlap too much with, like, a, a clip I used 10 seconds ago or 20 seconds ago? Because there's some amount of, like, attempt to have variety in the visuals. You don't want to use the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, and uh, when I'm describing uh, an alternate story with what we could have done with Hanks, like, because Fringy edited this, it's like, you have to use visuals that, y these visuals that I'm describing don't exist. You have to use other stuff. That's <laughs> you right. have to oh, figure out yeah, a way yeah, to cobble yeah, it right. together. Like, um, the, a particularly challenging part was when you were essentially laying out, this is the arc that they probably should have done for Hank in the film, and it included things that just, there are no visuals for. Um, so it's like, hmm. Okay, if I don't have the exact visual, I, I can't have the exact visual that doesn't exist. I need to try and arrange, like there's, it's 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 visual storytelling in conjunction with, you know, I guess just plain old audio storytelling, like telling a story, explaining something. It's like, how can I tell a story with these visuals that puts in your mind what you were saying? Uh, that's kind of challenging. Yeah. But, you know, you just gotta, I mean, you got no choice, right? You gotta find a way to make it work. I need um, visuals. Top Gear Dark Souls 2 special by Yumfa, or Y-M-F-A-H. Everyone watch it when this is done, lol. If they're the ones I'm familiar with, then yeah, they're really good. Uh, like the format, maybe timestamps could improve it? Like in post? Or, um, or, or do you mean maybe that we have timestamps ahead of time to talk about particular parts? Because maybe. Um, uh, well, it's a six hour long video, so like I wasn't sure yeah. which part would be notable or which ones would end up getting touched on later anyway. Uh, hi all, Mola, Sekiro, and Fringy play Dark Souls 1. Yeah, yeah. Alright, you know. yeah, fine. Maybe, <laughs> I'll get around maybe. to it. Uh, have either of you read any of Ian M. Banks' Culture series? I have no, not. I haven't. But I think I have one of his books. I need to get around to reading it. Too many books to read. And uh, do you enjoy reading any sci-fi? Uh, I mean, yeah, I like, I like science fiction. I really like as a genre. Um, oh, and someone said, so I haven't described how I script these things at the end, I guess. So this is funnily enough, got like a more robotic foundation than you might imagine. I take what I know to be true about the characters or what I believe that all the references we have bind into a pattern in movies like Ant-Man. Like everything you get from Hank in that movie follows along from him caring about hope, him protecting the world from his Pym tech being... Like given unfettered access and him stopping Darren from beginning the arms race. Every like action and interest he has relates to that. Ant Man and the Wasp, you have Janet as the variable that's deciding a lot of what he wants to do. But the other things are still kept in place. They're still relevant. Of course, the clip of him saying, you know, you were supposed to not take my suit, like it, it's obviously referencing the fact that he's still very invested in Pym Tech and it being protected. Third film throws it all out. And it's like, and what is the film third film even trying to do with Hank? And it's honestly kind of unclear, like it's just a complete fucking mess, he's not really taken seriously as a character anymore. And so then, you grab all the references of how they failed him, um, each of the actions and interests and lines of dialogue he has that go against any of the established core traits, and sort of make your final points on that. And then, like I said, I, I wanted to talk about what, what was like, felt like an obvious sort of counter, what, what else can you do? Because a lot of people say that criticism is incomplete until you provide an alternative path. 
Um, what is intrinsic to a lot of the criticisms of these videos is supposed to be, this doesn't make sense, the alternative is to make it make sense. But some people might come across some of these things and be like, how do you make that make sense, though? And do you have to make it all make sense? Of course, the answers to both of those can be complicated and interesting and stuff, but uh, the Hank stuff I said on... I think it was one of the streams I was on recently that, like, this, if you got this right, it would probably improve the a lot of people's perspective of this film significantly. Like, if you gave him a hero send-off, a lot of people would be like, I really like the Hank stuff, though. Like, yeah, okay, the Quantum Realm is nonsense, but I like what they did for the characters. You know, if you can do that... It speaks to the general preferences of people. As long as you can do some character payoffs, people can really look past a lot of this shit. Yeah. Um... And you know, that, that's the same process for all of them. I just figure out who they are based on what they've been established with. And then, you know, it's, it's rare, this film doesn't really count, but who are the best characters? Like, one of them is Kryla, who is brand new, and that often happens in the MCU, where brand new characters, because they can't be contradictory, but the irony, of course, is a lot of the brand new characters are absolutely awful. And it's a, it's a skill, to be honest with you that they have to, to do something like that. But then, of course, the other is MODOK, and as I argue in my section, I, I do believe a lot of it might be accidental. I don't know that they know what they created, especially because they laugh at him when he dies. <laughs> well, the, the fact that the uh, the parallel between um, MODOK and Darth Vader, which, that's kind of a funny one, because I think when I was cutting together the visuals for the MODOK stuff, I just started realizing in real time, you could easily, like, have visual parallels to Darth Vader. And we then, we were, we were like both on the same like, wavelength because later then in the script yeah. I say yes I'm referencing Darth Vader I'm feeling exactly. spicy today. Like, that's kind of funny because I hadn't even yeah it was just, yeah like in real time I'm just realizing it's like dude he's Darth Vader he's cringe Darth Vader but he is. Do the family commentary bits big funny? I'll I'll play the Modok ones at the very least. <laughs> um, didn't Loki establish that the only way to destroy timelines is a monster at the end of time and he who remains found it after the war? I guess the, the implication is that um, Kang would feed all those timelines into the spooky fart monster. I, I have no idea. I don't know how that works. Ah, yeah. Loved your Dark Souls 2 series. Spam bush is now a part of my personal dictionary. Godspeed. I should reference that more. Spam bush, yeah. It's just when you get ambushed by a shit ton of things and then it's, it's their ah. version of like, we've made something difficult. It's like, yeah, look at you go. Yeah, you have. Ambush, I get it. Clever. Favorite British comedy shows? Love David Mitchell, David Mitchell and Olivia Coleman in Peep Show, but I am in love with Rachel Riley in Countdown. Lol, Olivia is only 49. Well, yeah, hopefully we can get plenty of great performances out of her then. And uh, favorite British comedy show is probably going to be Blackadder or Faulty Towers or Monty oh, Python. Say, like, um, those are old timers. We're talking about more modern ones. The in-between is super high up on my list. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, here it is. This almost is a... accidentally ended up at that. Yeah, because this is the beginning of the Modoc section, I think. <laughs> oh. I have to fine tune that shit, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> been watching through Futurama. Feel that seasons one to four were the best, but it's overall a very entertaining watch. Yeah, I easily yeah. highly recommend uh, uh, Futurama if you haven't seen it already. Sorry, uh, this edit. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Das edited that, I gave him the Simpsons clip and the Bodoc clip, and uh, funnily enough, he he had it be the actual, like, image when Homer was falling down the stairs, <laughs> like it was Solid it was the, yeah. what it was originally, and I was like, nah, I gotta throw in that second half of, uh, <laughs> of Modoc blowing up or whatever. <laughs> just, it's just a funny bonus to have him there yeah. while he's falling down the stairs. Yep. Let's get this bit out of the way. We got Modoc in a movie. <laughs> like, actually, it's true. Film has come a long way. <laughs> it's true. Uh, no. Film is a frightened, devolved, tiny mammal trying to navigate its way back to an evolutionary advantage after the fucking Disney asteroid annihilated dinosaur IPs that foolishly assumed they were safe. I think that analogy works pretty well, <laughs> to be honest so. with you. Yeah. It's like wiped out all of the dominant life forms uh, in film, <laughs> and now what, what what's remains it's like well there's still some ips that are trying to scrape their way back but yeah most of the time now it's going to be built on new ips that are lower risk or or maybe higher risk but lower budget modok ain't a fucking blip on the cinematic achievements timeline other than of course in the way of an eyesore <laughs> <laughs> mr potato heads alive <laughs> yeah his face yeah. is stretched i became the ultimate weapon it's fucking stupid man <laughs> 
Why is his head so fat? No! Oh my god! It looks fucking terrible. Oh, that's so bad! Oh, that's so bad! What is going on, man? What do you mean? It's cinema. He's got handlebars on the side. Why is he on a kid's scooter? Modok looks like ass. <laughs> a stunted, head-ass, face-smashed fuck-up of epic proportions. That's a face. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a big face. Why are you just holding hands? Oh, I love them! Only for fun. So, uh, what would happen for Loveness with this is he'd be really happy, and then he'd find out she was laughing at him. And he'd be like, aww. <laughs> Not like, with him. Yeah. yeah, this is not like this is such a funny character. Good job. It's more so I can't believe this is in the <laughs> film. That's unreal. Oh, hey, Modoc. Oh, let's go. Why, Why is he, he, he just sitting there? Let's watch the fucking TV. He's just been sitting there all this time. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> what? Potatoes. What Potatoes the always fuck? watch. It looks like a fucking egg. <laughs> He <laughs> 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 just makes me look at the left hand side. Oh, he's, oh, he's always there. Holy shit, Gary. What happened to you? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. This is for real. Why is he got jelly arms? They, 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 spent, they spent millions of dollars no. on this. It doesn't make any sense. I guess that's not a big surprise. What are you? With that in mind, <laughs> what are you? <laughs> uh, really amazing work, guys, on both sides. Script and editing, really love it. Vinyl EFAP trio is already on the way. Um, thank you very much for that. And that reminds me okay. to probably yeah. mention those. That's right. They are Vinyl uh, still on sale. Yes, they've got how long now? Is it two weeks? Less than that? Uh, about less than that. So it's about 12 days. Well, well, uh, let me pull him up a sec. Right. There's yeah. Mr. Fringy, of course, and there's the me and the rags ones. Uh, links are in the description if you want to grab That's them. Right. I just passed 1,000. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Look wow. Go. Yeah, there you go. And uh, rags and Fringy are there, too. you, you got to grab the, all three of them if you want to get the discount. Um, That's right. It's the trio, the EFAP collection. And it's been mentioned before, I'll say it again, uh, these are very, very likely never going to be sold again. So, if you want them, grab them. If you don't want them, no problem. Right. It's totally fine. No you still people... got time, but you are running out of time. Yes, uh, 11 days and 18 hours, so this will probably get mentioned again on an EFAP. The next EFAP episode next Saturday will be the uh, final time, I suppose. Um, yeah. But it's all good, hopefully. Yeah, vinyl plushies is what's so referred to them on FNT. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> vinyl vinyl plushies. plushies, it feels like an oxymoron. How can it be a vinyl and a plushie at the same time? Um, and yeah, they come in nice little packages as well. That's the right, because the boxes are uh, quite important for people with uh, vinyl figures and collectibles. It is indeed a collectible. Um, you got nice, nice little box. Does it have holes? Um... <laughs> Yeah, and with that, we'll probably end there. Um, this will get re-uploaded on Moolah, and judging from the comments, we'll decide if ever this is a wise idea for the future. I figure it's good enough in terms of letting you know why these things take so long, and the kind of yes. investment we have in making what they are and why they turn out this way. Um, well, yeah, because, I mean, that took a few months to make. It did. <laughs> like, uh, a few is an understatement. That was like half a year's worth of work. Um, and, you know, it's not just me, it's not just Fringy, it's also Goga and Das Bullshit. That's they right. helped as well. Quite a bit. Uh, this, like I said, the section of plot all the way to the beginning of Hank. That's uh, that's Goga's work. Well, yeah, if he if he didn't, uh, it, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have made it in time. We wouldn't have. Um, that's partly why I was desperate to bring him in. Was that I was like, uh oh, the timeline's not looking great, especially with the fucking assembled bullshit. And then of course copyright. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and yeah, getting the vinyl sorted out as well in relation to the video. So um but it worked out. Everything lined up, which it does sometimes. And then as time uh, goes on line up and... you forget about the stresses of how it all almost didn't. You just remember that it did, and it's okay. And, and I think that's the important part, right, of the creative process is at the end of the day the work speaks for itself. It's it's the the finished, completed, final thing. 
it it is it is what it is after all of the work that gets put into it. So you know, it's always worth take pride in your work, guys. If yeah. You don't the the next projects that will be released to you on on the Mauler channel, they're already being worked on and plans yeah. already being made, and it just takes a really 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 long time. Um, right. So yeah, you're gonna have a Soka to tide you over. It's it's getting there. I'm working on it. Soka is <laughs> on the way. It's getting there. Yeah. So, but for us, for now, we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye. Thanks for watching, Indeed. folks. We appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the next thing, the DFAP thing, whatever it may be. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Bye bye, everybody. See you. <laughs>